After a few exciting weeks of playing Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth and people asking for a spoiler review, a number of key Yakuza content creators and I have decided to pull the ultimate super duper deluxe definitive edition of said review by coming together to give our thoughts on not just the story and its specifics, but also the various elements of what the gameplay has to offer, all in the shape of um, a podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third episode of the channel's RGG cast series where we discuss RGG related topics and an extended dis extended discussions with a guest or few. And today's podcast in particular has a lineup for the, the first of its kind for the series so far. I'm joined by Gokidoni and Froob, both of whom have been guests on the show already. And joining us for the first time is Snowiest Angman. Go ahead and introduce yourself for those who haven't already heard of you. My name. I don't know how to pronounce my name, so uh, just Snowy. <laughs> that's, I'm that's... from Australia, if you can't tell. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently looking in Discord, my ping is 410 milliseconds. That's... Bloody hell. Th that bodes well. <laughs> yeah, hopefully... Well, uh, thankfully I'm recording this. Hopefully I don't lag out. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. I think um, Gokudoni and I had a situation like that, and... Uh, Multiple recordings do help, so we'll get by. <laughs> All right. Um, right, so, Gokitonia Fru, would you like to reintroduce yourselves um, as well for this episode? You want to go first, Gokitonia? Uh, sure, thank you. Okay, so, hello everyone, this is Gokudoni. I'm a Yakuza content creator, much like these lovely gentlemen, and my points of focus are elongated discussion pieces and character analyses, so thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Froob? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Froob. Uh, I'm still speedrunning Yakuza games. Uh, unfortunately, despite the fact that I have not started to do runs of this yet, it looks like this run is nine hours long. So I'm <laughs> very scared of this well, speedrun. Let's go. <laughs> I'm um, the second best Yakuza speedrunner after Snowy Stanky Man, who beat me uh -huh. with a video uh, last year. <laughs> I'm very upset about that. Seven I will get minutes. that back. <laughs> I gave you the Wonder. secret tech as to how to speedrun Fist of North Star fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, my trick. <laughs> that, that was valuable information. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> I I genuinely pray um, you'll be able to uh, actually shorten those nine hours into something less for, for infinite wealth. Uh, for... <laughs> we'll um, see. The, the issue, quotation marks around that, is uh, as you all know and everyone listening knows, this game has content. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be discussing it a lot. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you all for being here today. Like, getting all of us in, in one call was not really uh, the easiest thing, because, like, we all have time zones. Um, I think Gokudoni is two hours for my time. Like, at the moment, it's 12 p.m. here. So, it's is it 10 for you, Gokudoni? Yes, and I've been awake since 6 a.m. because I was too excited <laughs> to sleep. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. nice. Okay. Um, and Froob, I think it's 9 for you? Yeah, 9.30. I have been awake since uh, 9 p.m. last night. Oh no! I'm sorry. Hey, hey, I napped. I wasn't going to. That's why I didn't stream today. <laughs> right, well. I was just like, I'm gonna have a very quick nap, and it'll be fine. I woke up four hours later, very disorientated. I saw that tweet. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for Snowiest, it's uh, eight hours ahead of me, so it's about eight thirty right now for you, right? I'm actually seven hours because we don't use daylight savings because we're better. Right, oh, right. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Right. I actually really wanted to invite other creators as well, but um, the two others that I'm, I was thinking of are from the US, and like they would have, like, what, 3 a.m. timing at the moment, or like 4 a.m. Yeah. So it's going to be all over the place. Um, and, you know, the, there's always room for the next episodes, right? Um, but today, we're going to be talking about Infinite Wealth, and a lot of people, again, have been asking, like, hey, Leon, like, what do you think of the story? Is there going to be, like, a spoiler review? So, I'm going to be talking about that, and again, it's not going to be just me, it's going to be three whole other content creators. So, if if you had to, if you could say, gentlemen, describe Infinite Wealth with one word, just to give, like, an idea of your overall rating of the game. Based. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Gokudoni. Um, I'm gonna do it in a phrase of two words because the words are "yume kiwami." Yume kiwami. <laughs> and Froob. Fantastically flawed. <laughs> okay. Ooh. I do remember seeing you talk about. Um, I think it was a tweet or 
I don't remember if I dropped by your stream or if it was a tweet. But ever since I saw that tweet, that's why I put like the the script that I have right now, like in the brackets <laughs> that says take the mic for it, and we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want like I would like to preface like with my take that I still think this game is like an eight or a nine out of ten. I absolutely phenomenally love this game. Mm -hmm. There's just little things that we'll mm -hmm. uh, bring up later on. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um so would you guys like to start with the story or the gameplay? I reckon Any gameplay. Because then <laughs> if someone's like, oh, no, nah, I'm clicking enough, not talking about the story, you know, we can talk <laughs> about the gameplay fair. first. All right, fair, fair enough. Fair. Okay. Gameplay it is. Okay, I guess Frib is going to take the mic then because we're going to start with the bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any problems with the gameplay? Go ahead, Frib. Oh, boy. <laughs> Which unironically goes into the whole, like, infinite wealth being a nine-hour speedrun right now. Um, mm. I want to, again, I want to just preface this with just... I absolutely adore the gameplay in this game. We are going to talk about the good things. It's not all the bad. And a lot of what I'm going to sound like, a lot of what I'm going to say is sound going to sound like massive nitpicking. And it is. And I don't want to be, you know, that guy that's like, oh, I put almost 2,000 hours into Like a Dragon, so I know a lot of the mechanics. <laughs> but there's a couple of things. A lot of what Infinite Wealth brings to the table, the new stuff, is fantastic. Phenomenally good. Like, actually amazing. But the things that they bring over from LAD to Infinite Wealth aren't so hot. And I think this is a I think this is a good I think it's a very good thing when the biggest nitpick that I have is the fact that from Like a Dragon to Infinite Wealth, they got rid of skill shortcuts. And this mm -hmm. is something that affects me because obviously I speedrun. I haven't started speedrunning this yet, but it's going to affect it, obviously. Mm -hmm. But with the way that LAD works, and especially like Infinite Wealth. Being able to use your skills and your spells like super quickly when enemies are all gathered up and more importantly your allies is super important. Mm -hmm. And like obviously they remove the skill shortcuts because you know some jackass is using the D-pad for the actual skill shortcuts in this video <laughs> game. He does happen to be kind of overpowered so we will forgive him for that. But it's one of those things that like a lot of people didn't actually know there were skill shortcuts in LAD. The game mm -hmm. itself, LAD, didn't do a very good job of actually like showcasing that there were skill shortcuts. It was just kind of like, oh yeah, you can put skills on shortcut. Like mm -hmm. that, that was it. But in terms of the way that fights work, and obviously everybody like listening to this will also know how the fights work. When a fight works, if you watch it at the start of the fight, you'll have like all the enemies in front of you. They'll all be grouped mm -hmm. up together. Mm -hmm. And the end game of both LED and Infinite Wealth is so important to hit your multi-hitting skills mm -hmm. onto as many enemies as possible. And those enemies, if you give them like more than two seconds, they'll just all spread. Yeah. And they will just yeah. all spread around the entirety of the arena. Losing those skill shortcuts hurts that so much. I can understand the enemies moving away from each other, but the thing that I think hurts Infinite Wealth the most is the fact that everything is now an AoE. This includes your buffs, your debuffs, and more importantly, your heals. Because whilst the enemy walk away from you, so do your allies. And that's the awkward <laughs> thing. Because one of the things that got nerfed heavily from LAD's Infinite Wealth was the lunch boxes. Lunch boxes in Infinite Wealth take a lot more ingredients to get, and there is no shop where you can buy said ingredients. So getting those all-party heals, which are super important, is a lot harder. And it takes a lot more time. In... I didn't. I sorry to interrupt you. I didn't yeah, invest much time into the into those in LAD, so I didn't actually know if they made those harder or easier. So that so that's uh, interesting to hear. But also, much easier. You oh, reminded easier. me of something. You know how you said the, like your allies as well, like they all spread out and it's and it's yep. harder to use buffs. Have you had that particular issue in like um what was it again, the Robo Michio fight? Yes. I hated that fight so cuz yeah. oh my god. Likewise. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I want to use a buff, right? But all of my allies are, are like all over the place. And guess what? When when the Robo Michio uses like the laser move, they all come close. Like yep. uh... How does that make sense? One thing I do like about the fact that they changed it up is you can use pretty much any heal or any buff on any character and select them. That's good. Mm -hmm. But you have to the AoE marker as well. I love the fact that AoE markers in the game. I think they are a good thing, but they don't fully work properly. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody here has had it where, you know, you've gone on to like, you've gone to like buff like an ally. The circle has been around every one of your allies, but Billy Nomates on the very edge of that AoE is just gonna 
I'm just going to walk out whilst you're running over yeah. to cast this and I'm just not going to get hit by it. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think that's the, I think that's one of the biggest issues I have is that kind of thing coming from LED because it happens there as well. But in LED, everything is just an automatic party wide like application. It hurts more in infinite wealth because you have no control over it. Whereas infinite wealth also gives you so much more control. Like, I know we're talking about the bad at the minute. Movement in combat is a game changer. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal. It's brilliant. And it helps a tiny bit with hitting, like, allies and stuff. But when you have to heal and buff people outside of, like, that circle that you can move in, you do have to roll the dice sometimes. And it's just... It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. It's like, the new stuff works really well, but it's not gelling with the old stuff. And it's just... It's almost there. Like, they have cooked up something real good with this game. But it just needs a little bit more. Like, the nice thing is when you use your skills on enemies, for example, you'll notice that they will immediately stop. Like, yes. the input that you do the skill, the enemies stop. That is supposed to guarantee that they all get hit if they're in that line. Some skills are a little weird when it comes to that. I've used Tire Tumblr or whatever it's called from Tommy's Hour a couple of times where everyone's been in the line and then all of a sudden the skill goes off and only one person I gets hit. I had the same issue, yes. I'm gonna same, call same that Dragon Engine like, shenanigans. Team attacks. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, especially exactly. a, I'm like, here we yeah. go, I'll hit these four guys, and then it's just a completely different angle. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's. I think that's probably the thing that I dislike the most about Infinite Wealth's gameplay. Like, this, it's almost there, but it's the older stuff coming from LAD that just doesn't quite gel with the new stuff that's really good. Would you guys say an accurate way to describe all of this is, like, the game is four steps ahead, but two steps back, maybe? Kind of. Yeah, kind yeah. of. Right. Well, was there were there any particular gripes that you had, um, Gokudoni? Uh, well, the only thing I could really think of was, and this is gonna sound as nitpicky as it gets, but the Segway has a battery. I hate that. <laughs> yeah. Cause, yeah. Because, I mean, after Lost Judgment in particular, and I feel like, in for example, in Yakuza Seven, I really hated traversing Ijincho because I like to take my time and actually go by foot rather than going from taxi to taxi. So when we got the actual skateboard, it was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And then we get mm -hmm. here and it's like, you could have made the easiest solution of like, oh, it's solar powered and it's Hawaii. It's always sunny. <laughs> Why not do that? Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's th that's essentially the only major gripe that I have because I'm not I'm not knowledgeable enough about turn based combat to the point where I can see, oh, yeah, this is going to affect a particular attack that I'm using. In fact, mm -hmm. seven was the first turn based game that I actually enjoyed out of any game ever, so, you know. I know you also had a gripe with the grind. Are you going to talk about that now or later? Uh, I might as well, because I kind of... I put it as one of the issues with pacing, because it mm -hmm. kind of mirrors itself in the gameplay as well. But essentially, the fact that, at least from my experience, in 7, you only really had one or two points where the game would be like, okay, curb stomp, go and grind, unless you, you know, or you're not going to go through the story. Mm -hmm. But here, it felt like you were perpetually behind what was asked of you. Because you have so many instances where you will be essentially dragged into side stories and tutorials for random minigames. And over the course of that and the long battles in a given chapter, you will have, obviously, some level-ups that you will get. But amidst all of those level-ups, once you get into a new chapter, you will always be two levels behind. And this is not mm -hmm. accounting for equipment buffs and all of that. And I didn't really think it was that much of an issue. But any time I would be like, what, I'm two levels behind, I can do this. It was always some of the biggest boss fights in the actual game. I'm not going to spoil them here yep. because, you know, story spoilers. But, for example, chapter 12. And a, I'm not sure which particular <laughs> chapter was something at the docks where the long battle preceding it, it everyone was debuffed. Half of the people were stunned. Yep. One of them was charmed. It's just like, yeah, you're you're not doing this with the level. You you need to use the recommended level. And that pissed me off so much because it's not like all of the side activities that you recommended give you XP to kind of mitigate the grind. It's just mm -hmm. like you need to do the long battles and a small grind perpetually centered in each chapter. I would rather have one big jump, so to speak, rather than it being yeah. sporadically placed. So basically the uh, Sotembury Battle Arena from Seven. Essentially, yes. <laughs> Funnily enough, I can actually go into a bit of depth on this because of obviously speedrun routing. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact, like, I, I'm sure you're all aware, the one of the biggest changes for this game, 
for infinite wealth is the fact that all of your stats are on your normal level up. Your job level ups mm -hmm. obviously give you like HP and MP up to like level 44. But, and obviously, yes, there was that bug where those like stats didn't go over from your jobs as well. But the big thing is that all of your stats are now on normal level up. Mm -hmm. So, and again, this is, I don't want to like toot my own horn. With LAD, you can do the chapter 12 fight in LAD 20 levels behind. If you know what you're doing, Damn. it's very, very doable. But you cannot do fights 20 levels behind in Infinite Wealth. And even five levels behind feel like a mountain. Mm. Like, it it yeah. genuinely feels kind of nasty. And that actually goes into another point I forgot to mention. What did they do with the Poundmates? And I'm not talking the change where they come onto the field, because I quite like that. I am talking, why do we go normal, bronze, platinum? Where are the silver and the gold? True. <laughs> yeah. Why does the money go from being very affordable to being, here's your entire inheritance for the last 20 hours, goodbye? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a simple answer for it it's called inflation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what about you, Snow? Just uh, any real problems with the game or the gameplay? Uh, I mean, honestly, my biggest problem was something that wasn't like the entire game or anything like that. I can't remember exactly where it was, but there was a specific part where like I was just saying to my brother, I'm like, bro, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to keep playing this game because I think it's around the time you get like Dondoko Island and stuff. There's so much mm. stuff in the game where it just stops you from playing and then it's like, okay, now go do this mini game or whatever. Mm hmm. And it was annoying because it's like, okay, yeah, I, like I'll do this, but I want to do it after I beat the story. I want to know what happens next in the story and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the game's just like, okay, now go do the mystery dungeon thing and then go do Sujimon. And it's just like, okay, can you stop for a second? <laughs> so it's just, it's just stuff like that where it's just like, it stopped me from playing the game and made me go play some other game. And I'm like, I want to play this game, please. <laughs> I think that's actually so, a fantastic point to bring up because like, Something that, like, a big thing that people had an issue with with Gaiden was the fact that Gaiden had Quizby Shark's blood. Like, you had to get to gold rank for a Kame in Chapter 3. But I went back and looked at reviews, and, like, it's the same with what Gokodoni brought up, in that, like, everyone moaned about the difficulty spike in LAD, but no one mentioned how hard parts of Infinite Wealth are. And no one mentioned about, you know, having to go away to Dondoko Island in this game. Like, it, hmm. it's weird how there's double standards for some... Yakuza games and not this one. I think. Yeah, well, I always think about how. Oh, sorry, you can go. No, I was just gonna say one little thing. Double standards in the Yakuza oh. community go hand in hand. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I was I was gonna say it's like how Yakuza Zero. Even though I think it's a great game, I don't ever want to do another playthrough out of ever again because it's just there's so much stuff where it just stops you from <laughs> progressing to do some random shit, like mm -hmm. having to get like four different drinks or whatever for the homeless it, people at yep. one point. <laughs> oh yeah or like uh when you marge mode trying to find makoto and it's like can i just can i just punch people yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i when i was playing through the game like on stream i had people telling me hey leon do the side content please do some of the side stuff and here's my experience with that i go do a sub story or like i try to kind of explore a little bit i get into a fight with enemies 20 levels above me and i'm like you know what i'm gonna save all of this for until after i beat the game yeah exactly um, I, I don't know what happened then you there. you beat cause... the game and everyone goes up by like 50 levels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they could have done the scaling better, I feel. Um, that's one thing. Yeah. yeah. And I, I honestly, like, I know a lot of people like complained about it. I don't think the, the optional jobs giving their stats over is the thing that like fixes that. Mm. Because most of the early stats is just HP and MP for every like side job. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. obviously, yeah, that'll help a lot if you've like delved into that. But until you start hitting jobs up to their like 40s, 50s, 60s, you don't get extra stats in like attack, magic attack, etc. So I, I think it's like, I think it's a good thing it got fixed, but I don't think that's the full fix for that. Mm -hmm. There's definitely, I think, some kind of leveling scaling issue. Yeah. Mm. I also noticed with the permanent stat buffs, they changed how those work. So yes. in seven previous, like you had specific traits in every job. Like for example, this is not uh, like accurate, but it uh, it's an example. So breaker, for example, would give you like attack and agility, right? Yep. Now every single job I think gives you the same stuff for the most part. Like it's yep. it's all spread out 
uh, so to speak. So Breaker, instead of now giving you just attack and agility uh, beyond 30, it gives you willpower, defense, MP, HP, just everything. And all the jobs are like that. Um, yeah. Th that's one thing that I noticed. It doesn't really bother me per se, but I do kind of like how previous, like previously the jobs had special traits that you could inherit. Um, but that's a very minor thing for me. Yeah. Um, right, are we all done with the bad, or do we have anything more to say? I have I'm one thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, go on. When you were talking before about the lunchboxes being harder, I had got like one passion fruit the entire game and I can never find another one, and I was so angry. Yep. <laughs> Unironically, people in the comments start moaning, you were supposed to do Don Doco Island because you can sell I just wanted farm. a single passion fruit, please. <laughs> yep. I was like that with bananas. <laughs> you get bananas on bloody trees. <laughs> Could you farm in this game, like, in 7, or is that not there anymore? Uh, gardening, no, but apparently Dondoko has a farm. I haven't actually oh. got that far with Dondoko, admittedly. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> wait, hold on. So Snowy has said the whole lunchbox thing. I think you were going to say something as well, Fru. Yeah, no, I was going to say, if I'm really nitpicking, why do you have to remove Enforcer and Dealer and Eri, the three biggest things in LED speedo? <laughs> oh, hell yeah. She is Eri queen. <laughs> samurai has basically darts airstrike. Yeah, oh no, I love I love Samurai. I love Samurai a lot. Burning arrow? I or... did, like, in an actual oh, like, good thing, I think the changes to the older classes coming to infinite wealth, I think for the vast majority of them, are much better. Mm -hmm. But why did you have to include Breaker? Breaker's still mid. <laughs> yeah, 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 it really is. <laughs> I remember watching Snowy's video on, I think it was like the changes uh, from the demo, and mm. he, he noted how in uh, LAD, you had just a lot of, like, a lot of blunt attacks in some classes. Yes. Breaker did not change Dude, that. Zhao is a breaker. Yeah, all he <laughs> did was just have blunt attacks. No, please. <laughs> One thing, though, I do feel like the early game, especially, you have a lot more, you have a lot more in terms of what you can do, and most of that is thanks to Thomas Hour, who gets yeah. gun, lightning, Everything. water that makes them, like, lightning resistant down, like, Thomas Hour, take a back. Yeah. Only thing he doesn't have is a blade attack, I think, right? But he has yeah. everything oh, yeah, otherwise. He gets fire as well with uh, fuse. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's absolutely yes. insane. Um, yeah, he's great. Good character too. Yeah, I love mm. Tomizawa. I love uh, Chitose as yeah. well as new characters. They're awesome. Um, no, and we'll get to that later as well. Yes. Yeah. So, any any more like negatives you guys have to say? I mean, if I really have to. Uh, <laughs> Go <hearing> ahead. <laughs> Actually, no. I think this is a good thing. No, no, no. I'll stop for now. I think this is a good thing. Actually. Okay, so no more problems. No. Okay. Uh, if if you guys remember anything later, please feel free to mention it. But anyway, so I guess we can start talking about the good about the combat. So what what do you guys love about the combat? I feel like this is a shared one for the most part. Like we, we all love the same stuff. Yeah. So like we have of course the free movement, the uh, environmental kind of element to the combat, picking up weapons, uh, smacking enemies onto walls or uh, barrels, uh, combo attacks, n hitting hitting an enemy onto another ally, and then, you know, the follow-up attacks and all of that. We, we all love that, right? Yes. Um, is yes. there anything, like, any minor detail that stood out for you more than anybody else, maybe, that you love? I, it's, it's such a minor thing, having every basic attack get back MP. That's yes. such a oh, it's so yes. good. Yes. yes. It's so good. <laughs> it makes the whole thing uh, feel like uh, an actual turn-based Yakuza where you attack to, you know, get heat, as I saw yeah. people say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's actually a good allegory. Yeah. Yeah, and I do kind of like as well that because of all the new improvements, you don't really have to rely as much on uh, skills, but like, I guess it depends on the situation as well, because, I mean... If you're gonna play to speedrun, I imagine you have to use skills anyway. <laughs> yes, but unironically, actually grenades are really strong at the moment. Mm. Um, unironically, like, as long as the targeting system works, which, okay, that's one last <laughs> bad that I didn't mention. Targeting system is still a little off. Um, <laughs> yes. Like, trying yeah. to target specific enemies. Um, starting a fight by hitting the... Because usually when you start a fight, there's like one enemy in front. Usually by starting a fight and hitting that enemy in front, they'll chain everybody behind. You go bowling, it's fantastic. Like, hmm. it's a good way to start a fight. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Have you guys had any instances where you wanted to use a heal item, but you used it on, like, the wrong person, <laughs> still? 
Yes. Oh God! <laughs> yes. Don't remind me. Don't. <laughs> yeah. That's one gripe I think that I do have, and I think it could be. E I say easily fixed, but I don't like. I don't know how how much work it I, takes. I know the easiest fix in the world. When you go to like target a party member, it's just an arrow down in the bottom right, and you press yep. left and right to go between yes. them, and then enemies is up and down in the top yep. right menu. Because that yes. top yep, right menu, exactly. you don't use it for shit. Yeah, yep. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, that was like one thing I would have loved. Like even in the options, because I know like they're trying to do this 3D targeting thing, even if it was just an optional thing in the options. Yeah. Because that's the other thing as well with like the whole like no skill shortcuts is to get to some of your like, you know, if you want your fire skill on Eric, it's like five skills down. Like you have to mm. go through so many blooming menus to get to there or use the shoulder button to get to the battle menu and then go down three attacks there. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you could just rearrange stuff in your menu yeah, as well exactly. manually, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. So you now can we... sort items for some reason, but you can't sort skills. Yes. <laughs> you you did mention in your video as well, Snowy, just about how the 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 reason it uh, like the shortcuts didn't come back is possibly because of the whole Dragon and Dojima job and how that mm -hmm. makes use of mm -hmm. the D-pad, right? But like, yeah, I do think the fix yeah. you uh, came up with, which is like hold a button to, you know, switch. The use of that would yeah, because nice. I just sort of thought what Final Fantasy fourteen does. You just hold like L two mm -hmm. and R two, and you pick buttons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, any other quality of life stuff you guys want to talk about? Maybe um, whether it's combat or gameplay, it doesn't have to be combat. There's a lot. Um, <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I, just I like... love selecting taxis from the map. It's yes. Yes, yes. 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 I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Not just taxis, but like actually being able to look at like restaurants on the map look at obviously mm. like shops and stuff and like just have a quick like have a quick info box that says oh you've like had this many food here and there's still like a table talk or you know mm -hmm. you can go to this shop and buy a tuxedo for all the money you're making your entire life mm -hmm. like <laughs> <laughs> i mean especially here because there's so many since we are in hawaii like obviously we don't know the layout of which shop will give i don't know very specific food items to purchase or weapons yeah. And especially in Hawaii, because you have so many hyper-specific stores. Like, there's one, I don't know, way all the way to the west that will just sell weapons for, I don't know, Hitman and another job. Yeah. You're not going to know that by seeing, oh, the name is, the, I don't know, Hellride Extreme or whatever. Mm -hmm. You need to look at <laughs> yeah. the actual description. Yeah. I was also surprised to see two shops in the, in the sea. Yeah, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm they made use of, like, Ooh. the swimming feature, but... Uh, yes. I, I would have loved to see them do more with the swimming uh, somehow. Yeah. There's a, oh there's a clever <laughs> bit in the Sujimon battles where, like, I thought, like, I explored, like, the entirety of the map, but as you say, there's, like, there's a bit of the hotel where you mm. can sneak around the side, but the way I found it was to swim around, and, like, it was just like, oh, wow, this spot's here. Like, if I wasn't able to swim, I probably wouldn't have found that until, like, you know, the point for Sujimon came up. I could be wrong, that's nice. but that spot normally is locked from the very narrow, like, walkway. You actually have to unlock it. Yeah, you actually have to unlock it with the Sujimon huh. in the story. I think, uh -huh. if I remember right. See, I remember, I remember the tutorial window pop up for the Keepers of the City, the stronger enemies, which I also quite like, um, mm -hmm. especially as, you know, there's a lot of them when you get halfway through the game onwards, and they give good rewards. Yeah. But... Mm. It's one of those things where in the in the pop-up for that, like I'm facing it, it said, you know, you could unlock new areas. Did any of them actually unlock a new area? <laughs> no, no, yeah, you're right, you're right on that one. Because <laughs> like it, it does like, just wait a minute. It does flat out say, realize. yeah, beat those guys, unlock new areas. But like all they yeah. do is maybe they're talking about how they block a path and that's it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, probably. Well there's some of them are that's just like of... in a corner. Yeah. 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 Well, also, they will also block the uh, points of reminiscing for Kiryu, because that's kind of yes. the only thing that I've noticed. Yeah. Oh, in God. I kind of hated that. <laughs> the one, like the one what, is yeah. the, uh, the Chinese equipment shop in uh, Izazaki Jincho. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, could oh, could yeah. you just get out of the way, please? Dude, yeah. that... Wait, if that's the fight that I think it is, that was so... Like, they all can summon new, uh, like, new yes. um, allies. Yeah. I hated that fight. I did oh. that this morning. I'm still angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> that particular enemy, I just I have a vendetta against. I hate him. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Well, actually, could... uh huh. I was gonna say, in terms of favorite things about the combat, this is something that is very minor. Most people won't know this until like the game's been fully explored a lot more. In LED, status 
debuffs, and I'm not talking attack or defense down, I'm talking okay. seeing stuff like paralysis, bleed, etc. Mm -hmm. The only one that really mattered was poison against a certain Mr. Tendo. But <laughs> in <laughs> Infinite Wealth, you can actually do a lot with status debuffs. Every single Yamai fight where Yamai gets two turns in a row, you paralyze him, he doesn't take two turns in a row anymore. It's great. Oh, like, you true. can actually, like, Ichiban's final boss, you can put blind on. Uh, the very, very final boss, I'm fairly certain I stunned. Like, it's wild. Like, it's yeah, it's the sign of a good Tenzo. RPG that you can use stuff <laughs> like that to actually help in fights. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I... Yeah. You might kind of caught me off guard with how he always has two turns in a row. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. 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 And I then also Rush like has it, but it's weak. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I also like the uh, the reverse of how, like in LAD Chapter 14, Kiryu will only attack your male party members, but there is one specific Yamai fight where he will only aim for Kiryu first. Yes. Yeah. Which is fantastic. <laughs> right. I think they should make more use of that. Yes. Yeah, actually, oh, yeah. again, I'm, I'm harping on about like favorite things because I don't just want to <laughs> say the negatives. There's a late game fight. You all will know it. It's the. It's, in, it's not the Panarchy chapter. I think it's chapter. Like. Is it? It's not 12, no. You're on a boat. I think you all know which fight I mean. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And there is oh. one part of the arena that you can utilize. You mm -hmm. can push enemies towards it. You mm -hmm. can get hit towards it by the actual boss itself. And if you do, there is an actual thing in the fight that can cause damage to both you and the enemy. And I think that mm. is fantastic. Yes. And I also really <laughs> like that the game doesn't try and do that too many times. Like, mm. it makes yeah. that fight special. There yeah, are fights in true. the dungeons and the final set piece with red boxes. You break those red boxes, you get weapons. They're also fantastic because yeah. they also have different elements like fire. Like, it's just, it's all those small things that are really good and they don't try and use it too many times. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Okay, yeah. now that you mentioned that, b because of uh, environmental hazards, I've just remembered one particular fight that I loved the most in the actual gameplay. So there's a part when you get to District 5 where you explore the underground. And there's a segment where you have lasers. I have no Ooh. idea why I enjoyed that, because it, it didn't feel like the, for example, the stealth segments in Lost Judgment, specifically main story, because they were great in the Kaito files. But yes. here it felt like it, it was kind of an extension of how you would normally explore the map. Like, imagine you're still under leveled and in a new area, and you're trying to kind of, okay, stop and go so that the enemy don't spot you immediately. Mm -hmm. And here it's like lasers. Okay, they're off. Okay, run as fast as you can. <laughs> or you're gonna get damaged, or I don't know, a poison room that perpetually drains your health. Those yeah, things yeah, are cool. so fun. And yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> I think that's a, a like a superior upgrade to uh, the uh, Omi Alliance sneak mission in, in a lad. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that one sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> like sometimes it's hard to tell where the enemy's going in you know the the lad sneak segment. Um. So you go one place, but then like another. Dude just shows up and you get into a fight. Yeah. yeah. Even even in the speedrun with the route that we take, if we if we mess up our movement even like slightly, then we just fail that segment. It, that segment is unnecessarily harsh when it wants to be. But like <laughs> the thing with like as you were saying, the poison room, mm -hmm. you know from the very first start you are poisoned, your health is going down. Mm -hmm. You can fix that by healing in the menu. Like it doesn't restrict mm. you. Like you can genuinely heal. Yeah. Or you can run. Like, you have your options. Mm -hmm. Or you can go in the corner and find a moldy burger. Thanks for that. Okay. Yeah, I remember that too. <laughs> I, did, I did like those poison rooms. I thought they were like a... Yes. Something new, at least. I did enjoy yeah. them. I, I yeah. like... The rooms were great, but a certain boss fight that utilized something similar, I <laughs> despised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It is pretty rough, yeah. Um, I feel like... you know I want to talk about all the bad about the combat but i feel like i'm the last one to talk in here at least because i made it a point whenever the dungeons were available and whenever my level was appropriate for the floors i go ham on that shit so much so hmm. i was over leveled for like all the story yeah <laughs> yeah what about you guys same uh, i was always like no. the recommended level except for a couple times hmm. likewise because i could and this is kind of ironic, because if you remember what Yokoyama was saying before the game dropped, you should probably play it only three or four hours a day if you don't want to get hospitalized. Ironically yeah. enough, 
for me, I could only play the game for three or four hours a day because of IRL obligations. And I was pulling my hair out because it's like, I'm learning about programming during a lecture and I'm like, I could be playing Infinite right now. Why the hell am I here? <laughs> and it took me two weeks to actually finish that. I finished the story the moment we started talking about the actual schedule for this conversation. That's how late I was to the party. Nice. Nice. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um... It's also, again, like going back to like the whole content, three to four hours doesn't feel that much for how much content is in this game. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's wild. Mm -hmm. That'll play like one single bit in a single chapter. Yeah. That's one day of Don Docker. <laughs> yeah, all that. <laughs> That's Do you guys one remember day. how many hours you had when you beat the game? Uh, 89. Mm. Um, was it 89? I did actually tweet it out. 76? For oh, me, God. it was probably in between 50 and 60, give or take. Like, I really tried to stick to the critical path, and I was yeah. failing consistently because the game is too fun. <laughs> I, I time... promise I didn't skip anything, but I had like 46 hours to beat <laughs> yeah. the game. I, I did as much as I could sub stories trying not to touch Don Doco because I wanted to wait for Don Doco till after. 80 hours in game time, 95 hours real time, all that time suffering from COVID. Yeah, that was a week. <laughs> that was a that was a week and a half. Yeah, I I did see some of your posts about that. I'm assuming you feel way better now, right? Yes, much. Okay, that, that's... I think the I think the final day's stream because I was just like, all right, I'm ending this today. I think it lasted like 14 hours, and in the end, I was just like, I'm gonna go sleep. <laughs> days. I'm gonna go to Don Doco. It's a nice resort. <laughs> Mine has too many toilets. Please help. I did I just cars have people in my bedroom. <laughs> people told me that's to do awesome. that. People told me to do exactly that, just to like get the stats. <laughs> Mine just basically looks like an average rundown European village. I just have the, <laughs> the most gigantic buildings ever next to one another, and then exactly one toilet in front of them and one coffee truck. <laughs> and I'm a one-star resort. <laughs> what a power move. You don't need toilets inside, but you just put them outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I actually took the design seriously for the most part, but then when I built the second floor for each of house... I placed. Is a uh, floor? Yeah, there's a second floor. <laughs> you can build one. More Holy cars. Shit. <laughs> 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 I put a bed for each of them, and then I put uh, twenty toilets in total facing each other, for like when the <laughs> homies come over. <laughs> you get real intimate while taking a piss with someone who's visiting. Everyone has <laughs> yeah. a stare down. They play <laughs> junkin while they're crouched over. <laughs> Have you guys tried the feature where you visit other islands? No. I don't I think I've got unlocks at the bit. I tried it. It's actually, it's nice. Um, I can see how anyone would get addicted to it, but you would have to be like probably a huge fan of the, uh, um, the genre of the mini game if that makes sense. Because um, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I can see how anyone would lose like a lot of time to that uh, particular, like just visiting people's islands. There's a lot of variety to, to come across, um, and then you have people who named their island after. You know what island? I came across like five of those. Oh my god, I saw <laughs> that. I was on your stream then, Jesus. Yeah, um, but anyway, moving past that. Um, what do you guys think of Honolulu as a new map? Love it. Hmm. Yeah, I it's, really like it. It's big, but it doesn't feel like... I was worried at first, because again, they, they rolled out the line. It's three times bigger than Izazaki Jinsho. Mm -hmm. I'm like... Mm. I was genuinely worried that it would start to feel like it's too big at this point, but honestly, mm. there's always something to do. Like, yeah, the whole shops for every single different class being like all spread out is great. Having like, you know, the casino stuff on the left part side of the map is like really nice, but it also takes a while for you to be able to get to there. Mm -hmm. um, and it does feel like it's kind of like a map that's segmented in two places with the bridges. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just like it. I, I do think that is the maximum size that I would want on a map. Mm -hmm. But there's also so much stuff to do. There's obviously the Bond Link chats, which thank you for putting those on the map. Oh my god. There's the party <laughs> yeah. chats, which aren't on the map, but they are still nice. Obviously, you like, walk over and find them. And I think it's just a good spread of everything. So, yeah. I also think it looks gorgeous. Like, I, oh, yeah. I know oh, they yeah. keep Hell saying yeah. the dragon engine, like, you know, oh, it's getting old, things don't look as good. What, 
what are you what are you talking about? I know, about? I know. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Likewise. I really I sincerely hope they don't just uh, let go of the engine with the next game or the next mm. couple of games. Yeah. Because they I'm, just came I mean, so far with it. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get Judgment 3 still in it, and maybe one remake. Fingers crossed that it's Dead Souls Kiwami, but anyway. Kiwami yeah. 3, watch it be Kiwami 3. <laughs> no, no, for the love of no. I mean, here's God. the thing. Here's the thing. You all know that the um, the Haruka memoirs in uh, Kiryu's section, that wasn't Kiwami 1. That was a Dragon yeah. Engine yeah. Kiwami 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yes. I, I was freaking yeah, I Kiwami, out. Like, Kiwami. no, don't do this. <sighs> Kiwami, Kiwami, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually okay, Snowy. Yes, I don't know if I ever heard your thoughts on Kiwami Three. What do you what do you think of a Kiwami Three? <laughs> I think it'd be base to be able to fight Mine in the Dragon Age. Fair enough. Fair. Hey, respect. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. A but also, like, uh, sorry, go on. <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say the the town that's in Yakuza Three. I think that would also look really nice. Oh yeah. Okay, and then yeah. we get to see Rikia mm -hmm. again. Think about. It. Oh, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's yes. a lot of things that like Kiwami 3 would be good, even though people, I mean, I'm sure you're about to say Goku Doni. People would be like, oh, but it just ruins the original. It's like the original's still there. You yeah. Can still buy it, <laughs> probably. But I mean, yeah. There's just a lot of things that I think would look nice, you know? The good thing about 345 as well is that they're available on, you know, all platforms, unlike um, some other franchises, for example, like Resident Evil. You don't have the original mm -hmm. Resident Evil 1, 2, 3 anymore. Um, yes. Yeah. They're pretty much replaced with the remakes. Yeah. So. Like, I, I do see people talk about, you know, how they want to see the originals, like, uh, bundled together to be released on current platforms um, with the Yakuza, with Resident Evil, and I do think that would be a good idea. You know, that would be a much better anniversary gift than something like fucking Reverse. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, I've, I've seen people talking about a Zero Kiwami, which is just like... No. Oh, <laughs> no. Like, come on. No. It's too early. <laughs> I, they're going to do it at some point, but, like, not now. Boys, I think we're due for a infinite wealth, Kiwami. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, skill shortcuts. Even if you only add skill shortcuts, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah, that's all the game adds. <laughs> yeah, but the twist is it will be in Unreal Engine. Oh, no. Okay, you know what? I don't know. No. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Can't wait for Shadow Compilation started to ruin the entire game. <laughs> I fucking hate that. So... Now that we're talking about... Okay, I, I know this is not about Infinite Wealth, but now that we're talking about the Shinkiwami, how do you guys feel about that game? Exceedingly flawed. I mean... Yeah, there, there was a lot of, like... I don't know, dumb dumb stuff with it, like trooper cards. Not many... Well, no one really liked them. Mm -hmm. And then also a bunch of technical problems. But at the very least, it means, you know, if I want to play Ishin, I don't have to play it in Japanese anymore. True. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, the whole main point of it was for the West, and I'm so happy the West actually finally got it. Mm -hmm. And, like, RGG, like, there's obviously y'all who played the original in Japanese knows, they could have just brought that over and just, like, localized it, because of the fact that, you know, it's 60 FPS on PS4. Like, you could have yeah. easily done a Yakuza 0 and, like, put it on everything, blah, blah, blah. But they actually did make an effort with it, like, even, like, make, like moving it to Unreal and, like, obviously changing over Lieutenants. Mm -hmm. I like 95% of the actor changes, and the only one that I'm not too fond of is only because their original did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I, I, I like it, but I also was expecting more quality of life. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. I think if there is... Mm. Um, if there's one thing I, I will say about the whole remake, remaster kind of debate is that it's that I feel like companies think people aren't going to play the originals if they were to like bundle them together uh, for the, you know, for the current time, which fair enough, like a lot of people just can't stomach going back to an older game. But I feel like Yakuza, for example, or again, Resident Evil, those have a big enough of a fan base that just porting those, like not even, you know, putting too much work into them, just port porting them into PC um, and all that. I think they would profit off of that, but like, um, I could be wrong. The obvious oh, one. No, they definitely OG would. 1 and 2. Yes. I'm literally looking at my box copy of it for the PS3. <laughs> like, fucking, <Yeah>. come on. <laughs> they have, they yeah. have like the HD remaster for the PS3. I think they could yes. just work with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just translate it. I mean, we could have done that with Ishii, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. Kind kind of a tangent 
off of that last Laddition thing. I know we're getting further and further away. Right. Go ahead. How, <laughs> how would you all feel about Kurohio 1 and 2? Because that yes, would be I would the love them. biggest. Like, Gokudoni is the biggest Kurohio biggest fan here. <laughs> Like, here's the thing, like, would you just bring them over and HD them up? Because I don't think that would work. Like, I think if they were Kiwami, they would be turned into brawlers. How, like, and that would lose what makes them unique. Like, how would you feel about that? I think... I mean... Go, go on. on, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, um, well, from my angle, I would be okay with either, because, dear God, we don't talk about Ukiyo Tatsuya enough. But <laughs> back to the point, like... It feels kind of strange, but I think it would actually work to even bring them up, like the actual PSP versions, but just kind of maybe sharpen textures here and there. Specifically because when I look at the indie scene nowadays, you have a lot of games that look, quote, behind the times. But it's mm -hmm. not like Kurohyo is necessarily behind the times. It has a very specific artistic direction and design. Everything from the camera angle to, you know, the cinematics was deliberately designed to where it feels like... To me, a game like that or a game like Yakuza 1 and 2 are genuinely timeless. So bringing them over here, it wouldn't feel like, oh, it's janky because whatever. Because when you play through them, the combat is really bloody responsive. So again, yeah. I'll be okay with either unless we do, you know, again, Unreal Engine. Just please, RGG, public service announcement. <laughs> Don't use Unreal Engine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I mean, they did that Virtual Fighter 5 remake in Dragon Engine. They yeah. probably could just like port the gameplay mechanics and stuff just in the Dragon Engine. Was that an actual mm -hmm. re remake? I've always wondered. Yep. I don't know how it differs from the so. original, but yeah, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I think they said it was. And unironically, they said the reason why we've got M3 emulation with Gaiden and Infinite Wealth is because of the Dragon Engine. The Dragon Engine is a great container for it, apparently. Which, mm. that's wild. That's really wild. Yeah. Uh, if they were to, you know, port Korea 1 and 2, or like remaster them instead of like a full-on remake, I can see that being called Perry Kuza, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those who play I, it know. Two. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I will say, like, especially with two, some of those late game, like, even just normal street fights, oh, they take so long. I, oh my god. The... <laughs> I hate Kurohi 2 for that. Mm. Jeez, the final, or tech, not really the final long battle, but when you're on a truck and you're escaping the Ashura Den, and it just never stops with the enemies. Like, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I, like, also, I adore that game to bits, but no, th that was a mistake. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, if they do anything with it as well, cut down the QTEs. Like, it'd be better on a controller, but like, those QTEs on a PSP were just, oh, <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just so weird to me because like Kurohio 2 um the enemies take so much more than the bosses like how does that make mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. yeah. I mean to be fair they did kind of balance it out but they did it, to me anytime that I hear about oh god the the enemy encounters are too much I keep being reminded how Leon you mentioned you didn't pay attention to the equipment grinding in OG Ishin and it really hindered the experience True. to me <laughs> Kurohio 2 feels the same way because it has that built in I wouldn't say party system, but you can't have like a an AI mate at all times by you, and they will have mm -hmm. very specific stats to them. Like I don't know, decrease enemy encounter rate or increase trouble. Uh, like I don't know, helping people out. Those kinds of events, or mm -hmm. uh, have a cat locator or whatever. So if they were more obvious about that, because in the first game they was just recruiting them for the multiplayer, but in the second game they really help you out in combat. So. To me, when I was grinding for the Platinum there, it didn't feel as troublesome because I could I could invite anyone from Ryusho to the most random bloke that I've seen in the first chapter, which is <laughs> way underleveled. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Here's the thing, here's the thing. You would be right, if not for the fact that you can smack the absolute shit out of your teammate and vice versa. <laughs> that, that is yeah, so... That's fun. <laughs> really fun. I do, that on, I do that on purpose, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like the friendly fire aspect is so funny, and you know it, it does kind of work in your favor sometimes if you're alone and you have like several uh, people fighting you. But I feel like more often than not, you're the one to kind of eat shit <laughs> for it. Yeah, yeah. I I kicked mine into the Sotenbori River. I'm not sad about <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> um. See, I. Unironically, I know we're talking about Infinite Wealth, but conversations <laughs> like this are kind of the highlight of these videos for me, so I'm kind of glad that we talk about this stuff. Um, anyway, 
favorite party members and jobs. But let's start with party members. Jungi Ha. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I enjoy Jungi a lot, but for me, favorite party member is actually a new one. It's Songhee. Same. She, yeah. she kicks ass. Yes. Okay, so we all agree then. <laughs> Certified Sonki Sims, all four of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know about you guys. I spammed her gas grenade ability a lot that poisons enemies. Oh, yes. it's really yes. good. Yeah, she'd always yes. go first and you just It's quick to access as well. Yes. That makes yeah. it really good. I mean it could be quicker if the game had shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> true, true, true. At um, first when I played the demo, I was like, ah, it's fine, and then I played the full game, I'm like Wish I had shortcuts right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So much. Uh, Sonhee's assassin job is really, really well made, I think. Um, like, you know, between the debuffs she has, the blade attacks, the gun attacks, the grapple that she... I think she has either one or two. Blunt attacks, yes, two. electric attacks. I think the only thing mm. she's missing is uh, fire and water moves. Yes. Uh, I was but... say... I love the fact the electric move is a power cable, like the power cables yeah. they ran from Comey Jewel yeah. everywhere. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's it's amazing, yeah. Um, but, like, uh, what was I going to say? So, Sony is amazing, but I also don't want to take away from uh, Tomizawa and Chitose, because I love those as well. Mm. Um, I will say, though, unfortunately, I think Chitose is a bit of a hit or miss. The best thing about her, for, in my experience in the playthrough, is... is her heal abilities. Those help me so yes. much. It's insane. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Aperitifs. Fucking hell, yes. that heals a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's got a good AoE to it. Like, yeah. good size. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think she has a uh, a few blunt attacks, one grapple, one yeah. blade grapple, I think it is. Um, oh, yeah, the, the roses thing, where you topple yeah. them on the head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I keep thinking, for some reason, I keep thinking that was um, Geodancer. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I can see how, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't know it why. Makes sense. And then you have Tomizawa, like a jack of all trades, literally. Yeah. <laughs> He's I mean, so good. even if you don't like the character, they made him so freaking good in combat where you're gonna wind up loving him eventually. Oh, yes. 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 Like, he has magic attacks, all elements, blunt attacks, gun attacks. Only thing he's missing, once again, is blade attacks, which yeah. makes him a really, really good party member. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think that's all the party members. Okay, so what about your favorite jobs? I was going to say, in terms of like party members as well, and this also goes to jobs, mm -hmm. Kiryu. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> they translated him to this game so well, and Dragon of Dojima style. Like, even not powered up, obviously, like, like I did all the memoirs and powered him up to the full, just chef's kiss. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just good, and his ultimate tag team, which... I'd like to talk about the story portion of that. We'll do that later. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll get oh, to it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I freaking love how you can upgrade the basic attack combo. It's so yes. good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How, how did you all feel getting to chapter eight thinking, all right, the game's probably going to stop introducing things and then being told, hey, would you like to go on a massive side portion of the game to <laughs> increase know. Kiryu even further? Yeah. Jeez. I mean, the the actual... Okay, first off, the fan service. Because the only games that weren't given love in Infinite Wealth were the Kurohyo games and Lost Paradise. Everything else, to my knowledge, is somehow represented. So mm. just from that angle, I freaking love the game. But to kind of go back to the combat, I've mentioned before I'm not really into turn-based combat apart from the Yakuza games. Infinite feels like it's the perfect in-between of turn-based and actual beat-em-up. Especially when you use something like Rush with Kiryu and you get two turns in a row. It, it feels like, yeah. because of the proximity bonus where you can spam square, it didn't feel like I was playing a turn-based game. It felt like I was playing Yakuza 0, and it was mm -hmm. so fun. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, the Beast grab, which really helps with crowds. I love that uh, grab. Um, that back attack, when you get that. Yeah, if you do it with oh, the back attack, yeah. it does like 10,000 damage. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> Uh, because it's of how also, powerful, like nice and quick to swap between the styles as well. Like mm -hmm. they could have made yeah. it slow because the animations. No, you can just do it instantly. Like that's such a good thing. Yeah, mm. because of how powerful Beast as well uh, is. Uh, you get the basic attack enhancement for the last level. Um, for the uh, uh, what was it again? The body uh, tree. 
Um, I honestly forgot how it looks like, but um, from what I remember, it was pretty cool. And then you have the uh, the rush upgrade, where like it's like it's just a million punches, and it feels so good. Yep. Getting right, the rush attack are... from as a back attack is awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say. I also like with Brawler how you gain like one more attack on obviously your attacks, but also the Kamaki knockback, which works so yeah. well. Yes. Yes. It's so good. Like, you would usually think that one of Kiryu's styles is going to be bad, but there isn't a bad one. They're all good. Mm -hmm. They're all fantastic in their own way. If I remember right, Rush also increases your evasion and something else? Yes, critical rate. Crit yeah, yeah. Did, yep. <laughs> yeah that, that's really good for that style. And also the stun, which if you can stun enemies, you can then switch to Brawler and you can do heat moves. Yeah. Which I find, okay, yeah. that's the one thing about Dragon Dojima I'm not too fond of. The heat moves feel a bit finicky at times. They're awkward, Like, you can yeah. be next to a, yeah, you'd be next to a wall and sometimes it'll just be, nope, that doesn't count. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. They yeah. need the little blue indicators on the minimap, like in uh, yes. Yakuza 1 and 2. Yes. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome, <laughs> yeah. But otherwise, it's kind of like a merge of, uh, what's it called, Essence of Roadside Weapon from Ichiban, just kind of yeah. repurposed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, they changed that slightly in Infinite Wealth because I unlocked it earlier today. Instead of cutting to like the Kiwami attack area, you just do it there, which is good. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So you slam their head in where you're standing. I, I <laughs> will say the QTEs on these heat attacks are a little fast. Yeah, <laughs> like I think they're all triangle though, right? Which I is unironically so, yeah. like OG one. Mm -hmm. Which it also all my. Reminds me of the Yakuza 4, Feel the Heat, which um, I think the final... One of the inputs is always triangle with the Feel the Heat segments in the Yakuza That's... 4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did I interrupt you, by the way, Gokidoni? I think you were going to say something. I have a million thoughts at any point in time. I have no idea what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, literally, the first thing that popped into my head with all this OG1 talk... Kamarocho. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. yeah. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I, I need to point out something. It's kind of related to the story, but it's not a spoiler. Mm -hmm. So, at one point, we just say, hey, let's go to Kamurocho and train. I thought that was gonna be, oh, here's a cheeky way of introducing the third dungeon. But then you mm -hmm. get to Kamurocho, there's no glamorous, why the hell am I back in the city, like in Yakuza 6, you just appear yeah. there, and it's like, oh, I guess we can train. The only thing I did there was two things off the bucket list and buying a bunch of stuff at Lamash. No training whatsoever. Mm. Yeah, it, that was a weird bit, because as well, like, obviously without saying spoilers yet, the whole thing that's building up to is just like, all right, this this is going to be huge. And then it's just like, here's some random person from a Yakuza 6 substory. I felt the it same is, way, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I, I like it for, like, you know, the, the human aspect of Kiryu, but at the same time, it's like, why is this here? Yeah. For a while, it felt like it was going to be a thing that would get him to think about, oh yeah, maybe I should get really, really good treatment once this is over. But it, you don't really have him ponder about it. It's just kind of, oh yeah, this is a person I know. That's cute. You could have just as easily put the, you know, pocket circuit of someone else there and like, oh yeah, I know this person. Mm -hmm. Anyway, gotta kill a random dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do appreciate that particular, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, memory, I guess. Just because... It delves into like the the illness side of uh, things for Kiryu and also Onomichio, yeah. but Onomichio, okay, Onomichio. Someone in my chat <laughs> once asked like, "Hey Leon, what what do you think is like a an overused like kind of thing with the Yakuza games?" And I think someone in chat said Onomichio, and I was talking about like, "Yeah, I kind of see it a little bit." Yeah, yeah. And I think for me, less for me. I mean, yeah. I was come, come gonna up say. Better. <laughs> well, Camelop is better, but Camelop is supposed to be a Camarocho mascot. It's the same as Onomichio. Why are you out yeah, why of the natural I? environment? <laughs> why are you in Hawaii? What are you doing? It's kind of, if you're familiar with, with Chi-chan, that one particular mascot from Japan, I feel like it just became a global phenomenon. Who's this silly one? And then yeah. they just made merch out of it. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah. again, is so ironic considering Don Doko with those two mascots, Gachpin and Muku, which if you've ever played Grand Blue Fantasy, like, most people associate them in the West with, oh, you give me my gacha rolls, I hate you. Whereas in Japan, they're actually TV mascots. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Camelop is also cross. guilty Sorry. of showing up in Yokohama in LJ, I think. Was it LJ or wait? Lad. Uh, Lad. Uh, yes. Like a dragon. Yeah, because of the Tojo yeah. crest. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah, which why? Actually, the, <laughs> why? To be fair, wait, actually, was it Camera Cho or Isasaki Juncho? I'm thinking of one of the Jun DLC Cho. girlfriends for. Oh, that's what, uh, LJ, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yes. Camera Cho. Camera Cho, okay, okay. She's in the park in the top left. Ah, yes, that's correct, right. correct. <laughs> And then there was that bug that a lot of people got where Yagami wasn't actually the Camelot model. It was just him, and he'd do, like, the head bug <laughs> as him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need to see that. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Pretty best. Uh, going back a little bit to uh, the topic. So, we, we said we loved... Uh, we were talking about the, the new characters' jobs, but what about the generic jobs? What, what do you guys like? I, I think uh, Kunoichi's amazing. Yeah, it was good, yeah, I like the yeah. uh, sub substitution. Yeah, yeah. That move right there is one of the most broken moves ever. If you in a turn-based yeah, game, good. if you just give like any character a chance to take a second turn, that's wild. That's yeah. so wild. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially because like, you can get three party members with it. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. fact that you can like you know you have the you have like your charge up attacks like a couple of like there's a couple of new like charge up attacks on certain classes. I think Host has the magic one. I can't remember which has the yeah. physical one, but like you can have a party member do that, substitution them, do it immediately, and then just do it again. There is no two oh, turns. I didn't think it's of that. now one turn. It's That's wild. Genius. Yeah, it's the action but, star, I think, that has the physical mm. one. But mm. also, it helps ah. out those party members, like I'm not going to name names, Adachi, who have 30 <laughs> agility when they join your party. Oh, I. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> my guy dies before he gets a turn. How, how did yeah. you get slower from LED to infinite wealth? I'm sorry, I know you're old. You don't look old. Have you seen yourself in a bloody underwear in your swimsuit? You look fantastic. How are you getting slower? I was going to say that. Speaking of, why the hell is he the most jacked character in all right? of the fucking franchise? <laughs> <laughs> like, be you, you would think the guy would have like a, a, a beer belly or something, but like, beer no. Beer belly, yeah. No, he's, he's more It'd jacked than Shinoda. Great for the glutes. If yeah. he was in his prime, I bet you he could take uh, Sidemen in a first fight. If Probably. he was in his prime, mm -hmm. now yeah. no. Oh, yeah. but... Though it is kind of funny, isn't it? Like he's what sixty three, and he has a physique of like a fucking Greek god or something. <laughs> something that's something that I wanted to like bring up later for the story. I wonder if Eric and Chit say are the replacements for Namba and Adachi in the next game, considering mm -hmm. it will be four years until the next game. Yeah, that is a good point. Hmm. I'm actually surprised they brought back Namba because considering he's like a guest character. Face actor. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, they yeah. had him yeah. on a lot as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I unironically, tell me if you also did the same for y'all. When we got Namba for one chapter and they said, all right, you're going back to Japan. No! <laughs> I just got <laughs> yeah, him. Like of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is surprisingly good in the game considering how shitty he was in the last game. Yes. Mm. The whole changing... attack and uh, defense bu debuff is really good. Yes, and changing oh, yeah. Pigeon Storm to be an AoE? Good, good. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> best, and best one with like a 12 kilometer radius. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and also, of course, we do have to bring up Big Ass Bud. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Beautiful essence. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Namba leaving quick, can we talk about Jungi in this game? <laughs> oh, I, I'm so angry about that. Wait, I, I need to go on a tangent. This go. pissed me off so much. Please go ahead. I, th I think it's like chapter 13 that he... I'm not sure if this is Yeah, I think that's the chapter before the last, literally. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and, and see, that's the thing. I'm... Again, I'm a, also a Jungi simp. I may have a thing for Korean characters in this same. series. But same. Same. As soon as he came, the, don't put that outside of context. As soon, <laughs> so did as, I. <laughs> okay, so as soon as he he was brought into the party, I was like, okay, you're gonna be my go-to. You're gonna be one of the big four. And then I saw how far behind he was with the levels. Because yes. at that time, yeah. I don't want to women say that my party was at level thirty-seven, and then they gave me him at level thirty-six, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to bust my ass at the you know, Honolulu haunts to actually get him up to speed. I equipped so many things on him, and also, you know, he doesn't have head trauma anymore, so it was even more infuriating. <laughs> but it took an eternity to get him there, and I was like, okay, fuck you, game. I have my husband over here, and that's it. <laughs> I yeah. I I don't know if it's because of the um I, I love the scene with him and Zhao where he's just jealous of everybody. 
Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Even the game was like, okay, we know we know how you guys feel. Yeah. But like, yeah. like, I don't know if it's because his his voice actor like has gotten really popular. He's obviously the Japanese voice actor of uh, Gojo in Jujutsu Kaisen. Mm. Like, oh yeah. So I don't know if he was like super busy and they planned around that, or the fact that you know he's super popular. I I am also very, very upset. Um, I again I don't want to be all like they nerfed everything from LED speedrun, but Jungi Han was <laughs> like literally the second strongest character after Eri in that game. Headtron, as you all are saying, is absolutely phenomenal. I do like his back attack uh the knife one not the first one you get yes. the professional one. slash yes oh it's so yes. good. yeah i it's love like, that too it's, i think it's a little bit of a better replacement than head trauma but the mp cost is obviously just so yeah. nasty yeah, yeah. but they're uh, speaking yeah. of like favorite character and job and you're saying about like Jungi simp uh this is what i did as soon as he turned up uh I put a picture in, which I is going to be hard for video to see. <laughs> look how it. many fucking, look how many <laughs> screenshots I made. Uh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just the way he stares at you. It's so Yeah, cool. yeah I, I love the pose as well. <laughs> yeah, oh I, I like this, like, on a, like, a, a kind of thing with Joongi. I love Joongi. I think, again, I agree that it takes him a little too long to turn up in this game. One thing that I do like, again, little quality of life thing. In LED, whenever a party member joined you, and the entire reason Zhao wasn't using LED speedrun is because they turn up with a one-star, or what would be a one-star equivalent weapon in LED, like their base default weapon. Mm -hmm. And in LED, yeah. and obviously Infinite Wealth, a lot of your damage comes from your weapons. In Infinite Wealth, one of the best things they did, if anyone joins your party late, they join with the equivalent weapon of what they should have at the time. Yeah. Which makes them yes. a lot more infinitely useful than in LED. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, when Juki Han comes back, he had a weapon that costs $140,000, and it's like, sweet, I don't have to buy that now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, have you have you seen this drip with, with the, uh, when he comes back? Yes. <laughs> the oh, point of sure shoes. About, <laughs> I'm not sure about the shirt pocket, but the rest of it looks great. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't wear the bin bag anymore. I do love the fact that they brought that up as well, as like, you yeah. look awkward, <laughs> you look hot, what are you doing? <laughs> But but he looks so depressed. Like oh, I didn't realize my attire was so problematic. And Bro, I'm like, why <laughs> have you seen what the Dutch is? Of course he would be depressed. He was like, yo, why are you wearing that trash bag, dude? <laughs> leave it. Yeah. Leave oh it yeah, be. literally. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Also, considering what you mentioned, uh, Frub, about the uh, voice actor being uh, busy with other projects, I'm kind of surprised they got a karaoke song for him um, in this game. Right. I'm so happy. Oh, and an amazing but... one. It's yeah, yes. it's really good. I love it. And again, like Zhao shares that song, and Zhao also sings it really well as well. Yes, I, I still love Hell Stew from Zhao's version. I think that's one of my favorite songs in the entire series. But same, that I think Likewise. every new karaoke song is fantastic. Genuinely, yeah. Yeah. Tommy Zhao yeah. doesn't get one though, sadly. <laughs> yeah, it feels. Oh right. yeah, yeah. It, it's the Takayuki Yagami syndrome, or sorry, Kimura Takuya syndrome. <laughs> Yeah. He, he yeah. like he, his singing. Like uh, someone linked it to me on Twitter. His singing is really good. Like Hopefully. it's obviously that he's in a like actual proper band, like. Like I think he did the OP for the second season of Jujutsu Kaisen or something like that. Oh. Well, hopefully in the next game. It. Interesting. Yeah. Jungi got lucky with the uh, Infinite Wealth, so maybe Tomizawa is gonna get that same treatment in the next uh, game. Hopefully. But hopefully not. Also... Hopefully not with the, like the joining late part. But yeah, go on. It's also <laughs> yeah, interesting yeah. that like, inc like including with like favorite party members and like obviously like. Namba coming back. The fact that Namba and Tomizawa are face actors. Face actors don't last long in this series. They yeah. usually die or they just disappear forever. <laughs> like, yeah. so to have like have Tomizawa, who's obviously like in the game a metric ton, and have Namba, who's in the game a whole bunch, who is also a returning actor. That's really nice. Like a lot more of that. Thank you for bringing that up. Actually, okay, I'm gonna possibly veer into a very different discussion, but it's worth it. Snowy has brought something up in his latest video, and it was about... I? Yes. <laughs> oh, I know was... that one. I'm surprised. You mentioned about how, ever since Nagoshi left, they've been kind of been more consistent with the characters. Which, mm -hmm. there is a pattern in there. Um, <laughs> so maybe now that... If, assuming anything actually changed with the writing, um, maybe we will just consistently actually see more of these characters come back. Even if they're like, you know, yeah. uh, face models. It'll stop being a meme, basically. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. more, you know, yeah. sent off to America. I, I think yeah. we're all wondering what happens with Judgment Free. 
the fact that Lost Judgment yes. at the end of the sub stories, there is a character who says, I'm off to Hawaii. Like they hinted that yeah. long before. <laughs> like, wait, did they? We're all wondering. I think we're all hoping for a judgment for you. But again, it's that one it's face actor. And mm -hmm. obviously, not going into the nasty details, the absolute crap that his agency did. Or the yeah. CEO of his agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the CEO. Yes. That makes me wonder, like, how they're going to handle that. Uh, mm. Like, what if we get another judgment, but Yagami's not there? It's just Tanimura I... with his fighting styles. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I love Kaito. I love Kaito Files. I think that Kaito could carry a game, but not on his own. Yeah. Mm. Agreed. So, what do you guys... Kaito with Yagami's fighting styles. <laughs> I was going to say, just, Sugiura magically knows how to fight like Yagami. He got taught yeah. by him before he disappeared forever. <laughs> I mean, it would fit with him. Like, especially because he appears in the boxing minigame. It felt like Lost yes. Judgment had, like, a Dutragonist, and they specifically designed Snake and Boxer for that quote-unquote Dutragonist, and then yeah. scrapped him, and then like, oh, hey, Yagami, you already have full file blah, blah, blah. <laughs> fighting style. You have more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, okay, I don't mind that whole uh, protagonist upgrade, if you will, because technically Majima got the same thing. Um, and I I was going to mention someone else, but I think that's it. But Majima, like, you know, he started out as, like, a relatively side character. And then look at him now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, the power scaling in Yakuza is just a joke. It's, it's not <laughs> worth thinking oh, about God. it anymore. If they want someone to become use... a protag, they will. So, J it's just gonna be... don't use those. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, we're thinking the same thing. Like, for obviously the story like discussion later, I'm glad there was one less this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Until yes. he's getting old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, there's, there's something else about this that I wanted to mention as well, but I kind of forgot what it was. Um, So, <sighs> Kaito. Okay, let, let's take Kaito as an example. Um, mm -hmm. they, they did kind of, you know, demonstrate that he's a, a tough character in the first Judgment. But I don't know if I would say I saw him coming as a playable character. So, I would say Kaito got a similar treatment where, like, in Lost Judgment, in that expansion, I would say he pulled off things that I'm not sure if the first Judgment's Kaito would have pulled off, in a way. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Um... Should we continue with Infinite Wealth? <laughs> Probably, yeah, yeah, sorry, maybe. <laughs> sorry for derailing hardcore. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, no, I, I honestly... I, I love the derailing parts. Uh, so, Dundalk Island. Uh, how do we, how do we feel about that? I'm not fully done with it. I'm only like two, three star. I like it. I like it a bunch. I, I wish they didn't force it on you in the story for as long as they yeah. did. I wish they'd have just said, you know... Hey, here's the intro, you know, you can come and do this anytime. Mm -hmm. But like, man, it's like, as like a very basic kind of Animal Crossing-esque thing, I think they nail it. It's mm -hmm. really good. It's just so chill. Mm -hmm. I think the only problem I would have with it, with it as well is for replays, possibly. You know, you come back oh, to yeah. the same part, you might have to do a day or two or three, and then you yes. can leave. Yeah. yeah, it's three days. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and unironically, when I was gonna say, go on. <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say when I got to it, because like I was saying earlier, I wanted to just keep playing the story. I literally just because like I wait out the day. I just put my controller on the ground, just left, had like lunch or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. understandable. I might do that for the replays. It's... Yeah, I mean, it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's unironically, uh, someone in the speed run. Uh, someone in the speedrun scene has already routed how to get to one star in the second day, which is really good Ooh, for the run yeah. because it gives you ten thousand dollars, which is like a yeah. lot for that point. In oh the game. wow, nice, yeah, nice. But you still have yeah, to wait until good. day three to go away. <laughs> like oh, it just, you just have to wait. There's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. Oh god. Um, I think. No, not I think. I finished the goddamn thing. What am I saying? I think. Anyway. <laughs> You're still in denial about it. <laughs> it's it's such a long-ass thing, dude. Um, don't take that out of context. Uh, Dundalk Island. Uh, I finished that uh, the whole story. And uh, I think it took me about 10 hours, give or take. It's nice. Mm -hmm. um, the story... The, so, you know how with the Cabaret Club, there's more story than actual gameplay? Yep. 
I saw Dondoko yeah. as like a contrast to that, where there's more gameplay than there is story, but the story is there. Um, yes. Hmm. It was nice. It's also a really clever way to reuse assets, you know, RGG Studio at it again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I didn't mind it. I thought it was fun at the very least. And the addition of like the online <clears throat> mode was pretty cool. Um, just seeing all the creativity people come up with. By creativity, I mean like 20 toilets in a field. <laughs> that, you know, it's, it's coming across stuff like that is, is funny, at least. Especially if you stream that kind of thing. Um, and the fact that you also have like missions whenever you go visit somebody else's island. Um, you can basically uh, get some points from that to buy a bunch of things for your online profile. So, overall, really nice stuff. And... I don't want to say too much because Proob did not finish the thing yet, but you know there is something that you get out of it. Um, I know the reward. Okay, okay. <laughs> I know. That. I yeah. saw the reward in a video. <laughs> yeah. So, what do we think about the reward? It it makes sense considering you know the business mini game in LED. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I do like how, like it, it's not a major thing by any means, but. They do try to add the Dondoku feel to it, if you saw the move. Yeah. Um, yep. And also, it's cheaper in this game. Whereas it was 200, it's 100 now. Um, yes. Yep. And it's still AoE. So I guess there is something at least to get out of all of this. And that's nice. Um, yeah. Okay. Any other thing you guys want to say about Dondoku? Even if you don't like Yakuza games, buy Infinite Well so you can play Dondoko. It's actually more fun than <laughs> I've been told. I, I've never played anything that's akin to Animal Crossing, but this, mm -hmm. I, I love it. It's literally what my summer days look like, minus the talking turtles and the gigantic mascots. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically uh, Yakuza Minecraft, if you want to put it that way. Or Animal Crossing, that works as well. Um <laughs> Okay, Sujimon battles. What do we think of Sujimon battles? I like them. Same. Eh. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit more on the ear side. It's like triple battles from Pokemon, but not as good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, essentially. Also, I'm not really into Pokemon, so it was just like, oh, this thing. Cool, <laughs> I guess. There's this random yeah. ball dude. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I was going to say that I was making a bunch of notes about the pacing of the story. Mm -hmm. And once we were initially introduced to Dr. Professor Sujimon, whatever, I was like, okay, this was infinitely shorter. I'm I'm done with the Sujimon introduction. That's amazing. But then you get to Hawaii, and then you get to <laughs> yeah. the battles and the entire story. And I'm like, oh no, you messed it up again. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Sujimon battles. Um, I'll say one good thing about it. I was fully expecting for this to like take a while to finish. Like you know, you have to like do 20 battles to get to the next rank. <laughs> but after finishing the whole storyline, I'm kind of glad that you need, like, three fights between each rank. And then you can just yeah, pretty much. move on with the story. Yeah, um, yeah you, you have... just have to get your own rank up to the, the proper one. Yeah, yeah, like, it doesn't overstay its welcome for the, you know, for, for, the, for the contained story within within this minigame. Um, and then if you, you know, if you, if you like the minigame, you can participate in the stadium battles, and you get uh, stuff out of that as well. And I actually forgot to mention this, but they also do implement uh, Sojimon battles in Dondoko Island, which I thought, personally at least, oh. it was nice. Because uh, they don't overdo it. It comes up every now and then. Um, and whenever you visit somebody's island, you can actually battle their Sojimon. Uh, oh, wow. Ooh. No, I did not know that. Yeah, so hmm. I thought that was kind of nice. But uh, there's a very, re very real chance of them just having the DLC Sojimon and they just demolish you. <laughs> 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 but... Yeah. That aside, um, this is a point now that maybe some of you won't care about, but in the in the event some of you do, the f the sad sub story music. <laughs> Did we, it, I, I gotta I gotta mention on Twitter about hey, hey Leon, do you think they play this a little too much? And I'm like, no, I'm a chapter eight. I only heard it like five times, but then fast forward. <laughs> like, I do the side content, and I'm like, okay, I get what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't genuinely bother me, but, like, RGG, you have a lot of themes. <laughs> Come on. Oh, God. Yeah. Post, post Yakuza 0, there was only one time where I think that sub-story theme was properly used, and it was actually used in a way that seems tone-deaf. I'm not going to say anything beyond that, because spoilers, but I'll say 
it's in the Kaito files. Yes. And if you look at <laughs> oh, it from, yeah. from a fourth, if if you look at it from a fourth wall breaking perspective, it's actually kind of a genius use. But yes. apart from that, it's like you have so many songs. Like you have the receive you piano version from Lost Paradise. You have almost every game before Zero had its own iteration, and now it's like dun 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 dun. The fucking song. <laughs> they do use multiple like sad uh, songs in Infinite Twelve itself, but they keep falling back onto this one. <laughs> yep. Um. Right. Well, with that out of the way, um, do you guys want to mention anything about the gameplay? Anything at all? Mini games, sub stories, before we move on to the story. Yeah. Um, Come on. I again, I, I mentioned this with Gaiden. I love the model free emulation. Spike Out is fantastic. I've mm -hmm. never played it before. I yes. really love it. Having, I'd love to have like I know there's obviously fishing in like obviously both on Doku and on the pier, but I do like that they brought back some kind of fishing. I would like a proper fishing mini game. Mm -hmm. But as an mm -hmm. aside, having Sega bass fishing is a very clever way to get around that. And this is actually again something that was in uh, Snowy's video where if you do shogi, you get a you get a protect the leader order for the auto battle, which is that's wild. Like, mm. like nobody ever really like engages with like Shogi or Mahjong. So to get something actual tangible instead of just you know oh, trade your points for plates and like weapons and stuff like that, <laughs> yeah, that's wild. That's so good. Mm -hmm. well, I always do it because I always just go to Puzzle Shogi and do like the first few and then just grab some cheap reward and get some money or something. That's what I do in like yeah. every game now. <laughs> and unironically, the speedrun, we are looking into doing Puzzle Shogi in Chapter One so that we can get the five star Desperado gun and just. Use that. Oh, <laughs> damn! <laughs> but yeah, no, I I like the mini game. Like I know, like Don Doc and Studio Mont also like go into that. I consider them mini games, even though they're like you know bigger things. Yeah, there is a wild amount of mini games in this game. There mm -hmm. is so much to like absolutely lose your time to. Um, mm -hmm. one thing. This is more quality of life rather than mini game. It's more towards obviously the dungeons, which aren't mini games, but like you know main content. Mm -hmm. Thank you mm -hmm. for the music player. Thank you. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is pretty nice. Also, the podcast, now that you mention it, because yes. it has so many references to Sega. That was so cool. Yep. Yep. I still like didn't make Japanese use of that. Mm -hmm. I still didn't make use of the radio because I'm just afraid of like copyright notices or anything. I was, I was gonna say that too. It's like the best and worst thing if you're a content creator. Imagine it starts playing Coin or Disco Queen and like, oh, your stream is gone. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. they've been hitting some of those old tracks more recently, haven't they? Yeah, the zero ones. There's a specific is it zero, eight, yeah. 86 BPM that keeps getting I hit think so. in Infinite Wealth. It, it got yes. hit in Gaiden as well, I think. It's like, all right. Oh, all shit. Right. There is. Right, I need to write that down. I forgot about that particular track. <laughs> Wait, what? 86 BPM? Which one's that? I don't know. Like it, it's. I think that's the artist. Yeah, I like, think that's the composer. Oh, I, I, I see. don't know what track it is, but it's one that keeps coming that... back again and again. Mm, I remember getting good. one in the middle of a sub story. Um, it's like a just a sub story theme, and that's the one that oh. basically made my whole stream I've... not demonetized, yeah. but like sharing. The... It's in Bonnie Cowers because that's where it first hit me. And yes, I remember. me too. Like, me too. Yeah, so, it, that, that turns up. I in stood a in of places. I stood in Don Quixote for like one minute in Yakuza 2 and oh, no. it hit yes. me with that. Oh, oh no. That was the first <laughs> time I realized. And, and that's the wild thing. It's only the OG version of Don Quixote. It's not the remasters or like the 3, 4, and 5 or obviously the amazing one in OG Ishin. Are that's those the same? one sad thing about LED yeah. Ishin. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I, um... I think it's the vocals. I think that's what hits it. Yeah, maybe. Hey. I got a message from a Yakuza content creator. Uh, they told me that they also been, have been getting a lot of strikes. And recently they tried to dispute um, at least a bunch of them. And they've kind of... They told me like for some of them, they didn't even look at the uh, di dispute. They just kind of uh, removed like the restriction. Like it expired over 30 days. Yeah, like I don't know how it works. It's just so weird. It comes out of nowhere and... Uh, I honestly just, I kind of just deal with it at this point. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. Fair. But yeah, that is that is an annoying thing. Um, I had a situation with Gaiden where I was taking a break in Akame's. Uh, was it Akame or Akane? Akane. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's M. 
Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, I was taking a break in her hideout, and one song playing in the background demonetized my whole stream. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> An 11 hour stream, mind you. And one minute just was like, hey, bitch. And it just took away everything. <laughs> it's, it's like going into one of the convenience stores in Yakuza 5 and being, gre uh, being greeted by either Jet Set Radio or Hatsune Miku. One yeah. will strike you. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Radio. You should you should dispute it so that whoever's in charge of actually double checking it has to sit through the entire eleven hour stream because they're not gonna tell you where the segment is. But yeah, that's actually kind of evil. I like it. <laughs> Pretty good. <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have anything to say about the gameplay? Or are we all done? I I did have a couple things. One thing was real quick with the Sujimon. Mm -hmm. I'm the opposite of uh, Goku Doni where. I own every single Pokemon game, and I've played all Ooh. of them at least like three times. Mm. And so getting Sujima, I'm just like, you know what? I'll just go play Pokemon. I'm not going to play this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fair yeah. enough. But I was going to say with uh, with a lot of the mechanical changes, there's one or a handful, I guess, that I didn't even realize until I looked at the, the help menu. Because mm -hmm. they have like a proper help menu as opposed to the stupid smartphone with the emails or whatever, like, <laughs> like a dragon head. Yeah. Uh, told you nothing but um there's stuff like so burn does the most amount of damage on like the first turn that you have it and then mm. it does less and less after each turn and then poisons the opposite i didn't notice Ooh. that but then yeah uh i think bleed is like fixed and then cold can apparently to spread to other people but it literally never happened to me oh, um, uh, it, <clears throat> it can go to the enemy if you're close enough in contact with them it happened with me yeah okay yeah. well there you go well, no wonder so some, like... no wonder some of some of my party members with burn just died out of nowhere. I thought they had enough yeah. HP, but they didn't, I guess. Mm. Uh, and then there's stuff like how um, the non-damaging over time status effects, as well as the damage over time status effects, you can only have one at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As opposed to like a dragon, you could like poison, cold, burn, and <laughs> bleed mm -hmm. on enemy. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, considering how they work in Infinite World, that might have been a little overkill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and then like you you can't be like blind and st uh, stunned at the same time. Mm. <laughs> Which is good. And then also something I didn't realize for ages is magic attacks can't miss. And when I learned that, I was like, God damn it. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> I okay. That is a thing I dislike. Why? Why do opportune attacks? Why can they miss now? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Yeah. There's there's one particular enemy type. I think it's someone who wields dual scissors that will perpetually like avoid physical attacks. That pissed me off mm. so much, so I used the, the fucking the essence of trick shots just on that one individual. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to think about What's... more gameplay. Oh yeah, how do you guys feel about the dungeons? Mm, 50 50. Yeah. Sorry, go I on. think I was gonna say I like them because of the fact we have the music player. If we didn't have, I'd somebody, a friend of mine. I hate, I hate them. I hate them for bringing this up because <laughs> I barely like interacted with the dungeons at the time. They said to me the perfect anecdote: that Dead Souls is subterranean, and yeah. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I hate oh. this. I hate oh. this. That is that's a, that is a good analogy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> But thank you, we have an MP3 player, so I can just put on Daytona Let's Go Away, and then I just brain off. <laughs> and then you go away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, one slight suggestion. Like, I, I appreciate the idea that they're procedurally generated, because it, it makes the actual grinding process a bit more active, so you don't just, you know, sink in your chair, like, for example, grinding Cabaret in Lost Paradise or something. You're mm -hmm. actually actively involved. But I would like it if we had at least one particular dungeon that was static in nature so that you have an optimal farming route and then you can yeah. go to these procedural ones for the actual resources but that's basically it fun yeah. fact <laughs> thanks to speedrun routing uh much like dead souls is subterranean where the subterranean parts that were part of the story uh were fixed floors the first few floors uh i think it's like floor one and floor three of the first time you go into the um hawaii dungeon mm -hmm. they are fixed weirdly Ooh. enough Ooh. and like but then it's all randomized. There's a couple of floor conditions that apparently might not be randomized. Like, you know how there's one floor where you can just get Vagabonds? That one might be fixed to that specific floor number. 
like I think it's like floor 26 or something like that. I heard from a modder uh, something like the floors are not procedurally generated. They make so they made like a set number of possible outcomes for that, like how the floor is going to be, and they pick from yeah. those. Um, so it's based on seeds, yeah. Yeah, seeds. Uh, yeah, so that makes sense. interesting. Uh, according to the modder as well, um, so there's like, I think, tw like I don't know how exactly it works. But they said something like there's 20 picks for like the Hawaii and the Yokohama dungeons. I'm assuming per floor, I could be wrong. And then for the big swell, there's like a hundred. Mm. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> so there's a lot. Um, by the way, have any of you done the big swell yet? Half of it. I only like just started today. Okay. I, I saw the introductory cutscene and I'm like, wait, before I go into the anime adventure, I need to do all of the side stuff that I was avoiding, like sub stories <laughs> and reminiscing yeah. and all that stuff. And then I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm seeing, I've seen a bunch of cutscenes from it and it was so freaking funny. Yeah, I, I love the cutscenes. Um, yeah. I wanted to mention something weird that happened to me. So like a couple of you didn't start or barely started yet. So I don't know if, you, if it happened to you yet, but... Uh, I had an issue where my characters will comment as if there's an item, but there's nothing. And they will yes. come across rooms with open chests, and they'll say, oh, there's something, but there's nothing. Oh, yeah. So I don't know what's mm, up with I've that. I've not had that. I, I think that's partially because of the visibility. Because I've had similar issues in the regular ones, but that's basically because of the floor lights that they would cover it up. You can't really distinguish where the item is unless it's distinctly, like, in front of you and at the mid-section of the corridor. If it's in the corner and next to the light, you're not going to notice it. What about the open chests? Like, uh, you just I come across have... open ones. I, You've been I robbed. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, wait, that enemy that robs items off you. <clears throat> <laughs> it must have been <laughs> <in>. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, I was just going to come up for like a, a joke iceberg and say just I, ghosts exist in the big swell or something. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Mina <'Cause>... robbed everything. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love the big swell. Um, I do. I do wish Kamurocha had a dungeon as well. I feel like it's missing a dungeon. Same. Yeah, yeah. Because like, I think the... a, like anything. Yeah, Gokudoni earlier said, mentioned. Really. Yeah, Gokudoni mentioned like there's something missing from Kamurocha, or like he felt like a way similar yeah. to that. And I do feel like a dungeon would have done at least something to help yeah. with that. Hmm. Um, Even if it was just like the Millennium Tower or something. Yeah, they yeah. could have just reused the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, they could have made use of the new areas as well. Actually, you know, you know, with the we'll get to that later. But they could have made use <laughs> of the new areas. Yeah. Hey, listen, this is a spoiler cast. If anyone complains, it's in the title. <laughs> That's yeah, true. I, I, I was gonna say that like we do have it in the well, we will have it in the title. So it's like okay, what constitutes a spoiler? We go back to that discussion. <laughs> Yeah, 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 like, yeah. just, if you want to say anything at this point, just say it, say it. But, yeah. um... Shinada's in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I love that oh, Shinada yeah. PNG so much. But, yeah, I yeah. love that. Also Tanimura. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. I'm glad <laughs> they at least had something to them. I would have loved them to have, mm -hmm. like, an extended bit, like, you know, other characters get. Mm -hmm. But, I get it. Oh, wait, wait, fun, fun thing, that since we mentioned Shinada, and that immediately gravitated to baseball for me. So, you know that roof at the Yoshida Batting Center where you can jump off? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, funny thing about that, I I was trying to collect all the reminiscing parts, and I was like, oh yeah, this is quicker, I'm gonna jump off of it. And I got into a random enemy encounter. Same! Same! <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah, with really, boss yeah. one, isn't it? Bear it with is, me, it gets worse. Because I escaped it, it teleported me back to the roof. Yes. Jumped again. <laughs> Spawned it again. <laughs> it, it happened three times over, and then on the last one, for whatever reason, they were facing the telephone booth, and I'm like, okay, run the fuck away. I had the levels. I was just like, I don't have the time to deal with you. Come on, piss off. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I was I was underleveled and died. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to load my save. <laughs> I either loaded my save or I just managed to escape and I used the stairs again to go to, like, exit. <laughs> Actually, the, now that you're in that area are so strong. Oh, they yeah. are, yeah. Like you, you get introduced to well, introduced um, to Kamurocho. Like you can go there, and then yeah, like they're just way uh, over you in, in levels. You can't really yeah. do much there. 
everyone's at like above level 50 and the further you go north because i feel like that's kind of a standard for also isezaki it's just yeah you don't go north until you're ready mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. um now that we actually kind of uh talked about the whole spoiler bit we might as well talk about the bucket list now or should we save that for later like do we consider that gameplay or story well, it's like yes. side content really yeah <laughs> Right. Yeah, you well, can if... you can ignore it. I don't I don't know why yeah. you would. I mean, mm -hmm. apart from played the... like most of these games. Yeah, apart true. Apart from the two that are kind of forced into the critical path, or maybe yeah. three if you count the lifelinks, or wait, technically four if you count the. Wait, okay, there's quite a few of them. <laughs> yeah, if, you there think, is. <laughs> if you think it's a spoiler, you're wrong. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> this is a spoiler cast. We can talk about yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um. Actually, why would someone even watch this if they are not looking for spoilers? I, I they want to get like angry. It, I do like at the very least that we were like tiptoeing around that stuff. I feel like in terms of a community, the RGG community is pretty decent at not just going to people and going, Oh, this is a big spoiler, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Have you fought the fight in chapter 12 yet? Like, uh, oh. Oh, 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 okay. In the community, yes, they're they're all delightful, especially the three of you, because you are established content creators. I haven't seen a single spoiler from any of you, so I want to personally thank you for that, because it yeah. took me an eternity to beat the game. But... I would I would like to correct you on that actually, because in my review for Infinite Wealth, a couple of people oh. said that I spoiled <laughs> the game mechanics. So uh, please correct yourself on that one. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. But yeah, I'm just gonna say, I was spoiled on a bunch of stuff in Infinite, because, mm -hmm. for example, I was doing a Gaiden review, and someone thought it would be a good idea to comment on something from Infinite in a video that has nothing to do with Infinite, so oh, no. wh whoever you are, thank you for revealing that one thing for me. Also, the final <laughs> boss, because someone someone uploaded an OST that wasn't even the OST of the final boss, and put the final boss in the, <laughs> final th boss in the thumbnail, <laughs> I saw that too! Oh my god! <laughs> so somebody, somebody has done that for years with JoJo, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, where oh god. during a part four bit, the title of the video is a part six spoiler. It's like, oh, why? <laughs> this was way I'll... before like it was getting animated as well. It's like, why? God damn! I already know what you're talking about because I came across that. Oh wait, uh, <laughs> side point, uh, Leon, when you were playing Ishin Kiwami for the first time, some twat had. Blah blah is the final boss yeah. as the username. <laughs> I know. Yeah. There is literally like uh, I remember seeing them a couple of years ago on Twitch. Uh, somebody with a giant spoiler, the like end game spoiler for Final Fantasy 15 is their name. It's just like, oh. Oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. You know, I I gave shit to YouTube for a while, but then I realized that the, uh, the there's a couple of features that really help with that. Those being, you know. You can basically make it so that someone has to be subbed for a month, for example, to talk. And that's mm. what I did for Infinite Wealth, uh, the story playthrough. Um, if someone really did want to, you know, spoil something, well, I can guarantee they're not coming back for a whole month. Basically, the whole playthrough and more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that... on, on Twitch, I had to do, like, follower-only mode. And, like, I, mm. I did it for, like, 24 hours, and it's just like, man, this sucks. Like... I like I, I want to like something... like I want to say hello to new people, but it's yeah, like... same, same. Like yeah, I've had a lot of new people as well, and I'm I'm like, man, I'm sorry, guys, but like, there's a yeah, exactly a, one or two bad apples. They have to ruin for everybody, so yeah. we're just taking it the safe mm -hmm. route. Mm -hmm. Also, I I would like to blame YouTube, like uh, putting aside <laughs> the actual yeah. good thing that they specifically because of this. For some reason, people. I think they were from the US specifically, but they had some retailers that stocked the game like a week early, which, by the way, moronic idea, speaking as someone who worked in marketing for a while. Anyway, the for whatever reason, you know, you have a YouTube channel. It's natural that you're going to visit the homepage every now and then. And YouTube yeah. just went, ah, so you like Like a Dragon. Well, this <laughs> game that, has co that hasn't come out yet, it, it was still, I don't know, I think it was on the 24th, and the game was dropping on the 26th, and they were like, Hey, you must want that particular uh, sub story. No, the the major boss fight from ch chapter twelve. I'm sure you want to get that spoiled for you. Video game right boss there. fight database. Right in the oh, record. No. Oh, them also one that has. I think it starts with the letter S. They have kind of a black with a red symbol in the middle. Yep. Also, yeah. 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 <laughs> and and you can't yes. block their yeah, content. 
that's no. that's the biggest issue like i keep pressing no i don't want to see this but i keep recommending it you know what boys yeah. digital only is looking very tempting <laughs> <laughs> i got very very lucky to not see like anything the only thing i watched was like the first like summit trailer that had you know what we all expected to be like the big mid-game twist which was actually nice and early i kind of appreciate that mm -hmm. um, but like Man, every day I would go to my watch history and it's like, have I listened to any Yakuza tracks? Get that out of my history. Get it gone. <laughs> it must be yeah. no Yakuza in my history for like two months. <laughs> Even on Twitter, like it's it's just the algorithm. You have people, you know, just yep. talking about Infinite Wealth. Hey, did you know this is an Infinite Wealth? Like, please get out of my timeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bl block. Mute the person for the entirety. I, I'm basically Hideki Kamiya at this point. There were so many people that have muted. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Can't yeah. blame you. I had uh, Funk Goes On spoiled for me. Um, same. Aww. Yes, I mean. Same. Yeah, it sucked. Because, like, honestly speaking, Funk Goes On coming back probably made me the most emotional out of everything in the game. Yeah. Likewise, I OG, just... the, the mixing, the raspy, oh my, yes. I'm a music player, like, that killed me, yes. They, yes, they yes. could have just used the generic Kiwami 1 fight theme, but the fact they went all the way back to OG 1 is such a deep cut. The first oh, like yes. fight I got into in Kamurocho, I did a smackdown on, and I, I as soon as that was going through, I was like, wait, 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 <laughs> I got that, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's such a nice callback, like, th this game... Is for the fans in many ways, um, yes. despite you know the shortcomings. Uh, yes. There's just a lot about it and about the bucket list as well. That really, yeah. <laughs> it's such a difficult thing to talk about because the bucket list I feel like might have people mixed because Kiryu is a character. Uh, I feel like I'm going into story territory, but j just to talk about the bucket list, I feel like mm -hmm. Kiryu is a character where people will be pissed about no matter what at this point. Like people will be mm -hmm. like, okay, yeah. He should have died or like just been like it should have been the end of him in six and there are characters who want to see more of him and you know so on and so forth it just never ends so <laughs> like as long as they write something good at this point for me or like something that speaks to me emotionally i'm good with it mm, pretty much but okay we're actually gonna talk about it from uh in the actual story segment because this story left me feeling exceptionally mixed mm -hmm. and that's yeah. all i'm gonna leave it on right yeah, I, we'll I, get I, to the story actually very similar. soon go, go on for i was gonna say i think we're gonna be quite similar but like i i was like one of those people like you were saying that was vehemently against kiryu turning up after yakuza yeah. 6 because every game like after 6 craps all over attending like <laughs> yeah. Akiyama, <laughs> like, obviously we'll talk about it in a bit, but like, with the bucket list, Akiyama finally gets a bit of a resolution, which I'm so happy about, mm -hmm. but I really like the bucket list for humanizing Kiryu, and like, yeah. I'm yeah. someone who was vehemently against him coming back, but Gaiden was a fantastic kind of ending, like Six should have been. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, agreed. Gaiden yeah. just beautiful, and then I like, I like him in this game, I like his story, I like his, like, the humanizing part, and like, the whole, you know, hey maybe try living like actually open up like trust others like i, I like that arc a lot like mm. i think it's good now i'm done with him no more now <laughs> <laughs> gaiden was such an amazing game because like he could merge that with the arcus of six and he could say yeah that's one game <laughs> yeah it's I mean, the, the best thing about it is that without gaiden the infinite doesn't make sense gaiden had to undo the finality of six and mind you, I adored the ending of Six. I know a lot of people didn't, but yeah, th how well it executed on that in such a short game, it it's another thing that makes me wish for more Gaiden games in the future for yes. other characters. Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> so, we'll get to the whole, you know, the ending of Kiryu thing with the story of it, but as far as the bucket list goes, would you guys say overall you liked that edition, or did you feel mixed, or did you yeah, just like not it. like it? Okay. What about you, Kakudoni Uh Well, I definitely enjoyed it. The thing about it right now is that I haven't started any of the life links, apart from the one mandatory one in the story. Ooh. So right now, it feels like we have more of those snapshots, kind of, oh, I remember this. The perfect combination, data and helicopter. Instead of having, <laughs> instead of having like the subs, the memoirs of the dragon, if you will, it felt like we only, or I came across only five of those quote-unquote sub-stories for him. Mm -hmm.
but I'm sure that the lifelinks will actually, you know, really, really make up for that. So the, everything that I've seen right now, I've adored, especially because you can pinpoint the exact game, the exact moment in the story where it happened if you played all of the games and it's mm -hmm. beautiful. Okay, so two things. First of all, do you want us to avoid talking about the lifelinks then, in that, since you yeah. haven't beat them? No, go for it, by all means. All right. Well, okay. Second, secondly, oh, yeah. The fucking <laughs> co what was it again? The coffee and cake like allegory or uh, something like that? It was uh, coffee and yeah. chocolate. Yes. That uh, <laughs> that that made me fucking lose it. Like, <laughs> same. yeah, same, same. <laughs> that that uh, that that was uh, amazing writing, so to speak. Um, <laughs> I I loved it. I loved those bits. I kind of wish we got more of the actual, like, voiced stuff. Again, yeah. I would have loved to have seen Tanamura, be it new actor or old actor, who I'm really glad is, like, getting mm -hmm. back into acting again, which is nice mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. yeah. Shinada. Everyone's been like, yes. I, I, it's so hard to make Shinada appear in a new RGG game because, you know, it feels like his story was done with Five and, like, you know, the whole baseball that, yeah. aspect was such a like, integral part of his bit in Five and, like, obviously the overall finale. But it's like, it would have just been nice to have heard them. You, you know, know what could have been awesome with Shinara and Infinite Wealth? It would have been perfect. Maybe that's just the inner fan of me speaking, but like, Shinara could have showed up in Infinite Wealth just to like, talk to Kiryu a little bit. And then it could have become a summon with fun with Funcastic yep. hits playing in the background. That would have been so oh, cool. Hell yeah. Yeah, because some of the some of the lifelink summons that you get are brilliant. Yeah. Very, very brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I love them. So, um, can we talk about... You know what they should have done? Mm -hmm. With Shinada. Uh -huh. When Kiryu, uh, Sonhi, and uh, I think Saika's there as well, Nambo, all that, go to the batting cages as right, part of the yeah. story. Oh, yeah. 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 Why not? Yeah. Shinada's just there. Yeah. And he's just like, whoa, shit, it's Kiryu, hey, man. And then <laughs> yeah, Kiryu's like, like, no, I'm Taichi Suzuki. And he's like, no, you're Kiryu. And he says it really loudly, like when he says Daigo's the sixth chairman out loud. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that's kind of the weirdest thing. I think Nagoya isn't that far away from Tokyo. Like, if you look at the actual air distance. So it would make sense for him to just drop by, take a bullet train, and be at Kamurocho or whatever. He he could be with, like, a, like a school kid who's, like, learning baseball. He could be teaching him as, like, you know... Yeah. It's like a, like a conclusion of, like, you know, he's back in the game, but he's, mm -hmm. teaching, he's teaching folks how to do baseball. Like, and then they were just in the batting center, like, for a late-night training session. Like, simple as that. <laughs> Just yeah. let us know he's all right. He deserves the best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, they'll if... just kill him off screen, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, America. Speaking of that. Hmm. Wait, <laughs> we went to America. Uh -oh. He died of a baseball <laughs> overdose. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me how that works. He, he ate a moldy burger. That was the end. <laughs> <laughs> Living the broke life. Shinada. <laughs> yeah. For a while, the speedrun tech for Shinada, you know, his big final uh, fight in his part at the at the batting center, mm -hmm. not the batting center, the uh, the baseball stadium. The baseball uh, field. Yes. yes. The, back in the day, the speed tech was to when you get control of Shinada, you only have a couple of items. One of which is an earthworm. You eat the earthworm, it takes off half your HP. If you don't obviously like level up too much, that triggers the big QC that takes out a couple of enemies. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. That used to be the strap. <laughs> we used to eat the Damn. worm. The, the Yakuza Worm. 3 strat. Worm. <laughs> Worm. <laughs> you have found. Worm. <laughs> if you guys were to think up of a scenario where Tiny Mori shows up now, what would it be? In a bucket list, I mean, you know, uh, story. <laughs> Unironically, yeah. I think it would be with that one story segment that uh, the Lost Judgment characters turn up. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Just to be tantalizing. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, why did they show up? What, they were just there, it, like, hello. That's the thing, and I think <laughs> it goes back to what Velian was saying earlier, like, with the consistency of, like, the writing and what, like, you were saying as well in your video. I, I think that it's, and especially with Gaiden as well, I think that's RGG saying, this is the line being blood. It's, it's the line being blurred being gone. Like, this is the crossover. Yeah. Mm. This is it. Like, <laughs> that might be the only way for Judgment to... What if that's the only way for Judgment as a series to survive, is to do this crossover with the main series? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, mm -hmm. if Tanimura comes back in a Judgment game somehow, that could be interesting, but... Yeah. I mean, I've spoken about it in an early video. Well, it's been ages ago at this point. But specifically because of the nature of Yagami's detective agency, just imagine 
looking into what happened with Little Asia between Yakuza 4 and then the Sayotrad in 6. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I don't know, something happened. They went underground. People are missing, blah, blah, blah. There's so many ways that you can go about it and just be like, oh, you're a detective too. Fight against one another, preferably using snake style or whatever, but that's just me. <laughs> anyway, like, mm -hmm. they can implement it in so many ways because all we really know is that he's working as a police officer. Wait, he was supposed to be working with Data. Why the fuck don't we ask... Uh, sorry for <laughs> swearing, but why don't we ask Date? He, he, they were yeah. literally in the same car at the end of... Fo true, ah. true, true. Yeah. You know, with this franchise, it's sometimes it's best not to think too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there is a problem that I had with the bucket list. Um, it's so we're gonna. I'm gonna mention like a bit of a story spoiler, but um, <laughs> at some point, you know, they broadcast to the whole fucking world that Carrie's alive, right? <laughs> Yo, Remember that? Yep, yep. Um, Which, yeah, then it it yeah. didn't get reflected in some of the like uh bucket like some of the lifelinks which is weird yeah. to me because like some of them know i think i think there was at least one or two characters who did see the broadcast and they called it out and then everybody else I think didn't. those are the chapter i think those are like the last ones the chapter like 12 ones but like yeah hmm. the very final Could one be. for example should have seen that yeah 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 it's um, like it can't it can't interfere with the main plot is the issue yeah, it's it's kind of weird. Um, in spite of everything, though, like you guys said, closing things up with certain characters was nice to see. Um, and yeah, I do like that you get summons out of most of them. That that was awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, I just remembered something random. Uh, have you guys came across Asakura? Oh yeah, 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 the wrestler guy who's like from real life. Yeah, the YouTuber. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, wait, the wait, wait. guy who teaches wasn't, you moves. Wasn't yeah. everyone pissed that he was introduced? Like his, I think people on the Japanese side thought his acting was horrible, or they basically went <laughs> what the West did when Yongia was introduced. They basically really? reacted in that way. That, that oh, was the impression wow. that I got. I can see, I can well, see why. I mean, he honestly. makes reference to being a. Yeah. He makes reference to being like a content creator, so I guess he is one. Yeah. I think so like he he's definitely yeah, so. popular i don't remember the actual field but i distinctly remember comments being like his acting is so shit why is he here <laughs> oh, god damn because like he was he was the person like he, he was the first source of info of video info that we had for infinite wealth because he went to like mm -hmm. the rg oh, studios with that interview, tour yeah if you remember he's that yeah. guy yeah yeah, yeah he is yeah. didn't connect and, that <laughs> and, and it's like at that point i thought he was going to be this game's every where he was gonna same be, like Optional part. Yeah, yeah so. same. Who's just there for sub stories and you get a summon. Cool. Thanks. And speaking why of yeah, why, why was there no secret party member? <laughs> yeah. Oh right. I mean they, they couldn't really say that it was like, oh no, the time uh oh sorry, the drink would be off. You need uh, seven party members for seven, and then no, we don't have eight party members in eight. One wouldn't have made that, that much of a difference. Yeah. I think they wanted to maintain that balance of having five party members per party at all times when they start introducing the later ones. Mm -hmm. Have you guys heard how Jungi and Jia were kind of planned not to be in this game? Or at least not playable? It feels I could that way. Because that. Yeah. that also makes it so that if that was the case, Infinite Wealth or Yakuza 8 would have had eight playable characters, like seven. So like seven oh, had seven characters. Um, and you can see that in the gameplay itself as well, because like they both joined very late, especially Jungi. Um, yeah. I was wondering if it was a rumor, but I was told it was in an article. But I don't know where to find that article at the moment. Interesting. I I do think that, like, again, this will be story stuff. I do think there is slight balancing issues for the fact there are 10 characters. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't yes. do a good arc for everybody. Yeah. I mean, the gameplay obviously... balancing, though, it's pretty good. Yes, agree. Yes. Yeah, for what it's worth, um, they do play out in a fun manner, and a character like Jungi didn't get much time to shine, but at least the uh, drink links are there for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. It took <laughs> away head trauma. They massacred my boy. I know. <laughs> yeah. And divine, divine shots are nowhere near as good. No, it's yes. not. Thank you. It's terrible. No, my this God. is why I put him as Desperado. Get more gun skills, my boy. <laughs> that AOE gun skill that Desperado has, that's actually Oh, by the way, speaking oh, okay. of gun skill, um, his gun Kiwami move is much better in this game, isn't it? 
I think so. It's yeah. freaking way better. It mm. deals shit damage and it a lot. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's an area of effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty yeah. good. Um, I also find, find it really funny that in one of the drink links for Jungi, it felt like they actually had no idea what to do with Jungi. And, yeah, right. and here, here's the thing it became a Ichiban venting session, not a Jungi venting session. Yep. <laughs> I, 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 love the fa I love the fact. I love the fact how his entire story arc is basically I'm running away from home, mom. You can't stop me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it just it repeats. How how do the Komi Jewel even operate? Like, <laughs> if, you know, if you all lose Song He, you're all gonna collapse. Like. Yeah. To this day, we still don't know how the Tojo operates, so I think it balances out. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, True. I mean, my, yeah. my chat kept making memes about Jungi just sw swimming up all the way to Hawaii, which I found funny. <laughs> <laughs> that that that's how he got to one percent body fat. He was just swimming from Kamurocho, and that's why yeah. he made it so late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. Um, I think that's really most of what I have to say about the gameplay part. What about you guys? I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Yes? Do you want to say something? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, actually, wait. I, I did real quick because I, I saw a, a funny meme. I just thought about this as I left. Uh, Zhao's drink links is just like, they kick my ass on Yelp. <laughs> yes. <laughs> His drink link is the personification of the Hell's 2 song, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I love that, too. Um, actually... No, no, that's going to extend the thing too much. I was going to talk about all the drink links, yeah. but... Um, I mean, it's gameplay, technically. It is gameplay, yeah. Okay, we'll talk briefly about that. So, um, did Lad work in a similar way where the fifth drink link gives you, like, the blueprint to the ultimate weapon, basically? Mm, I can't remember. I think so. I, I, I believe know, so. To be honest. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Um, game, the game doesn't even tell you it gives you a special weapon. It's just like, oh yeah, here you go. He's a special weapon. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. just comes out of nowhere. Um, yeah. I do like how you get the tag move from the first drink link, not the last one this time. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. The, uh, the, oh god, I just remembered something with the lad. When you do New Game Plus, in lad, you ha like all the bond stuff, you have to do again to get access yeah, to all of the that's... jobs again, to get yeah, access to all sucks. of the perma. Yeah. Everything. You yeah. have to redo the bonds. It's so bad. And you have to get access to Aerie again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. But now you can do all of it with it. only a hefty price of fifteen ninety nine. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going <laughs> to talk happy. about that, too, later. Yeah. But <laughs> the good thing about this, assuming you pay, you know, $20. Uh, but if you pay the $20, then you can do New Game Plus. And then uh, I heard from people, if you start a, a New Game Plus save... You keep everything, you just have to do the drink links. So, like, the bond level stays, you just have to do the ah. drink links. But, like, you keep the perma stat buffs. Um, you keep... I think you keep the laser move from Dondoku as well. Like, stuff like that that was tedious in oh, sweet. Yakuza 7. I think you keep all of those. So, that's good. Yeah. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, quality of life. The fact that they don't lock your... I don't know if you should call it experience game, but basically the growth of the bond, they don't lock it at a certain level where it's like it can't progress unless you do the conversation here. Now we we'll just yeah. keep um, piling on and you can actually do all the conversations at once if you want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Right, well, the story is pretty beefy and I think this might either take less than we think it will or more than we think it will. <laughs> uh... No. I'm go I'm gonna say more. <laughs> okay, go uh, go for it. <laughs> We're here to listen. Okay. Wait, we're actually talking about the oh oh no that this is gonna be awful. <laughs> we're gonna talk about everything, <laughs> everything. But unlike okay. the gameplay, we're gonna start with the good. So let's take turns. Um, any of you start with anything you liked about the story? So like you can start by saying, maybe just in general what you think of it. Like it's is it good or not? And then he can talk about your gripes, or uh, actually not the gripes, just what you liked. We'll talk about the gripes later. Mm. Right. Who's gonna start? 
I feel like we're all too cordial. We're all just gonna sit in here silently and it's like, oh, you wanna go first? No, you, yeah. good sir. <laughs> all right, I'll 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 pick to help. All right, Fru, what do you think? I kind of like how with the story, we do move away a little bit more from the Tojo. Like, I do like that, you know, you have the Tojo Clan HQ gets obviously burnt down. You have obviously, you know, Majima, Saijima, Daigo doing their own thing. Yeah, they come back at the end, and yeah, it's itchy. I kind of like that about the ending, actually. I kind of like that it's very open-ended at the ending. Like, mm -hmm. all of this is building up, and I actually also dislike it for this exact same reason, so I'll discuss more <laughs> later. But I kind of like how they don't exactly, you know, the last thing you know of the Tojo is it's just Daigo, Majima, and Saijima on the roof of the Millennium Tower. Like, after they're going there to secure the future of the the Yakuza that Itchy's gonna deal with which is obviously gonna be a big thing in the next game but they don't go into you know what happens next we get that one month later thing and it's just you don't hear what's going on with the Yakuza like yeah. they're yeah. kind of like they're trying to deal with it I think Sega have unironically written themselves into a wall with what happened in LED like mm. and I think that they were trying to move away from it and they're also trying to move back to it a little bit it's weird mm -hmm. um but i do actually kind of like that open-endedness to that because that that will now allow them to do whatever they want with the next game there's obviously like you know the yakas are in hawaii for example yeah. um in terms mm -hmm. of the story and i'm fairly certain a lot of people will agree with this i don't want to go into it too much because we'll talk about characters in a bit yamai the real one. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Every instance with Yamai was fantastic. Yes, like absolutely, absolutely. amazing character. Yeah. Mm. Um, you I kind say... of also liked the fact that you know, Ichiban got to meet his mother. I'm a little disappointed in certain resolutions to this, but Same. I like the fact we didn't kill her off. Yeah. Good job. Yep. Yes. I, yes. I, that whole that whole car trip. And like obviously the stuff that happened in the Daidoji hideout, I was fully expecting she's taking a bullet. She's dying. Yeah, like yeah. they're yeah, just gonna intense. use her as emotional baggage and just they didn't. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. At what cost though? <laughs> just, <yep>. Oh <laughs> at that that I disliked. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That that scene I feel like is gonna be the crux of a lot of people's uh, problems with the with the game. That and you know, of course the yeah. ending. But, but yes, I feel like yeah. It's uh -huh. emblematic of the development, that's all I'm gonna say. Because you know how they mentioned how Gaiden was kind of conceived late? You mm -hmm. can tell that in the way that the story is structured. Yes. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can, you can like, after playing Infinite Wealth, you can tell Gaiden was made, like, way after everything yeah. that they did in Infinite Wealth. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know, obviously, you know, Gaiden is smaller. I feel like Gaiden was a lot more focused. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I liked I liked pretty much everything story wise. Like, I, I liked the story early on, but like when you hit chapter eight in Infinite Wealth, everything is just so much more focused. Like, and it moves yeah. towards that point. And mm -hmm. I think there are certain aspects that are good and certain aspects that are very bad and certain aspects that are. Why did you bring that up? Cough Ebina's, <laughs> like, you know, relation oh, to Itchy. That, like, that came out of nowhere, wow. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's>, and <laughs> it's never touched on again. Which I also kind of like. They didn't just go down that like alley of just you know, use your half brother, go fight him. But also at the same time, why'd you bring it up? I mean, mm, we technically yeah. did have that in the actual exchange that never freaking ended when we talked to him. But to me, the bigger issue is this is as Mexican telenovela as you can get. Compared to something like Joji Kazama, it's literally yeah. oh, he's your evil forgotten brother that's way cooler in every yeah. way. <laughs> I, we Jeez, didn't need sorry. to know that Arakawa got around a lot. We get that. The guy was amazing. <laughs> Everyone loved him. But like... Yeah. Why, why would they even do that too? Because I feel like they're just like, you know, uh, Arak Arakawa made such a big deal about how the only woman he ever loved was this person. And it's like, yeah. I, I no, also have a you son. Would, you would think, about. yeah, you would think the woman, you know, he, he wouldn't do what he did because he loved someone. But <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. No, he cared so much, but that one time he got frisky and oh boy. <laughs> Maybe yeah, he, he was held at gunpoint and, like, you know, he had to... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never this mind. This might be going a bit too far into the dislike <laughs> as well. I feel like this game tried to make a martyr out of Arakawa. In LED, yeah, sure, he was Itchy's father figure, but he was Arakawa the killer. Yeah. Like, all of that just seemed to disappear in this game and just, like, oh, he's idolized by the Akaza. 
Is he? Is he? Like, he was a little yeah. bit in LED, like, when you get to chapter two, but, like, really? Hmm. So basically, I feel like they didn't uh, do enough development for him, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. I will yeah. say that scene we got of him. Oh my god. I, I was going to say <laughs> yes, that right now. Yeah, it's pretty epic. <laughs> we, we need more scenes like that. Yeah, um, this is as old school as you can get. That's like fucking Ueno Sewa hit levels. That's, yes. you know, the stuff that you would see yeah. in actual Yakuza. Yeah. It was the Saijima oh, scene, but cooler. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, ironically, when that scene actually was killed playing him. out, I was like, man, <laughs> I want to watch Old Boy again. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just gave me those vibes. You know, I didn't watch much of, like, uh, Yakuza movies from Japan, but, like, it gave me that vibe, you know, even without watching yes. those movies. Like, it nailed yes. that theme so, so well. Um, actually, yeah, in terms of, like, things I also like, like, the game did not, the game did not pull punches when it came to its violence. When the violent yeah, like stuff yeah. happened, I like when oh. like Bryce turns up with that like the gun backfiring thanks to Bryce's god yeah. powers, yeah. like that hitting <laughs> that guy like right above the eye. I thought that went in his eye. Like I was just like, whoa, okay. Mm. You also have that Barracuda like uh, scene in the alleyway. I was gonna yes. mention that. Yes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was gnarly. <laughs> yeah, I do. Even the opening of the game, like yeah, oh yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the opening, yeah, it was really unique. I liked it. Yeah, I, I completely I, forgot about it until it came about like towards the very end. That's like, oh yeah, it happened. It opened with that and also a huge zoom into an ant at Hello Work. That, that felt yeah. so absurd. <laughs> yeah. That was the flex scene in this game. Yeah, well, yeah. actually, that is that yeah, is something that I really good. liked about the story, and I wish they did more with this. I wish they did more of it. They pulled a binary domain. They did scenes <laughs> with characters in English. Speaking English. Oh, yeah. I love that to bits. That's the best bit about Binary Domain story. It's just like when the two Japanese policemen are talking to each other, they have their Japanese actors talking to each other. Yeah. yeah. Which is also the weird yeah. thing about sub stories and magically Ichi understands everybody. <laughs> no, I, you know, someone. Sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say for, for, you know, for Bryce in particular, he looks American as hell. But like yep. his, his uh, speaking <laughs> is uh, something else. Yeah. I, I found that to be contradicting a little bit. That's the weird thing, because, like, I, did you all play with the Japanese or the English dub? Uh, Japanese, yeah. Japanese. English. Fair. Hey, nice. Shout out. Like, that's the weird thing. There are parts in the Japanese dub where um, Dwight speaks in English, but it's not Danny Trejo. Yeah. I had like, Danny Trejo. Haha. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, it's like, why did. You, do not, and I guess it must be because of, like the union stuff and like not being able to do like non-union contracts in the way that, like the Japanese version or the Japanese voice track does its like contracts or something. But like, why could, could you not have done Danny Trejo? I mean, mm. he's right yeah. there. That could have been a way. Case yeah. does both of hers, so they could yes. have theoretically done it. And yeah. she she's localized perfectly in like the English and the Japanese. Dub. So good. Yes. <laughs> Helps that some of the uh, English team are massive VTuber fans <laughs> yep yep <laughs> speaking Wait, of sorry. Uh, speaking of um well I, I know it's a very specific character to like choose but um what did you guys think of dwight overall as a character eh. i know you love him <laughs> yes i do <laughs> i i like the fact that he is a danny treo stereotype he is the exact yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. character that you would expect him to be. And I love the fact, because somebody pointed this out in my chat, because I had no idea this was a thing. If Danny Trejo is ever typecast as a villain, there is a thing in his contract where he must either be humiliated or killed, etc. And, like, the first thing that happens is he pisses his pants. Like, it's, it's just that. in his character. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> like, know about that either, but someone did mention it to, to, to me as well. It's it's so wild, and I I do think that whole you know blackmail over pissing his pants thing was a little weak, and obviously later on in the story we figured out why because he wasn't fully gone, and like I don't think any of us fully expected him to be gone the entire time. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact that they just went into a Danny Trejo character like that. Like, just the, the idea of Ichiban fighting Danny Trejo is kind of wild. I love that yes, for that alone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do we talk about another character? Like, like what what do we think of? Let's see. Wong To. I like him. I really do. So it's it's just a shame to see. Yeah. Uh, it's it's all comes back to that scene. 
Yeah. L he rocks up and he's like, hey guys, I'm here to help. And then dies. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yep. And also, it... like, the stuff with his son as well, like in the finale. where I like, did not expect like, for oh, them. Yeah. 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 But also, that doesn't go anywhere again. Yeah, yeah. It, we're coming back I'm for assuming him. It's some... oh, shit, yeah, I'm assuming it's coming back in the next game, but it's like, just for this, it's just like, hey, we forgot about his son. By the way, here's his son. By the way, bye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that quickly. It, it's basically the Yakuza 2 problem. We introduced so many villainous figures that mm. we didn't flesh all of them out. We could have done away with removing at least one of them. Because think about it. We start with the Yamai Syndicate. Technically, we do befriend them and all of that. But then you also have the Palakana, the Ganjo, the Barakuda, the Seryu clan. We don't need <laughs> this many people to finish yeah. a story. Yeah. But the set pieces associated with them, like, the, can we talk about the casino set piece with the Ganjo? Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm. Dear God, everyone looks stunning. It's that meme with Yuki and Kiwami too. Stunning, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you, it's that meme with Yuki and Infinite Wealth. She looks stunning here as well. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yes, hard agree. <laughs> But no, fully agreed. Like it, it uh, every every kind of set piece had a lot of love put into it. For this game, I think. I think RGG took on very much the complaint about both one difficulty due to the fact that they kept warning you, you know, you should be around this recommended specs for this dungeon, and then also the fact that like there were unique parts, like you all were saying earlier, were like the poison rooms, for example, and like, like the lasers. Like they just seemed to go a lot more unique. It wasn't just you know here's some copy and pasted ones or here's only free set pieces like mm -hmm. they put a lot of care and love into them yeah um the story dungeons in particular just look so cool there's a lot of like mm. very unique looking ones um and oh, hey yeah. in another universe we could have had a playable one too <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah <laughs> i do see him being that but like i do see a way for him to be rewritten to become playable and that would have been cool Here's the thing, just do the RGG thing, say so he didn't actually die, it was just a cover-up so the Daidoji could put him into safety, like, just, just do that. I, mean, I actually genuinely, just... like, with that cutscene, I thought he moved. Like, I thought he was, like, literally breathing in, like, the cutscene where, it, like, after he'd just been shot. But, mm. no. Yeah. M maybe he did, maybe it's a rubber bullet sting. We'll need to analyze it pixel by pixel. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> How do we feel about Bryce? In the next game, he had a vest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I could just pull anything. I mean, dude, if Richardson is alive, anyone can be alive. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You can't. Like, there's just no ifs and buts about it. That's a fact. I, that's Wait, still remember wild. memorial. Remember, that's technically everyone's gonna die if they had that RGG memorial in Japan. <laughs> so Ryuji's yeah. not dead, is what you're Great. saying? Yeah. <laughs> I think they are genuinely pushing hard to bring Ryuji back. The whole Gaiden aspect of like you fight fake Ryuji in like the arena, and then and there's then a sub -story, the yeah. sub stories. They they do not want Ryuji to be dead. Like, <laughs> what yeah. if what if Ryuji takes like protagonist role in a Gaiden game? Yeah, I I wouldn't mind that. Yeah, yeah. As long as like you know cool. it's it plays out well and it's fun, what, I'll take it. What what if the RGG online story gets? Uh, guided. Him and I, was I was thinking of that, yeah. I was thinking of that. Like, hell yeah. We would have also a third Shinada. Junkie Hun. And yes. yeah, Shinada. Yes. yes. <laughs> hell yeah. Like, the, the Ryuji story in Yakuza Online is a bit wild to the point that I can see why people would hate that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. shirtless Jingoda, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Peak. Peak. I still, like, hey. I don't know what they were thinking, but hey. <laughs> bring, bring Kanda back and just have him in a rubber ring. Speaking of Kanda, <laughs> Snowiest, and... yeah. <laughs> didn't you mention in your latest video about them, like, basically retconning Yakuza 3 at this point? Like, Lacolon came back, uh, Richardson mm -hmm. came back, and there was an another yeah. character, I think, from 3. But Mini is on his way, probably, and I wouldn't be surprised if Rikia is on his way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kashiwagi was the last guy. Kashiwagi, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Three characters <laughs> from one game came back. The, like, the, the, there has to be something to this. And I don't know what it is, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, In terms of like things we liked and going on for that conversation, the mm. first meeting between Taichi Suzuki and the bartender, like, <gasps> oh my god! And like, obviously, you know, the the memoir yeah. like, that they get eventually is just, yeah. it's respect. They know, they know from the first goddamn second they lock eyes, they know, and just the way that they play those scenes is just, ah, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. And then the karaoke scene was really nice as well. I loved yes. it. Oh my god. 
th th those scenes broke me. That last sentence of the memoir, like, maybe yeah. one day when you can reclaim your, we can share yeah. a drink, and then you look at the name of the trophy that you get for beating the game. Yeah. The, the, oh yeah. 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 They knew what they were doing with that one. Mm. Um, man, th there was. There was an actual, um, was it a lifelink or like something else with Kashiwagi, I'm pretty sure. Where... It was a memoir. Right, yeah. Um, yes. They talk about something that I rem remember like really liking, but I don't know what it was. Does anyone remember? Oh, God. Co cold noodles? Oh, yeah, cold noodles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that, that was so good. Like, here you're just being like, oh, I remember a guy like you, he used to like his noodles cold. I just love that yeah. so much. <laughs> Also, the pound mate for him is so good as well, due to the fact that, you know, it's like, it, it's set up like a yak as a front, he's chopping off someone's finger, but he's just making cold noodles. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> That's, it's clever. It's so good. It really is. Um, I did not expect for, what's his name? M uh, Matsunaga from Six to come back with, uh, what's right? his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, they <laughs> actually, sure. they have, yeah, they have new designs as well and yeah, all that. Too. They look cool. Like, like they definitely lost weight, but also why? Why are they? Why are they now like acting up like that? Like you're like down to earth in six. Now all of a sudden you're strutting around like you own the place. <laughs> the, the Yakuza <laughs> lifestyle and what it does to you. Right? <laughs> they went in too deep. And then Nagamo couldn't make it because his actor was cancelled or something. I, I absolutely <laughs> love oh, that right. in all the memoir shots of like Yakuza six as well. He is conveniently not in them. <laughs> <laughs> And then there is the, uh, there was the Kaoru one as well. What do we think of that one? I thought that ended quite abruptly. But I don't yeah. think what else, I don't know what else they would have done with it, honestly. Yeah, I did not expect yeah, well, at least they didn't just, mm -hmm. Yeah, at least they just, like, completely retcon her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, <laughs> it's kind of very bittersweet, considering that, you know, the whole stuff with Yumi and, you know, Kiryu with the Yumi ring, like, at the end of Gaiden slash Infinite mm -hmm. Wealth, and, like, knowing that Yumi was the one that he loved, but they still shared that tender moment, and you can actually see, like, from Infinite Wealth how, you know, the Kaoru was waiting. Like, like the consequences of, like, what happened in Yaksa 2, Kaoru was waiting this whole time. And mm. in, in essence, yeah. yeah, she went to America, but Kiryu never thought twice. Never thought about how, like, that kind of affected Kaoru. And that's tragic. Hmm. It's tragic because I feel like it has to do with the writing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um Right. Um I was gonna ask, what do you guys think of the Polycana cult? I love them th thematically. I thought oh. they were really good. Like just the idea yeah, of a cult. So cool. Yeah. Yes. I, the idea. What I... uh, hmm? Go on. It's noised. Yeah, go on. Oh, <laughs> oh me. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah. gonna say I love the part where they're like invading the streets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the whole thing with them as well, like where they're so radical and so extreme, is so uh, probably one of the best things about them. Um, and I just love how much bloodshed there is with them. Yeah, uh, like there's you get like a really big hint, unironically, with Wong To when that one guy jumps out of the, the window. Yeah. I don't know how his the hands got untied, but like you notice it for a fraction of a second. The way he died is with the Palakana salute. And it's, it's like to the point where I knew oh, it's Bryce. Damn. Yeah. And the nice yeah. thing is with Wong To and that bit, you still get that reveal at the end of the chapter. So it's mm -hmm. like it's only there like a good like 10, 15 minutes before the actual like reveal anyway. But it's just it's right there. Like he dies with his hands in the same position as the prayer. And it's like, oh. Wow. I oh. didn't even notice that. Yeah, I didn't I did not even realize that. Yeah. yeah. It's actually kind yeah, of insane because Infinite Wealth, I feel like, reveals the main villains very early on compared to the other games. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of refreshing. Yeah. Although yeah, maybe honestly. it's all the trailers that were released beforehand that weren't very, you <laughs> <Yeah. know. laughs> I mean, for Bryce, it felt like it was going to be obvious because of his, like, first appearance with the Ganju and then obviously, you know, the fucking wall art behind him, excuse my language, with the wings and the god allegory and just like, <laughs> all right, here's uh, the RPG, JRPG, we're going to go punch God in the face. Yeah. Oh yeah but I do love that his magic was just I have a grenade. And yeah. Good magic. <laughs> yeah. It works. 
Dude, I fucking love my chat because like they just memed on that scene like holy grenade, <laughs> boom. <laughs> <laughs> It's so silly, but like that fight, yeah. unironically, I do think is good, like the perfect mix of goofy and just awesome. Because, like, yes. Bryce. Yeah, dynamic intro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, theme's sick as well. It is. Yes. That, there's like that... there's like three dynamic intros in that fight. Yeah, because yep. it's, it's three <laughs> yeah. parts, and like, honestly, it's, it's a long fight. It's a nasty fight. Do you want to know the fun fact? Add speedrun route for it is going to be wild. One of the things, and this again goes back to the quality of life stuff that I really wanted gameplay wise, there is no checkpoints in LED in any of its set pieces. Mm -hmm. There are an infinite wealth. And this goes towards Ooh. the price fight because that fight has a checkpoint between every wave, which means that when we get to the final wave with Bryce, we're going to take an intentional death to reset the Palmate counter and get a free full heal because we'll just use Ooh. money for that. It's a so really 400 IQ play, that. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty smart. <laughs> oh, speaking of, game overs don't cost as much now, do they? Yeah, no. Uh, it used to, I want to say it used to be half for like a full Yeah, recovery. it used to be half your money. Yeah, yeah. which was insane. <laughs> yes. Like, you might as well just load up the, the save at the last save yep. and just do it. That's what I did. Again. Same, same. So that's uh, something that I did appreciate. Um. Mm, yeah. Hmm. I guess we can go back to talking about Ebi now again. So some of you just feel mixed, like outright, yeah? Oh, not mixed, negative. He's, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna go on a whim and say this is the most disappointing final boss for me since Yakuza 5. Damn. <laughs> and ironically enough, Infinite Wealth, you know how I mentioned it's Yume Kiwami? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this this entire game to me is just Yakuza 5 for a new generation. The issues that plagued Yakuza 5, but not to that extreme extent, still plague this game. Hmm. Yeah, I can but... I can see where you're coming from there. Yeah. Oh boy, <laughs> wait, please you go on for Abina. Maybe talk about some of the positives because I am going to. <laughs> the... Ooh. Okay, I liked his English actor. It was oh, Daniel yes. Day Kim, gonna be right? the only one to say that. Yeah, it was yeah. Daniel Day Kim. Yeah. Every time I heard it, I'm just like, it's Johnny Gad from Saints Pro. <laughs> I need to hear yeah. it. <laughs> as far as, like, Ebina's character goes, it's hard to... Like, Ebina is a character where I think no matter how much you like him, it's like... Actually, wait, no. Let me, let me rephrase that. Ebina is a character that's hard to kind of say is going to be, like, a favorite villain for you or, like, for anyone. Because, like... It feels like he doesn't have much character. His character is basically an embodiment of an ideal and nothing else, right? His whole character is yeah. just basically, you know, I want revenge because, like, you ruined... Not... Wait. Actually, wait, no. I want revenge because this one Yakuza guy ruined my life and I hate the Yakuza, but I joined the Yakuza and I worked with the Yakuza, but also I hate the Yakuza. Um, Daddy issues. Yep. Daddy issues, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it, yeah, j just because of that, it feels like Ibina himself doesn't have a personality. And I think that's the core issue with him as a character. I think um, the way they wanted to set it up is that he was supposed to be the antithesis of Ichi. <laughs> like, he was supposed to be the opposite. Yeah. And like, again, that yeah. whole, like, half-brother kind of aspect. Which makes it even weirder that the person that deals with him is Kiryu. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like they should have just just had buddies join up for both parts. Mm. Yeah. I do kind of like I that. just... Go on. Hmm? Oh, I was going to say, I just thought about this. What if instead, like, Kiryu fights Bryce as his final boss instead, and he goes to Hawaii or something like that, because I thought, like, he constantly looks at Lani and just thinks of Haruka yeah. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, you'd think he'd be like, I'm going to protect her and, and all these other children at this orphanage. So fuck you, old man, beat him up or something. Yeah. <laughs> but then, like, <laughs> instead of Ebina, they easily could have just made it like Sawashira was the final boss or something like that. And his whole thing was, yeah. they changed him slightly in the story where he was trying to go against what Arakawa wanted. And Ichiban's just like, no, how dare you? You know, you looked <laughs> up to him as well. And then that's like their conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of just, hey, I'm going to do the whole, like, light and dark brother thing that we did in the last game, but was Hmm. Yeah. Also, weirdly, 
I think the it shouldn't have been AG the itchy oh God, to, AG. to the police station. Uh -huh. I think it should have been Ebina because of again that allegory with LAD, where you know yeah. he didn't get to do it with the young master. Now but that he you mention it, yeah. it with Ebina. Yeah, 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 true. Okay, can we talk now about AG as a cat? Like, holy shit. The guy does the most <laughs> yeah. evil, depraved shit in, like, the club. Leaves. Yeah. Next thing you see of him, he's, like, a homeless guy. And, like, th True. there's... What happened in the yeah. middle? Like, wh where's yeah. the deleted uh, scene? Yeah. Yeah. We we get it at the very <laughs> end where, like, Itchy sums up of just, you know, yeah, when the whole Bleach Japan stuff took off, like, you were the one that took the brunt of it. Which, yeah, sure, but wh why weren't we told that? earlier yeah like <laughs> but we like if we were supposed to piece that together i don't think anybody pieced that together yeah yeah mm -hmm. Eiji became a sentient being and just said bon voyage to the writers <laughs> <laughs> god that whole thing by the way like every time he shows up after the evil reveal the way he leaves is just bon voyage bitch yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i i hated him from the club and i was looking forward to like a satisfying fight against the guy but just nothing happened no yeah it's kind nothing, of the same yeah. with ebener and like the the brother thing of just nothing happened it feels like yeah, exactly. there's a chapter just missing in the game or it feels like they got to a point where wrap things up because like led had 15 chapters and this game has 14. like yes. it just feels like something got cut somewhere yeah maybe we'll get like... an expansion yeah I feel like we this game shouldn't have had Kiryu as a protagonist. I think it would have been better for, let's say, for them to have three or four games in the Ichiban saga where he just occasionally appears as kind of a cameo, helping out, kind of like the floor is, just helping you progress the story at some point, and then actually give a Kiryu-centric story to end the saga. Because mm -hmm. it feels... So they try to do so many things here with the story, and the pacing just takes such a horrendous beating because of it. Because they're trying to tell... Mm -hmm. A moving story with Ichiban, and then they're trying to incorporate Kiryu, and then, oh my God! Wait, I'm gonna stop myself from that rant. That's a completely different story. Just, I love everything that is here, but it should have been separate games because you can tell they're struggling to connect everything. Mm. Yeah. My only real problem, personally, is just Eiji. Uh, the whole thing with Ebina, like the long lost half brother thing. I do think is dumb, but it's not as dumb as AG. Like, AG literally feels unfinished. He's just not complete. Yeah, literally. Um, like, yes. th there's something missing in the middle. And, like, I don't know if we're actually going to get, like, a DLC chapter. Probably not, but that would be funny. Yeah. Because, um, <laughs> like, what are they going to do in that chapter? I just can't see anything happening, even. Yeah, um, I also, like, I think it's interesting, like, as a slight little tangent. We don't know, like, obviously we're expecting, like, the continuation of this in, like, four years' time. This is one of those times where we do not know what RGG is up to next. Yeah. Right. I did actually talk about that in my stream as well, because, like, when they... When you have a mainline game coming, it's really exciting, but you kind of... Like, how do I say this? It's an excitement that's predictable, but then once that that's mm. out anything is on the table you know what i mean it could be yes, a judgment yes. game it could be mm. another samurai spin-off it dead could souls be a remaster too. dead souls yes. 2 yes <laughs> would actually like a dead souls 2 no lie yeah likewise full same <laughs> mm. hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> like a anything is possible at this point and that, i do think that's one of the most exciting things about infinite wealth having released and just finished wasn't it a few years ago like three years ago the in an interview, RGG said they had a new IP that they were making. I feel yeah, like that's a Mandela it. effect at this point. It's always there. Like yeah. e every time people talk about it, it's like, hey, hey, isn't there, isn't there a new IP RGG talked about? I feel like I heard this this year, last year, the year before the last. Um, but I don't know if they're actually working on anything. I I guess there'll be a a summit towards the end of this year. Yeah, maybe, like, hmm. maybe. Yeah, I do think we'll. We're gonna hear something at the end of this year, considering you know the pacing of, or the pace of their releases. Yeah, like I, I'm somebody that was like, you know, why a Sega releasing Infinite Wealth and Persona Three in the same week? What are you doing? Especially like two months after Gaiden. But <laughs> considering the Infinite Wealth seems to be the biggest launch of any LAD game, and Persona Three is the fastest selling Persona game, what do I know? <laughs> they sold a million yeah. each, yeah. didn't they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'll insane. Say... I'll, Some I'll gods at the Sega marketing team. 
Yeah, that, I was gonna say that literally because it's not about the when they were released. Though technically, you could say that because it's the end of the fiscal year and all of that. But really, it's because of the marketing push that they did for this game. I'm not sure about Persona because I don't follow it, but with Infinite, they went all loud it's mentioning a specific three-letter streamer that may have been a poor choice but <laughs> everything else like you can tell and just in our cases like i got an early copy for example that they they really reached out to people mm -hmm. who they would think would do a good job rather mm -hmm. than just being you know oh you have a big following let's put you as a trooper card if you catch my drift mm -hmm. yeah. they were more deliberate they were more and also, they had a bunch of money on their hands, clearly, because dear God, this marketing was everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the New York, yeah, uh, the New York uh, Times Square, I think it was. Times Square. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was insane. Well, it's hard to avoid any story stuff, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I had people who told me they got Infinite Wealth ads on my videos. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. But yeah, that, like the marketing definitely took a, a step up from. Um, LED, which that already also had a solid marketing, I think. Because, mm. um, yeah. like, they got George Takei, they made, uh, like, um, kind of meme shit posty videos, like with Nancy, I think, um, yeah. and Kaiji Tang. And they had, like, a whole bunch of interview videos, I think, up as well uh, for, the, for the cast. But then here, yeah. like, they reach out to influencers, they just have a lot of commercials. And it's... It's nice to see that. It's it's nice to see, um, like a marketing campaign for an RGG game, uh, pay off. I'm assuming all of us here got like an early code, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Well... Man, what the fuck? Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh no! Correction, because the the actual PR team is centered in UK. That's the reason. Mm. It, it, was was it was for yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just move to shit. Europe. <laughs> yeah. Just say you're from the UK. The amount of people that say, oh, are you from accent? Yep, I, Shut up. <laughs> I, I get a bunch of comments, people calling me British, and I'm like, okay. Right, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's, the that's the last thing you want. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, just, just mention Sega from Australia referred you. I remember you mentioning that in your Kenzan video. Because <laughs> they're, they're dead. They've been dead for many years. <laughs> yeah. Did Sega you guys... from Australia. Didn't you guys get like? I'm pretty sure you guys got special treatment for what was it? The Alcazar Four. He got like a a whole steelbook exclusive to Australia. Oh. <laughs> Did we? Yes. We got the steelbook. The for like twelve people bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get my hands on it on eBay, and it's like three hundred dollars, and I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Wait, the black one or the white one? The white one. Oh uh, yeah, no, we didn't get that, did we? Yeah, no. Um, the the black one was in Europe in general, like the UK, yep. uh, Germany, France, I think. But the white mm, one was only yeah. in Australia. You had to import it. Damn. Um, hold on, let me see. I actually have the thing here, but like, let me find the picture. Uh, because of four steel look. And they also had uh, an edition called the Ichiban edition, and it came with oh, like yeah. a, it came with like a ramen bowl and a calendar. Um, for Yakuza Four. Uh, yeah, for Yakuza yeah. Four. D do something yeah, terrible I saw today. That. <laughs> do something. Oh, the old push. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that yeah. MA. Yeah, I saw that uh, ramen ball thing when I went to like a retro game store ages ago. Was I it overpriced? I don't remember. Mm. But I just <laughs> remember seeing that and just thinking like, wow, they actually sold the games in this country? I didn't even expect that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how it feels that way for surprisingly a lot of places, even though, well, you know, like... There was a small following for this, but it kept gr growing, and um, I still remember when the Sega forums for Yakuza were active, there was a person, oh, yeah. there was a person from my country in that uh, board, and I, I was like, wait, my country is the size of a cardboard box, how can you exist? <laughs> same, same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have the problem where they just ban every game that just has, like, a little bit of blood in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't believe you all had an Atelier game get like an R18 plus. I'm just like, what? How? <laughs> Both of the Yakuza games are rated 18 plus. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> um, where were we? So, <laughs> are Talking we? Ebina. <laughs> Ebina, yeah, Ebina, right. Um, I feel like we did talk about 
basically at, at the bare minimum of the ending and the story in general. But I feel like we might have glossed over a few things that I can't think of right now. Um, well, I, I can think of one. Go ahead. Because when we were talking before about, you know, that scene at the safe house. Oh, go, yeah, yeah, go yeah. on. Go on. Because yeah. it, it's, it's another thing that's like clearly like Garden was written after Infinite Wealth because, or after they had finished writing Infinite Wealth, I should say. Mm -hmm. Because Hana was just like, hey guys, oh, I'm dead. And then Kiri goes, ah, oh, but... <laughs> Yeah, I. And yeah, it's, and it's like, Kiri, did you play Garden, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad about that. I haven't been that mad about an RGD death in a long time. Yeah, Fun I was fact. just sitting there when the remembrance thing popped up, and I'm like, Sh okay, surely he's gonna say something. What? That's it? From what I heard in the community, there there are people who just blame Chitose for all of that, but it's also like, oh god, oh, do you bullshit. do you blame her or do you just yeah. blame the writing or like, uh, like you know what I mean? It's it's a messy scene. She was the scapegoat, basically. Yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah. When it should have been Ag, but okay, who's paying attention to the story? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Now that we're on that, uh, Leon, hmm. I mentioned how I had a major character that spoiled for me. Oh yeah, which one is it? It was Hanawa. <laughs> and then oh, I came to that God, point. Man. <laughs> and I came there and was like, okay, now we're, we're going to have a good, you know, K Kiryu breaking down. No, he was my friend. And he didn't. Know, call back to yeah. five. And yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah. It, it became Literally. so bloody apparent that one... Okay, I'll put it this way. The dynamic between Kiryu and Hanawa is the same in Infinite Wealth as it was at the beginning of Gaiden. Like, just handler, employee, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. by the end, you have a bit of that. By the end, they clearly knew, okay, this is going to be the story of Gaiden. And you have kind of reminiscing, you know, he was one of the best that we had, blah, blah, blah. But it still doesn't hit that emotional high. Like, the, the entire exchange in the finale of Gaiden, it's like you forgot about all of it. And yeah. saving him from the fucking Watase family. Nothing. Character development doesn't yeah. exist. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Anawa on purpose gave Kiryu the like the Hawaii mission so he can like tie up loose ends with the uh, you know the Yumi memory and that yeah. was really nice of him and seeing Kiryu like say something about that like react to that after you know he died would have been nice but yeah we didn't get anything like that um yeah. did he ever even thank him for that I can't remember uh you not kind of in the so. reminiscing point I guess because initially he said he was just my handler, and I was about to throw my controller through. <clears throat> <laughs> but, but then yeah. he actually goes, "No, Chigo, he was actually a good boy." And then it ends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if, I think we talked about it already, but I do think Wonkto was wasted <laughs> because, like, <laughs> yes, oh uh, yeah, I... such Quite a cool character. Saved only to die, basically, yeah, like Snowy said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, even like the whole. Ganjo, Ganjo, I forget how to pronounce it. They just sort of are like, they're just in the game, and it's like, this is one of the three big dogs here in Hawaii. We're going to have to deal with them for the rest of the game and whatever. And then you get to their boss, you beat the boss, and it's like, oh, here we go. We're going to go find the true boss of this mafia. And then it's Pelicana, and then it's just like, okay, yeah, it's just Pelicana. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. never mind. Yeah. <laughs> we, still, yeah. We, we still don't know who the leader of the Ganjo is, because Wongto was just a commander. Oh, oh was yeah. it? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that that was I... one. Of the, th that that was what I was gonna mention. We could have done away without one of these groups, because by the end, also Palakana. You could have just had Palakana there, but they really wanted to repeat Yakuza Seven, like the Wall of Muscle with three groups. Oh, of course, the first half mm. of Infinite Twelve has to have three groups as well in Hawaii, mm. and then the second half just being Yakuza Zero, but with worse pacing, because you just jump mm. one chapter with one character, then another chapter with another, and the most the, <clears throat> the way they end each chapter is so infuriating. Like, it's literally cut, okay, let's go to the other place without actually connecting it. Yeah, yeah there's only one point, which is like, is it chapter 10, like from 9 to 10, where they actually connect it with that phone call? Like, that was nice, but that was like the only time. Yeah. Each Otherwise, just it's FaceTiming just... around a bunch of dead bodies, like what? <laughs> literally. <laughs> oh my, wait, can we talk... Can we talk about the, the fucking how Cheetos revealed that she was Tatara? Switching into that voice next to two dead bodies? Uh, Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it must have been a scene written like outside of the safe house. But maybe, was, like, yeah, maybe. In there around all the bodies. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, like right on the stream. Just... 
right on the stream. I was like, girl, read the room, <laughs> please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, she could have, they had the laptop there. She could have just said, okay, look, I'm logging into an account. Boom, it's Tatara, rather than, hi, yo, dead people. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe this is something that, like, normally you wouldn't find it funny, but I kind of found it hilarious. Uh, when, right after you beat Wong To and, like, you... He, it get, gets revealed that his son is like gonna, gonna be kidnapped. The way they showed the babysitter just sending this child off to an island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that killed me. Yeah. yeah. Just <laughs> waves. <laughs> bye bye. Oh. Yeah. Like, holy. I think that was kind of like playing into that whole spy bit. Like, you know, when like Itchy mentions, oh, it's like 007, which I'm surprised like that was a direct reference. Yeah. But, like, it, oh, I think yeah. like it's kind of like that kind of like old ass, like spy esque thriller kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah, whole the whole segment even. with uh, the ganja felt like that. Mm. Yeah. And I liked it, yeah. Um. <laughs> but man, like, there's some unintentional stuff in this game, I think, that were funny. Like the Palikana. Again, like the final fight with them, uh, maybe it wasn't meant mm -hmm. to be funny, but I, I do find it a little bit humorous. Because um, Bryce, like, tries to look at himself as this, like, holy, holier-than-thou figure, but, like, he's just an old guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Y you I'm know so what he is? Hmm? Y you know what the dude really is? Bryce yeah? is just a, a do-over of Nozakirio in every way. <laughs> We think of I him as a godly it. figure, we have, you know, mysticism and blah blah blah, we think yeah. that he can... It's literally that thing, but you just immediately go into, oh yeah, false idol, gun, politician, blah blah blah. Just combine Nozakiryo and, I don't know, someone like Munakata or whatever, and there you have it. They even yeah. did the same thing with the wings. Oh, yeah, yeah literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, like, we've talked about a lot of these aspects around Bryce, I have to gauge your opinion. The shark and the squid. Ooh, yes. Okay, listen. The the the, <laughs> the merge fight with Dwight and the shark. Oh, I love that yes. so much. Yeah, it's yep. so fucking good, dude. It that's one of my favorite fights in the entire game. Same, same. Likewise. And then the shark fight solo. I liked it, but you know the Dwight fight was better. The yes. squid <laughs> fight yeah. took me places I did not expect to go. Literally. <laughs> I yeah. okay. Wait, have have any of you played Devil May Cry three? Yes, long no. ago. No, the Leviathan. The, yeah. It's literally the Leviathan boss fight. You have three things that you need to defeat. Only the center <laughs> one is important, and you're taken away into your random like the entirety of that level in DMC three is just going inside the Leviathan, and then yeah. the squid does the same thing, just swallows you up. And I literally played DMC three or replayed it before Infinite, so I was like, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> That was face. <laughs> it's just so wild. I had so many people in my chat say, you know, yeah, because it's jumped the shark. I hate this. This is awful. And it's like, <laughs> the, the series jumped the shark and Yakuza 2 with the Golden Castle. Like, there is whimsy and, like, it's. I think what people hated was the fact that usually, like, you can chalk this up to Itchy's imagination, but they have an entire conversation about it afterwards. Like, that yeah. happened. That yeah. giant squid. Ah. And it was a better villain than Ebener as well. I'm gonna put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah, c can I just say you mentioned jump the shark and no one said haha, very funny pun. <laughs> so, right, yeah, of course. <laughs> Two shark butts. Okay. Uh, I just there there's something about again the like there's this crazy cult that fucking breeds a giant squid and like a shark kinda. <laughs> To be like the guardian of the cult, I love that idea so much. Yeah, um, yeah it's pretty funny. It is. <laughs> yeah. And like, I think the shark wasn't even like you know, the, the cults in particular. They just knew about oh, the shark. It it's Bryce's pet. Uh, they mentioned oh. specifically it's Bryce's pet. Oh. <laughs> okay. Which also, yeah, does make a lot of sense the fact that you know he's got that like parading around the island, like protecting it. Like, yeah, yeah. They they did talk about how there's like a specific route you uh, you have to take if you don't want to get attacked by it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and to turn I love how like on the way there from Dwight it's like turn the light off on the boat because it goes after the light and we go back there and the lights are still on. Like y'all yeah. y'all. It's funny though Dwight just exploding in the distance. Yes. I love that oh, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my's like wait for it. Boom. <laughs> yeah. 
By the way, can we talk about Yama like that one scene with the MI, like with with the with the uh, hostess ladies of his? <laughs> yes. Yeah, he likes what he likes. Like, I didn't know you're chill yeah. like that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fact as well that they actually throw him healing items in the middle of the fight as well. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah that yeah. pissed me yeah. off so much. It is annoying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the midsection, you can tell that so many characters will just have healing. Wongto has it, that fight with Yamai has it, fucking yeah. the last boss can also heal. That, <laughs> yeah. also, the now, now we can say it because we're in the story segment. Mm -hmm. The one part where Eiji sends out a bunch of dudes after you and you have the poison machines. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. No. <laughs> no, that, no. No, no, no. That was awful. No. Yeah, fair enough. I, I, I don't have the energy. <laughs> It's, it's okay. You've shown plenty of that energy already. <laughs> I think. Speaking of Yamai, though. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say, freaking ages ago, Yoko. Uh, I almost said Yokohama. Yoko Yama <laughs> was like, "Oh yeah, bro, this is like the new Majima," and I thought, "Man." No way, like, shut up. It's not going to be like Majima. And then he ends up actually being like a really likable character. I was like, oh shit, maybe yes. he's Majima. He's going to <laughs> yeah. be honest. I, I like that allegory of him being Majima as in the foil to Itchy. Not with him like going through, you know, the mad dog stage. Because I yeah. don't think any of us want a mad dog like with Itchy. But like, I would not be opposed to Yamai being that Majima-esque foil to Itchy. Yeah. I think yeah. it would work well. As long as they don't make a Yamai everywhere system, I'm good. Yes, God, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we fought him five <sighs> times, so like, you know. Wait, actually. Yeah, dude. It, it was four to five times, yeah. Yeah, I, he's, the, he's the boss you fight the most, because you fight like, him. It, three out of four times. Like a, it's an intro. <laughs> yeah. Actually, oh, yeah. Yeah, because you fight him outside Kiryu's hotel. No, it is five times. It's yeah. Itchy and AAG, outside Kiryu's hotel, mm -hmm. forest, club one, club two. It's oh, yeah. Times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Which well, and mean? then there's also uh, oh, unless it's just in the story the demo. Oh yeah, it's like um, it moved. The story yeah. demo technically and then there had... was yeah. Go on. Yeah, yeah. Him like outside Akane's house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, literally. Maybe that's what that. they meant. I didn't do that story demo. Maybe that's what they meant when they said that there's like an exclusive story scene or like whatever. It has oh, a yeah. bunch. Of... No, it actually the conversation between the Daidoji and Kiryu at the church doesn't happen in Infinite. Also, the info oh, yeah. dump where Kiryu talks yeah. to an informant looking for Ichi, again, doesn't happen in Infinite. Play the oh, demo yeah. if you haven't. You have oh, extra yeah. content. And then, I haven't done the story part. Huh. D do yeah. it. And then, then it pulling over has... and like, yeah? each one needs to go get water. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And yeah. also the conversation in the car ride is like slightly different because they add more <gasps> in the full game. Mm. When he said, not unless you want me to flip this car over, they removed that line. Yeah, the... yeah. that's that's the back rub uh, conversation. I think like each yeah, is like, yeah. grateful to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know I love when demos have differences like that. I think it's cool. It just makes them fascinating. Um, I appreciate mm. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there anything else? Oh yeah, what do you guys think of? Okay, the whole like Akame reunion. Like. I know Ichiban is so attached to Arakawa, and that, like that's part of his personality. But like the way he just goes, "Oh, you're the woman that my boss loved," and that's all. He just he can't see her as his mother. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't think I like that. <laughs> mm. There's so like many especially when he's that. yeah, especially when he's so open about having two dads. He has a soap plan dad, and he has his yak as a dad. Yeah. Like, I I do. Like how that, you know, one scene plays out by the beach when they get emotional. Th that's really... Yeah. Like, th the way she holds his hand and she's like, Oh, you went through so much, so many hardships and... Yeah. That was so good. And that was so good. ashes as well. Yeah. That's why I thought, I, that's why I thought she was going to get killed off. I'm glad she didn't. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. like, you can have her come... Well, I say you can have her come back for the next game, but that's, that's another thing about, like, the ending of just, like, you know... Lanny almost turns out to be a MacGuffin. Like... No, we need is. to, like, yeah, we need to save her, like, from Bryce, and then it's just, at the end of the game, ah, right, she's gone back to Palakala. Cool. <laughs> sure. Sure. Bye. This, this entire story has so many MacGuffins, literally. Mm. Like, Akane, yeah. we only really have, we have the car ride conversation, one at the safe house, and then the one at the beach. That's, oh wait, also one 
The, the only bit of characterization that Lani gets is the conversation at the homeless camp with Akane. That's it. Yeah, true. They, yeah. They're yeah. paper thin. And wait, I'm going to go on a... Sorry about this. I need to go on a pacing tangent because this is mm -hmm. inherently the biggest issue around the game. Okay, so tell me if the following sequence of events sounds familiar to you. Okay. Right. Uh, Ichiban will go, Man, I need to find Akane-san, but I have no idea where to look. Let's hit the town and hope that we bump into something that works. You go into town, you're forced into a random side activity that has nothing to do with what you're doing. You have a tutorial, blah, blah, blah. By the end of that, you will conveniently bump into the one person on the entire island that could progress the story. And by the end of that progression, you're no closer to finding Akane than you were. Rinse, repeat, until someone tells you, oh, she's on a boat, I'll take you there. It results in the entire story just neandering because you have no idea what to look even though you have a great information network, you know locals, and yet no one knows how to progress the story for the entire first half until it just happens. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, you said that's supposed to resemble something. I tried to think, but I'm not sure what it resembles. Is it like like another game you, try, you tried to say? No, it's literally just that the, the entire... The game is forced, so rather the story is forced to neander around, not have mm -hmm. anything major, so that you can slip in all of the side activity tutorials. Right, yeah. right, right. It unironically, that's it, the first thing that came to my mind was before you get to Wong To and you get the casino. Mm. Like, yeah, it, it's that whole you know we gotta figure something out and then we waltz around and it's like, wait, why don't we just try and find the casino? Like, yeah, <laughs> and then we get the fight at the top right part of the map outside the samurai themed restaurant and it's like, yeah, it's exactly the same. Mm. I think they pull that kind of story beat like four or five times. <laughs> That's the issue. Otherwise, I wouldn't have batted an eye because every every game has that. But it's not like okay, now you're introduced to uh, Crazy Delivery. Now you're introduced to Dondoku Island. Now the Sujimon. Now the uh, you know Poundmates. Now the Segway. Now, <sighs> like imagine mm. if they did that with the arcade mini games. Imagine like oh, Virtual Fighter Three. That's yeah. the exact thing that we need at this point in the story. <laughs> when you put it that way, I'm shocked they didn't introduce uh, Psycho Snap, like you know, like right. in, in a oh, mandatory God. way, oh, right? God. Yeah. <laughs> or the um, strip club. <laughs> oh yeah, that they, they, that too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they could benefit from just keeping that as side stuff potentially, but also, God, I don't know. There, there could be some stuff that is important to introduce to you. Um, Sujimon battles. I don't know if I would call that one of them. Dondoku, like, I would say maybe, because, like, that's a way to make money, and, um, they, they Agreed, could... but they could have cut that down in yeah, terms of the times you're on Dondoku. Yeah, yeah, it could have been, like, just yeah. one day, if even one day. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um. Because, like, no, and that's know, the other weird thing, is, like, you get back and everyone's just like, oh, we don't know where you were. Oh, well, we just thought you went off somewhere. Like, <laughs> the, what? Hey, they I'm were back busy after, like, three days. Yeah. Oh, okay, hey. <laughs> they were editing the video for three days. By yeah. the way, I, th you didn't have that much footage where you need to edit for three days. <laughs> Miss yeah, professional yeah. VTuber. Yeah. Bunch of fucking <laughs> no, no. Just... Her explanation was, I need to make it good as look as possible. Like, we need to edit as much as possible. And it's just like, dude, are you making a Call of Duty compilation? <laughs> <laughs> and then they play a bit of it, like, later on. And it's just it's just the video that they took. Like, yeah. 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 Did they even need also, a good mic? Ask... I was gonna say, as content creators, how did you get like fifty thousand views in like a day or two? Like, could you give that secret to us? I guess she used like AG's like AI network or whatever to boost yeah. like, <laughs> views or something. But like, she put hashtags, hashtags into the description. She put a pug face into the <laughs> thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then, last but not least, she employed a very specific site that told you with AI, oh, this is the thumbnail and title that will actually give you the most. Just subscribe to our blah 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 service. It's also part of the DLC. And that's everything that happened. <laughs> she also had a yeah. sponsor and like she made use of the promote feature that where we, like where you pay money to like put the thing <laughs> on the front page. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Can, can you imagine? Oh my god, the ad break. The Ichiban says, I'm from the armpit of Kamurocho. And speaking of armpits, thank you to today's sponsor for helping <laughs> to shave our armpits. Manscaped. Here. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, maybe one day I'll, I'll also get sponsored by Manscaped. Fingers crossed. So, oh, you will. <laughs> oh, wait, uh, w one question. It's not really related to Manscaped. Um, uh -huh. How do you all feel about Tatara? 
I can see. I... Okay, I can see why people would blindly hate just like, the idea of a VTuber being in the game, but I don't think that's a bad thing because RGG yeah. has always been about reflecting like modern day trends, and VTubers are yeah. just that. But yeah. I think the execution could have been better. Like you said, you know the the, the that one room scene with Hanawa, you know stuff like that <laughs> could have been done better. Yeah, <laughs> I. I did like, I, I fully agree with that. I think that's to put it more succinctly than I could do it. I really liked the ending of that. Mm -hmm. Like, with, yes. like, should say turning off the V2 avatar, because it's kind of just like, you know, yeah. there goes your career. Mm -hmm. Like, and obviously yeah, she goes off and, like, becomes the Fujinomiya, like, actual, like, chairwoman, but it's just like, that is her saying goodbye to that persona. And, like, I actually really mm -hmm. like that turn for her character arc. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Speaking of, speaking of, the whole thing with her becoming CEO, is that a way of them saying, okay, goodbye, she's never coming back? <laughs> I, yeah, go to America. I feel oh, like she's they She's gonna go just, to Europe. <laughs> I yeah. feel like with Shitsa say, she's just gonna end up bored, bored and join anyway. I feel like that'd just be like the kind of thing she'd do. Mm. Yeah. With her character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, I'm just wondering about something. Uh, are you, like, good with the time, uh, Sonovius, or do you need to go uh, to bed? Oh, no, that's fine. Okay, okay. Um, mm, it's all good. I was I was just gonna say with uh, uh, Tatara as well. When I when I went to Japan back in 2022, I was like kind of shocked, but at the same time it makes sense how many like VTuber things there were everywhere. I just yeah. see like yeah. Uh, yeah. all yeah. these VTubers I've seen in YouTube and stuff, just like posters, billboards, merchandise. There's just shit everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was pretty funny. That's like whenever she'd do a stream, it cut to like. The people watching the stream and it's just every single person in the street is on their phone and they look up and it's on the big tv and i'm like fuck off yeah yeah that wouldn't happen yeah. that's and that's definitely an rgg thing yeah. Oh, yeah yeah but hey she has five million subscribers maybe maybe oh, it's realistic whoop -de -doo. Whoop -de -doo. okay that's also a part of the plot that i think is like a little paper thin but i get it ag not changing the password on the account Bro, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, wait, hold, hold, the, hold the phone. The Did they use an actual AI when Chitose said she's not going to be Tatara, but we have I was Tatara Moon wondering about that, too. Yeah. So they that's did. The, that's the implication. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, you tell me if you agree with this. Tatara is the only reason that the story can happen. Yes, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah, because she's and, the initial setup. Because it starts it, like the, the whole thing starts with Ichiban losing his job because of her. Yes. Yeah, but but then remember, if the story can't progress without Tatara, not uh, putting aside the actual oh yeah, a plot device like saying Yuma at the end of every scene in Yakuza Five, the bigger issue is that remember the whole deal about Adachi and Ichiban employing a thief to steal something so that you could prove that. The company in question needs security services. If someone came up to me with that bullshit plan, I would have called the police on them. Like, we stole <laughs> something from you. Please get our services. And the entire story revolves around, okay, you need to make dumb decisions so that this VTuber can actually unravel them and get the story to move forward. Same thing with the Gmas. Someone conveniently recorded it and sent it to her. Like, without her, the story can't progress. And that pisses me off so much. So you're saying, like, there's a lot of, like, basically a chain of coincidences that happened at the beginning like more them... more than anywhere else <laughs> and and that's because i i keep uh comparing it to yakuza 5 because they focused more on amazing set pieces rather mm -hmm. than the lead up to them mm -hmm. but i feel like in infinite there's more of a scope there the actual the, there's so much substance to each moment that happens in the story but getting from point A to point B is still the biggest issue here. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I, no, I, I, I think fear, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. Because, like, playing through the story, it's a huge game, of course. Like, that's a fact at this point. It's a huge game. Uh, you would think um, you would get lost. Okay, let me ask you guys this. Did you ever feel like you were lost with the story, like, as in comprehension? No, I think it was no. very simple. See, Maybe yeah, that's the weird thing about this game. It's a very big game, but somehow the story is not hard to follow. And I noticed that in my playthrough. Like, I think it can be explained in a way where, like, it's probably like Gokudoni says, maybe it's because of the pacing and, like, 
the constant inter introduction of content and th and how that basically takes a lot of the playtime. Um, but in in spite of that, it's not really hard to follow the story. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I mean, I was just sat here thinking, and this might be controversial. I don't think much happens. Like, mm. I think it's more character-driven than story-driven. Like, the very start of the game is very story-driven, but, like, everything kind of slows down when you're in Hawaii until you pick it back up with Kiryu in, like, Izaki Jincho. Mm. And then it's all very Kiryu-focused. Mm -hmm. Like, mm. the start of the game feels very Ichiban-focused. It doesn't feel like Kiryu's taking over the game, and then by the end of the game, it feels like a Kiryu game. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. I saw and comments, just... like, or, like, chat, um, some people were saying like they felt the game had no story to begin with, but <laughs> I, I think the problem here, like I can see how they feel that way, but I think the problem or the issue or like the, the, the reason they feel that way probably is because compared to other games, this is a much more emotionally withdrawn game in a way, even though there's the yeah. bucket list and there's Kiryu, but at the very least on Ichiban's side, he makes it clear at the beginning too, like... He's gonna look for his mom, but he doesn't feel much for her. Um, yeah. mm. So maybe that's like the core of everything that we might have a problem with. Um, I think a lot of us were expecting a more emotional ending, probably at least you know on both with both characters, not just Kiryu. Mm. Um, w would you say Kiryu had the better ending, or Ichiban did? Kiryu. Ichiban. Oh, Ichi Ooh. oh, really? Huh. What about you, Actually, can I change to Neva? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Well, I mean, Kiryu gets to obviously see Haku again. Mm. Yeah. So that's good. Is it? I don't know. It's just, <laughs> there, there's just like, I kind of feel like with Infinite Wealth's Kiryu involvement, it's kind of like they just sort of thought, okay, listen, we want to do like a better send off for Kiryu. Mm -hmm. So we'll just be like, hey, Haruka, here you go. You can give him, like, a hug, and then he dies. <laughs> Something yeah. like that. Jeez. Uh... It's... I think the... Like, I think that they were too scared to kill him off. But I also think yeah. that, like... I, there's this... It's kind of the same as the whole Hanua Morinaga thing at the end of Gaiden, where people not realizing Hanua is Morinaga. In that, like, I've seen so many takes online of... I'm so mad Haruka still and Kiryu still don't get to see each other. What do you think her being in his hospital room meant? Or what do mm. you think that Haruto saying, where's grandpa? Like, they've obviously met. And like, I yeah. can understand yeah. being upset that we don't get to see that. Because that would have that would have been the emotional fucking tug that would have just made it absolutely amazing. Mm. But yeah. they absolutely know, like, Haruka knows he's alive. Like, yeah. they know. Well, man, and like she'd just be on whole... Twitter and be like, "What the fuck, my dad's alive!" Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> like even in Gaiden, they're just like, "Yeah, we we all know you're alive. We 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 don't we don't know that bullshit. Like we don't." Uh, yeah. You know. But <laughs> and like the whole scene of Kiryu at the very end, like people being very like confused about you know he's in the chemo room. He's getting treatment. Like yeah, he's absolutely decided at last he wants to live. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. yeah. And like, he's obviously like, obviously like I've, I, I'm very invested in this because like I lost my grandma to cancer like last September. I've seen how quickly mm. it can like turn someone and like how like mm. very quickly it can make someone look like Kiryu at the end where, you know, they look a bit of a shell of their former self. But yeah. I think this is the way that RG wants to move on with him being alive, but not being a main force anymore. I think mm. he'll be there yeah. in the next game as like, kind of like a, Itchy will have a moment where he's really down and depressed, kind of like, you know, with the whole, like, mm -hmm. Arakawa stuff in LAD. And I think they will have him as a cameo point at that point to just get Itchy back on his feet. No kind mm -hmm. of fight, but just mm -hmm. that kind of, like, you know, that mental role of, you know, everything that, like, he's, like, investing in for the future of the Akaza, like, it'll weigh too much on him. And then Kiryu will just have to, like, you know, give him that scene. And I think we will mm -hmm. get a scene of Kiryu and Haruka at that time. Like... Mm -hmm. The ending but, definitely does have more to it than you would think, because yes, that's also why I didn't immediately form an opinion, and I was like, oh, fuck this ending, or like, oh, I love this ending. Because <laughs> uh, I've seen people who assumed that Kiryu refused treatment, and he's on his way to, you know, um, uh, death store, basically. Die. Yeah, yeah and, totally. and they thought that uh, Haruka and Haruto, like, either met him or they didn't meet him. 
Uh, like, there's a lot of things to kind of talk about with the ending. They don't show you. They try to tell you, but, like, it might it might not come across to everybody. Um, and I do love that there's room yeah. to debate, personally, because mm -hmm. it keeps people talking about that kind of thing. Um, but, like, the same thing you said, by the way, Froob, about him deciding to take treatment and basically keep living. I saw someone talking about that on Reddit as, like, a... A response to you know the uh, the debate of that um i actually don't know what was the response to like i, th I think it was basically yeah. a response to people hating that the ending right yeah it's like saying oh he didn't just decide to die he's actually trying to do something after you know going through the game and meeting all these people and going through all of what he did in this game which there is a message to be had there and by the way speaking of messages just to kind of backtrack a little bit Ebina, I think we... Okay, we don't feel mixed. Uh, Goku Doni hates him. But... <laughs> uh, yes! Like, for the most part, I think people are mixed on him, like, generally speaking. Yes. But, but... W when I saw, like, the post-fight cutscene, I, I just... I was like, okay, you know what? This is not so bad. Maybe yes. it's just me. But, like, just the way seeing Kiryu, like, instead of, like, trying to put a tough appearance again, trying to force, like, a guy to see things his way again seeing him just break down and like just beg this guy like please dude yeah. i'm sorry for everything that happened to you but please try to move on uh, something about that just hit different for me i love i feel like that is the allegory to kiryu finally getting it like what everyone's been telling him for this entire game of like you know live i feel like that's yeah. him understanding mm. yeah Maybe it's him trying to also, like you said, l like prevent Ibina from letting that consume his life and just mm. move on. Like Kiryu is also trying to move on. Ending up in the Tojo clan car park with Aiza. <laughs> yeah. Um, Still waiting. <laughs> I just... Oh boy. I, I think, you know, despite the mixed reception of the ending, there there is some good in there. There is a message. Agreed. And I oh, do love that. There's a lot of good in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I do appreciate uh, what they were trying to say with uh, um, with Infinite Wealth. Um, I, I really feel the bar scene with all the characters. I mm -hmm. feel like there's half good in there and there's half bad. Mm -hmm. When they start talking about... Like, I love Zhao's entire monologue. I love that guy so much. <laughs> but like when they start talking about Sashiro, for instance. Sashiro is another one of those, like, again, like another one of those just like not really dwelled upon like next plot points like kind of like with like Ichiban taking on like the mantle of the Yakuza mm -hmm. like is Sabashiro dead? Is he alive? Like you know? Not alive. Yeah. yeah. And like <laughs> is, is he coming back again? Are we gonna do it again? Because we just had <laughs> we just we did the thing that RGG really fucking loves to do excuse my language of just <laughs> giving everybody a redemption arc. It's Hamazaki yeah, yeah. all over. Yeah yeah. Yep. Like, yep. <laughs> You've I've got heard, like, I've heard I, from I get someone, it. and I think that Sawashiro's like arc makes sense because he mm -hmm. loved Arakawa, mm -hmm. like one yes. of the many many people that fucking do. But like, it's just one of those things where at some point you gotta leave someone to be a villain. Yeah, but yeah. in this yeah. game, at least Sawashiro makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes. At the bare minimum, I do appreciate that someone like Dwight was un unapologetically, you know, scummy. Yes. You also have yeah. Rice. <laughs> But I do think there is definitely an increase in that. And I did also talk about that from time to time. It's um, aging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he should have just stayed the scumbag. Like, yeah. I don't know. Jeez. I, I think, you know, the Reddit thread that I mentioned earlier was also addressing the agey thing. Um, they said something along the lines of, like, uh, Ichiban saw Ryo Aoki, or not Ryo Aoki. I think they were talking about Ibina, trying to compare Ibina to Eiji, and like he's trying to prevent him from going that path of just like losing himself, and that's why he did what he did. But yeah, I don't know. It's also very I, convoluted. I still find it. Hmm? I was gonna say I still find it funny with Eiji. Uh, it's just like Ichiban doesn't really interact with him that much. And then he betrays them, and then it's just like, oh yeah, every single thing wrong that has happened to you so far in this story is because of me. And then Ichiban's just like, no, but I see good in you. And it's like, what, do you? Why? <laughs> I think that is probably the worst facet of Ichiban's character, and the one that RGG is pushing the hardest. 
of like mm. him being the polar yeah. opposite of Kiryu and just being all like you know like friends of anyone I am a shonen protagonist like uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're going Saijima and Baba all over again oh god I just remembered oh, something no. I remembered something uh, one reason uh, that uh, I also forgot about that uh, Ichiban did what he did it's because the Arakawa family is the one who screwed Eiji over. It's a very yeah, small detail. Guilty. Yeah, it's a very yeah, small detail. Yeah. But that is mm. maybe why he did what he did. I don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe. I'd, I'd say they did a better job with Eiji than they did with Ebina. And that's not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that. <laughs> Can I just say as well, heck whoever threw that bottle at the end of the whole Itchy taking Ebina to the police station. Oh, I actually, yes. I thought that bit was like, apart from the fact that DMCA'd all of us. I really liked <laughs> that bit. I, I felt, I thought that bit where like that, that absolute ass from the men's magazine, like beating up Itchy, I liked that bit. I got that bit, you know? He literally was just taking it all. He was taking the brunt of it. And like, mm -hmm. he Didn't wasn't got a single hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and just, yeah, like I, I liked that. Also, like, I was hoping internally the entire time Itchy would just return the favor and just go on voyage. Yeah, and... same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tenacious fist. <laughs> <laughs> Heck, whoever threw that ball. Oh, but yeah. I do have that. There's one. There's one character that I feel got very unceremoniously demolished from LED to Infinite Wealth, and this might be quite controversial. Sayako. I yes. do not <laughs> like what they did with Psycho in this game. Because, I did like, see people talk about her as well. Yeah, I definitely see where you're coming from. But yeah. what, what, what would you say is like... Wh like, wh why would you say she was demolished? So the whole <laughs> the whole love plot device became the entire thing for Psycho, and it's something that we have seen in this series for so long, even with Kaoru. Like, uh -huh. her entire arc was just Itchy's confession. And mm -hmm. yeah, Itchy's confession was absolutely stupid. Like, he should never have done that in a million <laughs> years. It led to a very good chapter one up until the one-year time jump. Mm -hmm. The whole yes. Sayako leaving him on read was so <laughs> unlike her. Like, yep. it it was it was kind of disgusting. Like, her entire character arc just became a Mary Sue. Like, mm. it was yep. terrible. Like, I... Even Sayako would not just leave Ichi on read like that for a year. Not with everything they've gone through. Like, mm. she indeed was strong. She was independent. And just here, she was relegated to that. And her everything was just dealing with that surrounding bit. Even Ichi kept going on about it. Like, I remember Yokoyama saying, like, ages ago, like, the love plot won't take up, like, a lot of this game. Yeah, it did. <laughs> like, it was always there. It was permeating the entire time. Anytime Sayako was there, it was permeating with her as well. Like, and like, the whole bits where, like, they didn't deal with it in the plot, where it was, like, holding in the background, it's just like, you kind of screwed over Ichi the entire time. Like, unfairly. And that's that's such an, a character assassination for Sayako. And it's so unfair as well, because a lot of people will use that against Sayako, despite them obviously building up to this really dramatic bit in the ending with Itchy and Sayako, which again fumbled the bag. Like, <laughs> I get yep. it, Itchy's an absolute idiot, but like, I don't like that confession anymore. Like, the whole the start of it was great. And then the whole, like, the whole play it off the last t-shirt bit was just, you just erased it all. Just in that one moment. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> like it's, it's shonen, literally. That's it's yeah. as shonen as it gets. Speaking as someone who yeah. spent an exorbitant amount of time on the medium, you've seen that trillions of times over in every yep. high school romance comedy. Yeah. Like mm. what what happens now? Like what happens in the next game with Psycho and Itchy now? Like like it's gonna, gonna be gonna left on red for five years. <laughs> yeah, right. Like yeah. It, oh. It's frustrating. I just, I'm, I'm sorry. Just, I really liked Psycho as a character in LED. I thought RG were moving on with like strong, independent female characters that they've been needing to do for a long time, mm -hmm. and then they just screwed over Psycho. But on the other side of things, Songhee, who, bro, I love how they, uh, her being a Kiryu fanboy despite being a Jingwon man member is just amazing. I, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's one party chat with her where uh, Kiryu asks, Oh, you do you want to go to karaoke? And she's like, Yes, I'm going to go get professional lessons, and only then will we get to sing. <laughs> yeah. 
There was also a thing, uh, I think the first drink link with her actually, once you finish, Kiri walks away. And she asks the, the bartender, oh, how, like, how did I do? Was I nervous? Did I show any oh signs of weakness? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. perfect. And yet, and yet within her own story arc, she is still, like, strong and independent. She is the leader of the Komi Jewel and the leader of the Liu Mang. Bro, how, like, how, have you seen drinkling. Have you seen how she stood yeah. up to Saijima? <laughs> yeah. Right? Oh, that yeah. was beautiful. Like, yes. Oh, my God. Wait, I can we that. talk about the Jima's fight? We of haven't course. mentioned yes. it. We, yeah. We've not mentioned them yeah, at let's, all. Let's talk like, about it, please. Oh my... Who, Where who do we start? start? Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> best cinematic fight RGG have done. In terms yes. of, like, gameplay. Yes. Like, it, it's yeah. also story, but, like, in terms of gameplay, absolutely. Yeah, when, actually, when, like, when the stream hit or whatever it was. The quick time event on its own was amazing. And then when the world flips... Oh, oh yeah. my yeah. god. Having... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Sorry. Just that. The, the fact that you finish off each and every one of them in a beat em up fashion with their respective boss teams playing with images yeah. around. That, that's. I, I've been debating on maybe this is the best boss fight that I've seen in gaming. Like, that's how mm. much it impressed me initially. Like, yeah. Okay, now. Also, I, the, the, the boss team, Impregnable Triangle. By the way, who named it that way? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was going through the OST before, like as soon as it dropped, but before I reached that point in the story, and I came to that song and I just jumped and like, what in the name of Igavania is this? This sounds like exactly out of Symphony of the Night or Dawn of Sorrow, and oh my god, the neoclassical elements! I've been playing it on the guitar ever since. It's so perfect. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't do some like remix of their themes or something. Yeah, yeah, which is like a completely unique thing. Would have been nice, yeah. <laughs> I'll say, though, I fully expect it for the fight to be for, like, a, a cliche reason once again. Oh, like, Kiryu, let, let's test, like, you know, the the power of your newfound allies and see if, like, they're up yeah. to the task of protecting you. But it was way better than anything I imagined. Like, Kiryu just fucking goes there, like, hey, guys, I need your help. <laughs> After, you yeah. know, everything that happens in the previous games. And then they're like, okay, you gotta be fucking shitting me. And then they just, like, you know, they, they get <laughs> rightfully upset. And... As Kiryu walks away, he does, like, basically passive-aggressively say, Okay, I, I see coming here was, a, like, a, a mistake. And then yeah, that's when that. they get pissed, yeah. It, it's Majima's reaction, like, after the fight as well. He looks genuinely shocked. Like, yes. He oh, genuinely looks sad. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so good. That, that don't you dare leave line, even in the English yeah. dub. It, it was actually even better in the English dub. God damn, that broke me. Yeah. Yeah. That was so refreshing to see, because, like, you remember how in the ending of Yakuza 6, Saijima and Majima were both probably just holding in their emotions, but, like, when they heard about Kiryu's death in, in the end of 6, they seemed bothered, but, you know, not, like, super emotionally, at least not uh, on the outside. But you could tell they were bothered. But then in this scene, it feels like the culmination of that came out, you know? Yeah. Yes. Like, in the ending of 6, they were ready to go to war with Yomi. Like they, yeah. they were gonna go yeah. just just because I uh, love that. Kiri yes. Died. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and also the location of the fight was beautiful. I love that they made yes. like a whole new oh. set piece. Yeah, it's a cool area. Yes. The snow like, um and everything. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm kinda like I I I'm kind of conflicted. Like the second that the, the game says, you know, the Kiryu says, you know, I gotta go talk to them, the game very, very, very vehemently says this is not going to end with words. You should be prepared. <laughs> and I think that's an overreaction to chapter 12 of LAD, unironically being chapter 12 here as well. Mm -hmm, but I also yeah. think it goes into that point we were talking about earlier about how you go to Kamurocho to quotation marks, get ready, and then all of a sudden you deal with the Yakuza 6 substory girl and Koyuki. Mm -hmm, like, it, mm -hmm. you, you are ready, and then it just goes, eh, maybe wait a bit. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so <laughs> weird. Again, it's that pacing. Yeah. You know what's even weirder? Or maybe not weirder, but just funnier. When they show that there was someone watching them and it's the fucking truck driver of all yeah, people. Yeah, <laughs> right! Like, and no and then one he gets, Yeah, and then he gets blooming, like, quoted on the V2 Tatara thing, and it's just like, <laughs> okay. Sure. It, it, it's oh it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No. Okay. Wait, that's a completely different tangent. I'll leave that if we ever mention Ebina again, because... No, we please go ahead. More about yeah, yeah. Please yeah, go ahead. No. <laughs> uh, you're ready for the ultimate rant on this yeah. freaking boss fight? Yes, <laughs> by all means. 
Okay, let's start off. There's nothing original about him. The only thing <laughs> that you can take note of is that he wants to end the Yakuza. We've mm -hmm. seen so many people with similar motivations. Doing it again to a lesser extent doesn't mean much. Number two, he's just an off-brand mix of Aokiryo and Iwami. Even the whole thing of how the story ends, where the value of the fight doesn't come from the fight itself, it comes from the way Kiryu deals with the aftermath. It's not to the benefit of the character, it's to the benefit of Kiryu. The, he, he is more of an amalgamation of traits than he is an actual character. It, mm. There's... Oh my god. The, it's cheap. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they try to frame him as a threat in gameplay... Because it's like every attack that he does is an AoE, he has a healing move. That's such a cheap way to be like, oh, I've been hiding my mo uh, my potential this whole time. I've been holding back. That entire meme is just So Aizawa? <laughs> worse. I, I, I can't believe I'm actually going to praise Aizawa. This is worse. Because <laughs> at least with Aizawa, we've seen him in combat. And yeah, he couldn't uh, go against Kiryu or Saejima, but yeah, barely anyone can. But here you meant to tell me that this twat, whom we've only really seen stab someone from off screen, can suddenly push off and like Zhao and Song He and Namba. I was gonna say Psycho, <laughs> Psycho just sits Psycho there just because there. Yeah, oh. she she's a pillow for Kiryu. That's literally it. Yeah. And yeah. the whole Oh my god. Wait, 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 no, 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 wait, wait. This time she was a pillow for Son He. <laughs> Correction. Oh my apologies, yes. <laughs> oh my god. Like, and okay, th this is probably the biggest issue with Ebina for me. The putting aside the whole oh, half brother, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. he's emblematic of the biggest issue that the franchise needs to solve after this game. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that they'll keep running in circles. Because if you remember in seven, when we had the whole dissolution happen, the first thing that happened after the dissolution, the group banded back together into the Tokyo Omi. After that, we go to Lost Judgment. What happened with the remnants of the Yakuza? They formed RK. RK yeah. Organized crime isn't going to stop existing if you just remove a structure. The, yeah. ironically enough, Ebina had the right idea. You need one structured, cohesive whole to keep everyone in check if you want peace, if you want to move away from the Japanese underworld, mm -hmm. which they're likely not going to do because the way it is right now, we're just going to see a repeat of, oh, this is a new Yakuza clan that's rebranded and they have mm -hmm. a new moniker and thing and we'll just do the same thing with no emotional investment into the actual institution. Mm. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm terrified of what they'll do after this because it mm. can get really repetitive if they don't build up a new clan that will be kind of the Omi Alliance for the Ichiban Saga like the Omi Alliance was for the Kiryu Saga. What you That's said, what you said, is exactly why I think they don't need to do the investment in those new clans or like gangs as much as they do in the characters, because yeah. clans can just come back again and again and again. It, it's not going to be like yeah. super super different. But what could be different is the character motivations, the characters themselves, why they do what they do, uh, what happens in the story, who they lose, and you know so on and so forth. Uh, I think Lost Judgment actually did that super well. Like, you had the RK, and I feel like compared to the Tojo clan, I don't, like, I was gonna say they're not as involved, but they're pretty involved. Uh, but I feel like Lost Judgment was on the right track with that one, because, you know, you have a new organization, and they did make a point to bring them up again and again, but I feel like the game focused more on the characters within within the narrative itself, like, you know, Yagami, Sawa-sensei, um Kawana, <laughs> you know you know those characters uh but i don't know um wait you, you want to hear my 500 iq solution to all of this yeah go ahead <laughs> okay it's basically what i said you need to make like you need to start building a massive criminal you can call it a clan or family or whatever but a antibody for the remainder of the ichiban saga and you know who I want at the top of that organization just hiding in the shadows? Not uh -huh. like I spoiled it at this point in time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Aizawa. Have yeah. Aizawa rebuild the entire Yakuza and have that organization be the final antagonist for the Ichiban Saga. Yeah. Mm. I, yeah, I genuinely, <laughs> like, from lad ish and an OG ish, Aizawa can genuinely be a great villain. Like, you just need to build him up. That's You didn't do that in five. Build him up properly, and boom. Like, and then you can get a redemption arc for the villain that pretty much everybody hates. Yeah. Or just finds most boring. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, that's it. That's the end of the rant. <laughs> As far as like the future of these games go, like honestly, I came to terms with the fact that it's gonna be there, there's gonna be a cycle always, and it's gonna be a similar one, where yeah. they're gonna keep into like like Gokudoni said, they're gonna keep introducing a new faction or like a returning faction. There's gonna be a conflict, and that's you know that's a Yakuza game. But he did raise a good question as to like okay, how long are they gonna do this for? Um, and I don't really have the answer, but. Um, I did just come to terms with the fact that that's what they're gonna do personally. What about yeah. you and uh, what about uh, Snowy Eastern Fruit? Unironically, I think this is the strongest position they've been in to take things in a new direction. Mm. You'd think it would be after six into LAD, but the fact that they've revealed very early on that, you know, Kiryu's gonna be back, etc., it's like that whole hanging on thing that obviously, like, the Tojo keep doing. This ending doesn't at all go into what Ichi's idea of the future of the Yakuza is that Kiryu has entrusted him. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. the last thing you see with Ichi is that terrible scene with Sayako. Like, there is no <laughs> yeah. talk about what happens to the Yakuza. The last we see a Daigo, Majima, and Saijima is the top of the name's hat. Like, they can go anywhere with this. Mm -hmm. This is, like, that one point where they can actually say, all right, this is Ichiban. Here we go. So, yes. I'm cautiously excited. What about you, Snowist? I reckon, because uh -huh. I, like, personally, am not really much of a story guy anyway, because I will take a bad story with good gameplay over bad gameplay with a good story. Mm -hmm. mm. I, I was reckon gonna I don't give a shit what they do with the story. The gameplay is going to be absolutely fire. So I'm going to still keep playing them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Oh, based, based. <laughs> yeah, because I was, I was thinking, because uh, seeing my videos, I'm obviously a big fan of the Xenoblade series. Mm -hmm. Xenoblade one and three both have really good stories and also really good gameplay. Xenoblade two and X have really good gameplay, but their stories are just shit. They're shown in <laughs> anime. But exactly, <laughs> but. They're still really fun games, and I feel like there's a lot of people who, and I see this in comments and stuff, they're just like, oh, I didn't like the ending, therefore the entire game is terrible. And it's yeah. like, well, you got yeah. to the ending, you obviously liked something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that is a good point. So basically, mm -hmm. yeah. basically like, even even if the story is bad, I mean, like with Yakuza 4, even if the story is just like, wh why'd you do any of this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, game, the games are still always going to be good. Yeah. Yes. That's what I feel. That's that's basically how I feel with something like Yakuza 5 as well. I know you guys probably know what I feel about the game. <laughs> but like, you know, I have my problems with the Yakuza 5, but in spite of everything, there are a lot of there's a lot of fun to be had with the gameplay. And game like if you have a game with a shit story but a good, good gameplay, people will prob like very likely rem remember that game and come back to it. But if you have yeah. if you have it the other way around where like the gameplay is shit, but the story is good. It would just Very watch it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going to watch it on YouTube. That's it. I was actually just watching a video on a game today. I don't know if you guys heard about it, but it's called Kudelka on the PS1. <sighs> I love that game. Kudelka, the lead yeah. into the Shadow Hearts series that actually this game, or like Lad and this game, feels like it takes a lot of inspiration from, like with the whole, you know, hitting like buttons in the turn mm -hmm. based at the right time. Yeah, yeah. I love that mm -hmm. game. Uh, but the gameplay is atrocious, unfortunately. Like, it could have been way, way better. Actually, if that game had better gameplay, it probably would have been, like, a widely recognized game to this day. But, uh, alas, it had questionable <laughs> gameplay, and it's yep. it's just obscure. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I have to say about the whole gameplay versus story uh, debate. Um, anyone want to add something? Or... Yeah, well, I was just going to say... I just thought of the Kingdom Hearts series. Everyone just memes on it for its overly convoluted story. <laughs> yeah. And even though, because like I've played all of them like seven times, mm. I understand the story, but I also understand that they're insanely stupid. But it doesn't matter because like Kingdom Hearts two, even though it's a game from like two thousand five, it plays like it came out in twenty thirty three. Yeah. Nice. Nice. It's so yeah, much it fun. It's phenomenal. It like the battle system in that game is actually amazing. It is so much fun. And yep. so, it, again, it could have the shittest story ever. I'm going to keep playing it. Mm -hmm, yep. mm -hmm. Yeah. Understandable. Um, we talked about, a lot about, you know, um, the, the 
the most controversial controversial aspects of uh, Infinite Wealth. But you know, Ooh. away from all of that, wait, do you have more to say, Gokadoni? <laughs> no, I thought you were gonna rip the DLC Band-Aid off, but no, <laughs> no not yet. <laughs> yes, I'm... no, not not yet, at least not yet. Um, <laughs> I feel like we mostly talked about the things we're mixed on for the for the most part so far. We talked about things we like, but how about now actively we mentioned stuff we liked about the story? Who's gonna start? Uh, I can start. Go ahead. I was Go. I was gonna say because uh, I mentioned this in my most recent video, time of this recording. Um, I just and it's the same thing with all the Yakuza games. I just really, really, really like the characters. Mm-hmm. And so there's always times where it's like in a game you get a character who's just unlikable or something like that, but they're supposed to be likable. But mm -hmm. then in the Yakuza games, every character that is likable, you can like. Mm -hmm. And in Infinite Wealth, I feel like, especially the new characters they introduced, like we were talking about Yamai before and Tommy Zhao and all that, mm -hmm. they are really likable. And so that is like the main thing that I just enjoyed about the game, especially all the interactions with like the table talks and the mm -hmm. the bond conversations and all those sorts of things yeah yeah what about you kokodoni well i've apparently i've been taking the most shit on the game so i guess i need to really really be positive <laughs> right now <laughs> i mean if you don't no, have anything that's fine no no that's the thing i have I, i've been extremely cl critical about this but i do love the story mm -hmm. it's just that you know the nitpicky video essay guy and me just being like oh this is poor pacing you can't <laughs> yeah. do that anyway yeah, no, i understand uh, <laughs> so we, we mentioned earlier the introduction of the Barracuda beautiful, brutal, effective amazing, mm -hmm. Dwight yeah. peeing his pants, hilarious mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> sad that we didn't have a moment where Tomizawa was like oh Dwight is that you? Okay I'm sending this image right now and he goes no 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 wait and falls off the ship <laughs> I was kind of hoping that that would happen yeah. <laughs> that would have been cool yeah I'm, the, the casino section with the ganjo, like, I could replay that so many times. The mm -hmm. Arakawa flashback where he goes on a rampage. There's so many perfect moments in this game. Mm -hmm. Also, um, Kiryu slicking back his hair. I didn't expect Ooh. I would be this excited about that. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, By the way, sp speaking Ooh. of that, speaking of the, the new look with, the, like, the actual gray hair with the suit. I, I love that. Ah. That's how he should have looked like in Yakuza 6. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, like, I remember we mentioned it earlier, but the whole dynamic behind or between Kiryu and Ichi, it really feels like the, the entire conversation uh, between them on the top of the homeless camp. Mm -hmm. We've already seen portions of it, but the actual conclusion of like, oh, yeah, I love you. Why the hell didn't I say that? It felt like such a nice way of wrapping things up because it was like, okay, these people trust each other. I could see. I could play an entire spin-off where Kiryu and Ichi just relax in a random map. Because their yeah. dynamic, and it's been so hard to actually establish, or rather, it conceptually it will be hard, but they mm -hmm. nailed it. I'm always invested when those two are in the same scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the entire exchange with the Jimas. I love that mm -hmm. all of the pent-up frustration for years. At, it just came point, out, yeah. It was yeah. just, and it was such a human moment where Kiryu just goes like, you know, F you guys, you're, you're done for. And they genuinely be pissed off, especially coming from Daigo, because Kiryu wasn't oh, a German long enough <laughs> to know how messed up that is. So when you see Daigo like, what the hell do you know about that? Especially yeah. with the yeah. father and son dynamic between them. Everything just clicked perfectly. Like, yes, that, yes. It's, it's one of my favorite scenes. Like, that entire set piece is one of my favorite bits of the entire franchise, Same. bar none. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, the last positive that I can immediately come up with, seeing what the old characters were up to. I love the fact that there is a dynamic and that we actually still hang out with them and that it, it feels like when I meet my old friends who are currently in a different city, it's that, mm -hmm. it's believable. I don't know how to say it. And yeah. you're invested because the characters are so cool. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Fripp? things you liked about the story in general yeah um i liked that it was a very personal thing i like that kiryu obviously like started opening up a lot i really like what they did with kiryu in this mm -hmm. um i do like a lot of aspects about the ending even though i've like moaned about them a lot mm -hmm. um <laughs> despite the fact that i think the bar scene is a little 
bit too used to you know tie up some loose ends i uh -huh. actually do quite like a lot of the interactions in there zhao's monologue about like who ebina was was actually very on point i actually quite like that a hell of a lot um <laughs> i really like tommy's hour in that scene as well just like you know i'm going back to hawaii i'm gonna dig my heels in i'm gonna help out like you know lanny and palakana like you know i mm. owe it to them like I do like how Tommy's Hour and Chitsei's arcs were in the game. Um, I know a lot of people will use Chitsei as like a scapegoat, obviously, for you know a lot of the things that happened. Mm -hmm. But I like her. Um, I do think that the majority of the villains were cool again. Watto was like absolutely amazing. I uh, kind of expected the whole Bryce being you know the god allegory, a whole <laughs> bunch. He he turned out to be a piece of crap, obviously. Um, but, like <laughs> a really like detestable piece of crap. Um. And AG's part in that arc was also phenomenally good. Mm -hmm. um, shame, obviously, what happened at the end. Yeah. Um, and I think they mm -hmm. utilized Hawaii well. I think they actually utilized Hawaii really well. Um, I really liked the locale and, like, you know, the whole justification. I liked when we got the initial trailer of Itchy, like, but naked on the beach. I had such a fear that it was just going to be LAD again, where, he, you know, he, like, ends up getting shot or something and ends up like you know having that entire arc again <laughs> mm. instead it was just here to say obviously yeah um <laughs> yamai the real one obviously i think every every interaction with yamai in the game was phenomenal like really really great mm -hmm. um yes but i just i think the character arcs were better than the overall story in this game and i think character arcs in this game were fantastic mm -hmm. like for the most part obviously okay. as i said psycho aside i think a couple of other characters aside jungi han needed more time but yeah, I liked I liked a lot of the story in the game. Um, right. The emotional beats hit me when I needed them to hit me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of what you guys already said, I do agree with. Um, I do think the the story's strength is the characters more than the actual narrative. If that makes sense, uh, they have a lot of time. Like most of the characters, at least, have time to shine. Uh, Chito Say and Tomizawa for new characters, um, I think, are done pretty well. Uh, you could maybe make a case for Tomizawa because, like, he does have an arc at the beginning, but then he just kind of tags along because he owes it to Ichiban in a way. Um, yeah, hilariously, his arc is kind of Yamai, and Yamai is just kind of meh. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> you know, you Tomizawa, like goodbye. Yeah, yeah, he's cold. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's very cold. <laughs> and I do think, you know, even if they weren't super developed, the main villains of this game are pretty cool. I I like them at the at the surface level at the bare minimum um and i think we all agree that the fight the boss fights in this game are really really good or what yes. do we think yeah i yeah. think i think they gave them a lot of like love and attention a lot of the fights have dynamic intros there's a lot of quick time events um really cool looking just sequences where uh, stuff happens like you know with the with the squid and all that um <laughs> But yeah, I think like something we also haven't exactly gone into, but I'm fairly confident we're all going to feel the same way. Uh -huh. The music in this game is phenomenal. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it goes yeah. insanely hard. Why is there like 20 different battle themes, and why are they all amazing? Like you even just have these <laughs> random dudes turn up, and it's like, all right, let's give them some electric dubstep and just like, well, not dubstep, but like electro, <laughs> and just like you know, have it be the most banger thing you've ever heard, and you'll never Barracuda. hear it again. I'll, oh, I'll, keep, I'll keep giving that song a shout out, Barracuda, my beloved. Yeah. <laughs> the, not just the Barracuda theme, but also the catwalk fight. Like, yes. Oh yeah, my yeah, god. That. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that was brilliant. I did not expect to see two hangmen again, but right? here, we, here we are. It's not even hangman, it's red <laughs> yeah. man, it's his new brother blue man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, now we have... Second theme goes hard. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. 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 I loved Wong To's theme as well. I thought it was really, really good. Yeah. Um, yeah honestly, all of the boss themes. Oh yeah, yeah, all of them. Yep. Um, I don't think yeah. there's oh, a track uh, that I just kind of went meh at. Wait, mm. sleeper hit. Yeah. A song that's called "The Four When the Jimas Join You at the yes. Millennium Tower. Oh, yeah. that oh, yes. song. It, oh my god! And one thing you'll mention, or rather notice, if you're into the musical side of it, some of the best tracks in this OSC are in the exact same key. Yeah, that's. Mm. That, it sounds weird, but like F sharp minor, Barracuda is in that key. Impregnable Triangle is in that key. The four is in that key. Mm -hmm. I think some of the like there's at least one 
uh, karaoke track that's... Hey, wait, we didn't really talk about the karaoke. We didn't, yeah. Right? We, we did talk yeah. a little bit, but not too much, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bakadaro. Perfect. Yes. I yes, love it. Yes. I oh, love yeah. it. I think it's better than Bakimitai. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, see, seeing the the chasm of soul friends appear in the background was just like, yeah. don't you dare! And the first thing is just Nishki is like, all right, I'm out. Thanks. You just emotionally wrecked me already. Thanks. No shout out to Akiyama though. <laughs> <Nope. laughs> yeah. I, I love that it ends on Mame as well. It's like it starts exceptionally serious, then it's just yeah, like yeah. Mame. Yeah. I love that. I love that. The fucking full circle. We the, we the started fact... Bakamita in five with Mame and here. Oh yes. Yes, and, yeah. and even the Bakamita of this game also has Mame. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is Mame even alive at this point? How old would he be? I I saw someone do the calculate like the math. Uh, they're supposed to be alive, I guess. Uh, yeah. Around 16 to 18 years average, I believe. So still there, but <laughs> maybe won't be for a few years. Yeah. Not for the next game. See? Mind yeah. you, the Obertarian. <laughs> no. Yep, I new. am yeah. not inviting her to my island. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm done. <laughs> if that is something that I did like that this game does, but I don't want RGD to keep doing, stop doing older cameos like that. Gone. Yes. Like yes. Uh, we haven't mentioned it, sub story wise. Mm -hmm. Gone Dara in this game. Oh my god. I was not expecting <laughs> to go from a sad story to an oh god Gondara's back to an oh god this is actually really horrifically sad. Yeah. Like, they played that perfectly. Yeah. Like they they can do a really good job at introducing new characters, I think. Um yes. Judgment proves it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um and even like for sub story characters, I I I don't know about yep. you guys, but I love Cheetah Say Buster Holmes. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I thought she was great. Yeah. Stuff like that, like they can make new sub story characters. So I do hope they continue to do that instead of bringing it Suko for like the fucking twenty time. Um, I'm done. Like I'm good. Um, but yeah. Otherwise, I love the side content. I love the story. Um, even with the shortcomings, like I would describe Infinite Wealth. So, as like a an ending uh, segment for everything we talked about, I would describe Infinite Wealth as a game that is flawed, and in spite of that, it manages to be some of the most fun I've had with the franchise. Yeah. What Agreed, about you yeah. guys? Yeah, I think it comes yeah. back to how I introduced it. Fantastically flawed. I think the gameplay, and come back to me in a year after I've been speedrunning it, I think <laughs> gameplay is phenomenal. Um, I think it's like really accessible, and I think the little changes here and there mm -hmm. elevate it. I think they cooked with this, and I think they are on the verge of having something extremely special. I think the third game could potentially... I, we assume it's a third game. We know there'll be something in the future, but mm -hmm. I, I, I think if there is another game after this one mainline, like I, I think that will potentially be something... They could potentially go a little too far with it, like over... Mm -hmm over complicate systems and stuff mm -hmm. i actually wanted like unironically the suji bomb battles gave me exactly what i wanted but the main game didn't mm -hmm. they could have added two new elements they could have added light and darkness because you know mm -hmm. that fit with the entire theme yeah, and true. also like the <laughs> led subtitle but they didn't yeah. need it yeah. they didn't actually need to over complicate it a lot of the moves for like the older like classes are still the same as they were before you get some cool stuff like Grand Liner, for example, in like mm -hmm. um, in like the hero class that you know wasn't there before, but is a really cool new skill. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't rewrite everything for this game, and yet it just feels so much better. Mm -hmm. Like the story, I genuinely do enjoy. Like despite my like shortcomings of it, like mm -hmm. I I think it does stumble a lot. I mm -hmm. think it could have done with one more chapter, unironically. Like yeah, like despite saying how much like like content and bloat there is i think one more chapter would have done it well and mm. yeah i just for me it's like a eight or a nine out of ten like i, I still think it's fantastic mm -hmm. gokudoni how much would you would you rate the, the game it's my fifth favorite and th that's after a very very long period of deliberation and also mm. putting you know nostalgia and everything aside i feel like this is a game that if it were, let's say, a prequel or whatever, it would have the potential of having zero's impact. That's how, the, like, all of the new additions, we keep we kept talking about it, but really, even if you know how the story ends, and you're looking at this game at launch price, like, putting my personal biases aside, this is a game that you need to own. 
I keep coming back to the the comment when Yakuza 5 was just dropping, where Yokoyama said, We wanted to make a game to where it's the only game you will need for the system. To me, Infinite Wealth feels that way for mm -hmm. the PS5. Mm -hmm. Like, genuinely, just the new stuff. And not uh, taking into account everything that has returned. Like, the, the basically karaoke having all of the songs from uh, 7 and technically Kiwami 2 mm -hmm. present. There's mm -hmm. so much here to where... You can buy it at launch price, you will get your mileage out of this game, even if you were spoiled on everything. Like, it's yeah. that good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's it. Love if, you, it. <laughs> if you were to give it a number out of 10, what would I it be? I would think of it this way. I would put it at the top of an S tier, but above my S tier would be another tier. Uh-huh. If that gives... I'm bad with numbers. But no, 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 no. I'm, I'm bad with numbers as well. But uh, for some reason, there are people who care just about the number over everything you say about something. Um, and actually, <laughs> I think I told you guys, about, or maybe you've heard about it, I don't know. But in my review, I gave the game a 9 out of 10 purely because of New Game Plus. Um, but someone was mad in the comments because like, okay, if I gave the game a 9 <laughs> out of 10 for the DLC, but then I also had grabs with the story, then it should be less than that. And it's like, my logic for that is that despite the story problems that I have with it, that the game is insanely fun. And at the end of the day, you might come back for the story, but if the gameplay is dog shit, you're not going to enjoy playing the game. Um, exactly. And that's my logic to it. Um, like, the, there are story problems, but guess what? Every single Yakuza game has story problems. Yep. It's it's just how it is. Um, it, if people want a rating, I'll give it a bon voyage out of 10. There you go. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> What about you, Snowyest? I, I, once again, referencing my own content, I made, made note in my most recent video about how it is like another Lost Judgment where it just makes the previous game look like shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, just like Lost Judgment, it also had a good story, but when it came to like problems and oddities, there was significantly more than the last one. Mm -hmm. And so like, as we've been talking for how many hours it's been now. Almost four. Uh, there, yep. there are a lot of problems that are in the story, but it just, it doesn't ruin it at all. And mm -hmm. it's still just a great game. Mm -hmm. And like, yes. uh, I, I still play the Yakuza games for fun, but like at this point, you know, the only reason why I'd ever go back or keep playing, do stuff after I've beaten the game or whatever is just for like recording things mm -hmm. and whatever. Like, for example, I barely touch any of the side content in any of the games especially like you know there's a lot that's the same like mahjong's in every game so it's not like i'm yeah. gonna go play mahjong in every game yeah <laughs> but this game was like it, i mean it's been the first time in ages that i beat the game i've made videos on it and then i've just like gone back and kept playing mm. like i was i was playing this weekend just for my own enjoyment although i guess like gaiden was like that because i got the platinum but that was because i was going for the platinum mm -hmm. this time yeah. i'm just playing the game because it's fun Hmm. Are you good with numbers? How much would you give this game? <laughs> probably, probably still like a nine out of ten because, uh, I mean, as I've said before as well, like I, I really do like RPGs, and that's why the gameplay is still really fun. Mm -hmm. But like, I know how it can be better, and mm -hmm. the fact that it isn't is what sort of dampens it for me. If I'm if I'm like you, Gokudoni, where you know I don't touch any RPGs or anything like that, I'd play this and I'd be like, damn, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean it was like that when I was a kid the only RPGs I ever played was was Pokemon and then when I started getting like more RPGs that had like you know proper stories and stuff like that I realized like oh my god mm -hmm. this, this genre can be so much better <laughs> <laughs> but even despite that yeah Infinite Wealth was just an exceptionally fun game mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed it right I don't want to take too much of your time especially by the way you're snowy just because it's late for you but um there's just one or two things that I'm thinking of just talking about real quick with all of you. Um, do you guys want to say anything about the DLC? Ho ho ho. <laughs> like, it, it is uh, on its own. It's $31 here. There's a lot of games you can get for less than I, that. Saw, <laughs> I saw that bit in your video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, I'm not going to, you know, uh, extend this more than I have to. I talked about this in my review. I made two videos on it. I talked about it on my streams. Uh, most of you know what my thoughts on this are, but New Game Plus is the basic feature. It should be in the game. That's the end of the day. Uh, that's yeah. that's what it is at the end of the day. Yep. 
Difficulties, same thing. The big swell is debatable. I do think it should have been base game, but if we got New Game Plus and difficulties, but that was DLC, I would not complain as much. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts. If Does anyone want to add anything? I'd agree with that. It feels like they kind of wanted to go for like a Kaito Files-esque, you know, value to post-game, but it feels like they just took something from the game mm -hmm. and just charged for it. And I, I think yeah. I think that's the thing as well, is that something that is a standard in every other game is now suddenly taken out and monetized. Mm -hmm. That doesn't feel good. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm. Does anyone want to add something before I just ask the last thing? Oh, yeah, I could. Uh, mm -hmm. Specifically for the DLC. I feel like if we have... <clears throat> Sorry about that. If New Game Plus and the difficulty settings were part of the base game, the DLC wouldn't be controversial. Because it's literally the same thing that we've had for, I think, since Yakuza 6 at this point. You have bonuses for the minigames, you have cool costumes. Mm. Hell, you can see Songhee in a swimsuit. I would be <laughs> shilling the hell out of that if it didn't include New Game Plus. <laughs> <laughs> but the biggest issue with that, and I, I want to address this because there was a bunch of people like, Oh, who plays New Game Plus? You don't oh, realize how much... Yeah. You, you don't know how much of a jump New Game Plus in this series is. Compare yep. a game like Ishin or Lost Paradise on a clean save file to a new <laughs> no, game plus. Please. No. <laughs> they, the difference is like they're basically two different games at that point. I wouldn't blame anyone yeah. for hating those games if they don't try new game plus. So you have it in a game like this, and we've talked about yeah, it's strained, it takes a long time to get going, and there's a bunch of times where you need to grind. Mm -hmm. New Game Plus alleviates that. And this is the Dragon Engine, yeah. so any mm -hmm. additional cutscenes, you can just skip over them and you can enjoy the boss fights. Mm -hmm. So, like, exactly. literally, to me, as a longtime fan of the series, I think the package is worth it. But I won't endorse it because it has New Game Plus as a paid feature. Return mm -hmm. it into the base game yeah. and keep doing what you're doing. Like, even the big swell, I think it's worth the money because I love the characters so much. Mm -hmm. Anything else, mm -hmm. yeah, it's basically what you've all said. Just a little you thing know that what they should do. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go on, go on. Okay, I was gonna say, you know what they should do? Uh -huh. They should, and this shouldn't be a paid feature. So, but they should just add a freaking chapter select into the goddamn game. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Like it, Final it's... Fantasy VII remake has. Yeah. It's ironic do that the Dead Souls <laughs> has the yep. best feature of that. RGG, if you're watching this, like, please. That feature in Dead Souls where you select any story segment and you just play yeah. it and you get ranked on it. Like, why is that locked to Dead Souls of all games? Bring it back. <laughs> we love it. Yeah. We love it. We want to see yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. I, I can imagine they kicked that one guy out. Like, there was someone in the meeting <laughs> that said, oh, no, that's going to be a great idea. And then someone said, great, now people don't replay our games anymore. Get him out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I sincerely hope we do see that at some point. Um, I sometimes get people, like comments, Twitter, whatever. Um, they tell me, hey, Leon, um, if you're against New Game Plus, why are you playing it? Um, well, first of all, I got a code. Second of all, <laughs> let's assume that I put a campaign where I try to get a following of people to boycott the game. I'm going to make a dent at best in like all, the, all of the sales. The games, the game sell, uh, sold... Um, a million copies at this point. What is 10,000 going to do? Yeah. It, it's just about accepting. Like, it's very important to accept how things are. Instead of trying to go on this fantasy of like, oh, like, we surely can sway like 2 million sales off of this game. Because that's not happening. <laughs> um, so yeah, the least I can do after that, after, after, you know, acknowledging that, is just talk about it. And try to criticize the decision and hopefully something will happen um if not with infinite wealth then hopefully with the next game and that's really all there is to it um all right we can briefly talk about anything you guys would have added or changed with the game just before skill we shortcuts time. skill shortcuts yeah, yeah. <laughs> shortcuts i would say skill shortcuts as well yeah um we can talk about the story but uh, like if we talk about the story we're going to be sitting here for like three more hours but <laughs> gameplay wise, yeah, just skill shortcuts, I think. Uh what else? I can't really think of much. Stop nerfing yeah, everything I just... do in the speed run. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> shortcuts and uh giving back head trauma. Uh, yes, head trauma. Yes. I would love that, yes. Oh my god. 
Do we remember have, that? Have it cost one MP. <laughs> wait, oh my god, wait. To dial back, do you remember that part where it said no head trauma here? Yes. Whoever yeah, wrote that, that, they that knew. Yeah. Oh. They knew. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally not angry at you. <laughs> Looks yeah. intently into the camera. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, uh, person who did that, we actually love you. Don't worry about them. <clears throat> um, oh, wait, uh, one more thing. Mm -hmm. If the, um, maybe this exists in the game, but if someone could add an item that gives you infinite dragons resurgence, can you imagine a new game plus where you can Ooh. just destroy everything with that? <laughs> I was yeah. hoping for something Actually, like that too. Yeah. Speaking of, I might be wrong in this. I might not know where it is. Why is there no Hariti's amulet in this game? Someone something told me apparently it's not in the game. I was wondering like, about oh. that too. What was that, sorry, Snowys? Uh, apparently, it's just not in the game at all. That's what someone yeah. said to me. That, that's wild. Like, it yeah. just, again, that's a nice thing for New Game Plus, is like, something to get rid of all of the fights. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or even just trying to do like the Bond conversations, just like you don't have to deal with enemies. Yeah, <laughs> God. Oh, yeah. I mean, having to walk away from a group of enemies every time when they get close. I've like stepped inside of shops. I've been hiding around the back of pillars and stuff, just like, please, please <laughs> yeah. move on. Please go away. At least they got the Smackdown thing. The SmackDown oh, yes. feature is nice for sure, but I still would have liked yeah. the Harity Amulet. Just yeah, for replays. Exactly. It's also very nice that your Bond Link conversations carry on when you come out of a fight. That's a very good change. Yeah, like some mm -hmm. God of War stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, you can also reminisce on them. I can't thank the people enough for that, because now if you're if you're close to an enemy encounter, you can just skip through the conversation, go back to your yeah. hideout and listen to it. Yeah, 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 yeah that's true. an option. Hmm... I can't think of anything else personally. The sh the skill shortcuts are like the main thing for me as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really. Um. Yeah. I... Make rocket launches do two thousand damage. Again. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Please bring back Gary and Dila and Forza. <laughs> yes. I, I I would not have minded it at all, uh, at all. Like if you find Eri somewhere for the sub story and she's back again. I I do <laughs> like that you get a little bit of like like a, like acknowledgement if you go there in chapter one. Yeah, like she's she's yeah. off touring the world, which you know could have been code for Hawaii. <laughs> yep. She's chilling in Hawaii. True, true. Send her to Don Doko Island with all of her money. <laughs> S rank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's really all we have to do. Does anyone have anything to add? Um, no. buy this game. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I agreed with that. <laughs> Yeah, this game is awesome. Uh, you guys are awesome for really showing up. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Let's say that again. But not the DLC. Yeah, but not the DLC. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we love the game. I, I bought a physical. I bought a physical copy, but I didn't buy the DLC. <laughs> yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Th this game is awesome, despite the shortcomings. Uh. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. This has been a blast. We we sat for four hours now. It's four hours exactly on my OBS timer. Um. We I can't thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously can't thank you all enough because, like, you know, setting this up with uh, different time zones and all of that, like, it, it's not the easiest thing, but we managed to find the time mm -hmm. window, thankfully, on short notice, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, do, do, you, do you guys have anything to say about anything to the, to the audience watching this before you go? Thanks for subscribe watching. to Devil Aeon 7. And subscribe yes, to the boys. Yeah. I'm going to leave everything in the description. Everything. <laughs> um, Gokudani makes amazing essay videos. Froob does amazing speedruns and just streams in general if you're a stream person. Uh, Snowiest makes hilarious videos. So if you want comedy, please go over to his channel. Um, yes. And yeah, everything is in the des description. Um, with that said, shall we say goodbye to the, to the audience? Thank you guys for watching. Uh, but I'll see you in the next one, Thanks, I guess. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>